straight to the game. Look, seven is it's easier to follow to be the tennis and work in court. It's a great way to introduce someone to the sport. And if you want a particular player as well, you can say seven, a bit less contact, played on the ground. It's probably the game show you build in the fifteen game.
Sevens is so much fun. It gives people opportunities to run and you show your, you know, showcase your skills. Brilliant day. Last year I remember it being so wet. Well, who sort of fly the flag and increase the profile. It's great for the game. And look, sevens is it's easier to follow for somebody who's never seen rugby before. So it's a great way to introduce someone to the sport. And if you want to, if you're a player as well, like you play sevens, a bit less contact, played in the sun, it's probably a bit more enjoyable than the 15s game. Under 16 girls champions of the plate. It's Bryn Kellenog Comprehensive School. Well done, girls. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the final day of coverage at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Day five brings with it the second day of the under 18s cup action, of course. But we have individual tournaments running today as well. We have uh, an under 13 junior tournament as well, where all the schools involved will play in a round robin format. No actual cups to be won here, but they get the chance to run out at Roslyn Park for the first time as well, because this is the first age category in which you are allowed to come here. And therefore, none of these players have ever been here. That in itself will be a novelty. Some of them are playing sevens as well for the first time. So to run the course across today on RE1, we start with two matches from that under 13 uh, schoolboys tournament. That's what's coming up first. We have Emirates Falcons up against Donatar under 13s. Emirates Falcons from Dubai, and they also bring with them some players from Abu Dhabi as well. Uh, Donatar from a little bit closer to home to here. They're from Rygate. They're up first on RE2. Uh, and then later on with some of the under 13, uh, run the, the under 18 cup matches to pick over. We have uh, Glantaf there on the third match today. Uh, the Welsh uh, force that was so good yesterday. They'll be featuring on match three here. We then have Cranley School as well, who won it back in 2016 and 2017 back to back. 
Uh, they won all matches yesterday. They will be in action in match fifth, uh, the fifth match on RE2 as well. So the junior boys, um, to give them the full briefing, there's 114 entrants across the competition. It's this huge interest uh, at this level for Roslyn Park playing in 19 groups of six teams as well in a round robin. So they each get five matches and uh, they are going to have a great time today, um, no doubt about it. We're just focusing on two pitches, of course. The other show pitch is RE1. So if you want to follow the action on another show pitch, you know that your team's being streamed. Well, it might not be on this one. It's on RE1 as well. Um, you can follow the England Rugby channels on social media, on uh, YouTube as well to get on RE1. But we're on RE2. And we're bringing you Emirates Falcons up against Donatar under 13s in the boys junior competition. And that was matches about to begin. The players are out on the field in just before 10 a.m. We're just uh, just past 10 a.m. now in the UK. So if you're watching on from uh, Dubai, well, a very, very warm welcome to you here. And this team are, are really excited to be here. They're playing their first ever sevens match. We know they've been playing um, 15s mostly at this young age but now for the last six weeks they've been training for sevens and here they are with a chance to show what they can do at Roslyn Park so the Emirates Falcons playing in the all colors kicking off Rygate or rather Donatar they're in those traditional Rygate blue colors here come the Emirates Falcons though we expect a lot from them today and they're starting at a lick with Noah Sprenger who has gone in right from the very off. Sprenger with the first score for the Emirates Falcons. I think we uh, saw his brother in action um, for Millfield. This young Noah is off to Millfield on a scholarship uh, when he moves up to the next age category. But we saw uh, another Sprenger in action for Millfield earlier on this week. And they were... Same way in similar shape here but look at this from the kickoff this is beautiful in and out and then a couple of fens with some speed for Noah Sprenger it's not gone 10 so the next kickoff after that not uh, as productive not as uh, conclusive so it's a tap and go on halfway for Donatar and for Donatar and pass, they have uh, no numbers on their backs, so difficult for us to identify individually. But we know that Josh Berkshire, Connor Bicknell are in this team. Chris Coombs, Harry Eggleton, Hamish Ferguson, Ted Halford, Will Kidner, James Lang, Nothing. Callum McBride, Noah Mitchell, yeah. Fraser O'Malley and Henry Spence. Scrum. They make up uh, Scrum, this Donatar team. Scrum. Chris Coombs, actually for Donatar is the third Coombe sibling to be playing uh, rugby at Roslyn Park this week. So it's been a, a busy week for, for the Coombe family. Set. Emirates Falcons look so smooth. You can see how much time they spent preparing for Roslyn Park with some of these backline moves. And now Zach Sprenger in the number nine jersey, switches it up. There's an opportunity on the right-hand side now for Emirates Falcons to spread their wings already after two minutes and add another score. So this one scored by Toby Bryant. This was a Sprenger, Zach Sprenger, and then Burton Wood involved here. Finished off by Bryant, another one who's off uh, to Millfield next year on a scholarship. So although based half a world away, this Emirates Falcons team and school are a rugby hotbed and a production line that is producing some excellent talents at this age group. My goodness. Now they're spacing out. The skill level is so high. And here comes Bryant again, and he goes around the outside, and all those striding legs are so hard to stop for Toby Bryant. Two tries for the man in the red scrum hat. Love the balance, though, here, and the ability to switch the point of attack here. That was nice from Black Backhouse, Timmy in Backhouse. 
good defence at the end um, to try and stop the onrushing yeah, blind. They're all on not side. quite enough. Another take from kickoff, another Sprenger on the burst. And Noah, Sprenger gets his second. This restart work from Emirates Falcons is of the very highest class. <laughs> it's uh, Burtonwood, Charlie Burtonwood that's taking these kickoffs. Sprenger knows exactly where it's going to go. Done a top. Good take from kickoff this time. A little bit more time to think, and now they go forward, securing the ball. Now going out to the edge. No, roll, leave it, there, Red! So possession is going to be kept here. This is what they need to do right now. Hold on to the ball. Force Emirates Falcons to tackle and to keep tackling. Just keep the ball away from them. Fast forward. Scrum. And there is Cody Cook with the ball under his arm. It's actually the uh, nephew of David Cook. For those of you that follow the other code of rugby league, Australian uh, South Sydney Rabbitohs play. Coach, fine. So hello to uh, family in Australia potentially watching on to see how Cody's doing. Emirates Falcons right from this set piece and that was a strong fend to go on the outside for number four and that is cruise control levels now Tiago Van Edson <laughs> Zach Springer with the uh, scrum half duties and then you can see that Van Edson Could take from Donata. High tackle. High tackle from Cook. So Donata can tap and go, and maybe puncture a few holes in this multicolored jersey of Advantage. Emirates Falcons. Knocked on that in from the side. And sometimes we we see this with a few schools. The first half of 18, their first match in Roslyn Park. So hard to drop into the seventh season if there hasn't been all that much transition time between uh, 15s and 7s, or maybe they've been playing a multitude of other sports. Big carry here from Donatar, goodness me. But the tackle is excellent from the Falcons and Cody Cook involved there. And now they're breaking away and they're going to score another. And that was from one of the most powerful carries of the match, Jacob Raithnell. Who runs it in? Half time. And half time between Emirates Falcons and Donatar. It is the Falcons. Thank you. What a seize on the ball. And then two players still on to Raithnell, but he shrugged them both off and then sprinted away from two more. Tries don't come much more individual than that. Both the defensive side and the attack rolled up into the big arms of Jacob Raithnell. So 30 points to nil at halftime.
Donatar school kick off. And Falcons from the Emirates are starring in this opening match. They really are. And this is a return which is going to go all the way to the house. A dive in on the green, green grass at Roslyn Park. And what a show of speed down the left wing. So fast, we didn't even catch this man's number. So Donata, again, using their biggest carrier and this time there's the right support there although maybe it's been pinched again once more the breakdown work as well as the skill level and the fleet footedness and that is a stunning try again it's Timian backhouse and you can see why this man is going to be heading north again for his education next year he's joining Harrow School no doubt be featuring uh, in Roslyn Parks in years to come in Harrow colours. Wheels like these. That was really nice from Firth. When you're all on side, all right? house Goes all the way. Donatar, keep, keep taking these kickoffs though, and that's when you're up against it in a sevens match, Set all you red, can do. Vantage offside. It's not easy just to retain your restarts when you are up against the side as Nothing coming offside. well organised, as skillful and as well conditioned as uh, Emirates Falcons are. You know, they have been training purposely for six weeks for this competition and that's a much better angle of attack from Donata. First. But still, it's Raithnell who wants to go again. He's going to repeat the trick. Jacob Raithnell again with the steal. And the runaway score. But this uh, Donatar player is getting more and more meters every time he carries, but still getting isolated. And that's obviously a, a team, a, a team supporter matter to try and get with him a bit more. Backwards. Touch. So tap and go again. Good tackling around the legs. No. Round the neck. Blue, round the neck. Backhouse taps and goes. Bryant. That's nicely done. Sprenger, again, Noah Sprenger, his first. And then on the edge, the in and out, and then to the line. And the dive for home. <laughs> Felix Schellelis, the Dutchman. 50-point differential. Has the victory. And the match... Uh, Come on, Donatar. ...finishes there with a 50-point differential. How the referee say that? Bryant, Toby Bryant, has been playing like Kobe Bryant today. Sets this one up. Shell Ellens with a good handoff, you have to say. The Dutchman is uh, diving in for that score, which wins the match effectively. No uh, 14 minutes up. We've had uh, 50 points scored, and therefore at this level that uh, ends the match. So Emirates Falcon International School making the most of their preparation and their time on RE2. And Donatar with, I think, four more matches today. So there's a lot of games to be played for these, both for these schools. And uh, they will have contests of a more even keeled nature to come. But uh, a good performance from the Emirates Falcons International School.
So with the um, early final whistle coming there, uh, we have a, a bit more of a break on than the schedule has allowed for. So we've got um, a 20 past 10. Blundell School are facing Norwich School in the National Sevens Junior Schools competition. So um, stay with us for that. If you're here for Blundells against Norwich at the junior level, that is coming up next. After that, Trinity School against Glantaf in the Under-18 Boys Cup. Then there is another junior schools match at 11. St John's from Leatherhead against Northampton School for Boys, NSB. That will be coming up at 11. The next match on, Blundells against Norwich. In the world of competitive sports, every advantage counts. At Whole Road Howe, we understand the vital role nutrition plays in athletic performance. That's why our dedicated team of professionals provide expertise in sports nutrition to give athletes the power to perform. We work with our chef's teams to craft meals tailored to fuel peak performance, ensuring your athletes have the energy they need to succeed. Education is key when it comes to fueling performance and we can support athletes in making food choices through our various initiatives and sports nutrition programme. Get in touch today to see how we can help support your athletes with our sports nutrition guidance and expertise. Holroyd Howe, providing the power to perform. Wednesday at the Howden Rosslyn Park National School Sevens. We've taken you through Monday and Tuesday across the Asda pitches, across the Wimbledon pitches, across the Merton pitches, but now we are bringing you the hub of the activity, RE1 and RE2, where the live stream happens, where the food court happens, where the bar happens, for those of us that need a pint later on, because it's sunny. Um, lads, you've had a, a fantastic morning. I mean, we, we tell me about today so far. Well, we had our first two group stage matches and we've had some great moments. Simon to my right here, running through the whole team, sidestepping their sweeper and scoring under the post. Brilliant try, probably highlight of my day so far. And this is your first time the school's ever made it through to day two. How, how does that feel, being part of a bit of history? Well, I mean, our coach, Mr Metcalf, he's well chuffed. Yeah, he's been glazing us all, all last night, yesterday, and we're happy for him, happy for the school. A true legend of the competition. Um, I mean, it's fair. I mean, ultimately, it's a lot of fun. I mean, we've got so many resources at Wellington. We've got so many good players. Like, we're just really kind of privileged to to be able to not only have that kind of history, but to be able to put teams out in the Vars, in the Cup, 14s, 16s. You know, we it's something that you know, as you say, kind of Wellington and Roslyn Park are kind of go kind of almost sort of hand in hand. You know, if you look at the I guess the history of the school and it's rugby. It's a lot of that kind of reputation has been built at, at Roslyn Park. Chaps, um, what have we been eating for lunch? Chinese, mate. Unbelievable over there, need to try it. Chinese, what what, uh, what particular sort of Chinese have you been having? Um, we got these, these chow. We kick off now between Blundell's school and Norwich School at the under 13 uh, junior competition and they are getting uh, such great um, time on the ball on these main pitches at the start of the day it's great to see uh, the youngest age group at Roslyn Park getting the showpiece treatment and what a start this is for Blundell's skill level is exceptionally high unlucky
So for this match, um, I'm Actually, delighted to be joined by uh, the director Best of rugby at Norfolk, Wait, Norfolk, sorry, um, at Norwich Wait, School. Uh, sorry, John okay. Clark, but John Clark is here. Uh, you're head of all rugby, John. So it's great that you're, you're here today. Obviously, you're under 18s, uh, in with a shout in the plate, and of course Fight. under 13s as well. Um, so talk us through the boys and and, and stay, who they stay. are. Who's on the ball? Well, at the moment, with the scrum, sadly, Norwich losing the ball. Lucas Burney going in for the tackle. Sadly, a few missed tackles there. Toby Young getting the cover tackle. Good work, Red. Ow, ow, ow. Ball across the... Isaac Mack going in for the tackle. Herbie Andrews in support. Good clear out there from Blondell. Oh, turnover, Isaac Mack on the ball. Great defence from Norwich no to advantage. deny that. It looked a certain Not try fun. for Blundells, didn't it? On a, on a couple of occasions. Isaac Mack, the boy getting the turnover there, is quite a threat for Norwich School. Very good at athletics, yeah. very good over Not the 100 fun. metres. Norwich Scrum not very strong in the first one. Hopefully a lot better here to give them a good platform to attack from. Uh, How much training will these boys have done, for sevens particularly, uh, for this jump? Well, across the year groups, seniors more so than the likes of our under 13s. In terms of focus on sevens, it's been mostly as we call them skill camps, helping them to develop for their sevens, but also as a platform to allow them to develop for their 15s next year. Try there to Blundell's, a little bit of a mishap at the scrum. Something we're going to have to work on later on. Yeah, let's have a look at how that came about here. Blundell's sharp on the uptake to make the most of this. Matches under 18 boys on RE1, Bishop Wonder, Off the back foot of Jamie Cousins Collins. in the scrum and Herbie on sadly RE2, knocking it on. I don't know if there was a hand of back goal. issue in there as well. Yes. <laughs> Maybe a little, uh, a little helpful piece of skullduggery. But Blundell's off to a good start. A lot of pressure in the north half. Good return here, it'd be great. Ball on to Ben Lowe. Ball now with Lucas Burney. Release now, boys! Stay outside. Al Dannett now on the ball. Oh, quite a strong tackle there. You're gonna tackle, don't throw to the ground, okay? Jamie Cousins on the ball, quite a strong ball carrier, but Blundell's Release dealing now, well. They play with width Advantage now. Advantage Norwich Advantage. might have a good opportunity, but holding on to it. Advantage good contact Advantage skills uh, from Advantage. your side jump. Now we have Isaac Mack on the ball, quite fast, strong down the wing. Isaac Mack doing what uh, he was given the billing to do, running in from deep. That was really fast he, from Isaac Mack. He backs himself to score quite a few today. He said that he's hoping to get around 15, but I'd be happy with just the one to begin with. 15? Yeah, he's oh. quite uh, quite confident, the young man. Is there enough minutes uh, in all these matches I to score I 15? To be fair, we have about five games, so he'd be looking at three a game, so he's off to a good start. OK, well, let's... Uh, yeah. Your kick, boys! Let's get behind him. But uh, Mack with the first. Him, himself and Ben Lowe on the team are also Your very kick. strong... Uh, athletes in terms of athletics with uh, Ben very good at the triple jump and long jump competing at a national standard okay wow yeah. and for Norwich school is it is it focused across all sports then yeah we've got a quite a wide curriculum in terms of sport with uh, rugby being in the winter term hockey followed then by a split of cricket and Montana. athletics Jamie Cousins now into the ball strong carry Backing himself to the corner, good tackle. No hands! If Norwich can look to spread the ball wide now, Ben Low in the outer ranks, Lucas Burney carrying through back into traffic. Ball into Jamie Cousins' hands. Play on. Aldan, ah, badly taken into there, good defence from Blundells. Free pass. Yeah, Blundell's um, yeah. Yeah. with the early foray, and then since then it's been defence. Oh, kick away. Oh, going sideways. Got to go forward first, Lucas. Oh. Oh, pinched by Blundell's and away. 
We've seen this man stepping his way through defenders so far. Now it's just a straight run for the line. And that was a burst of speed from Blundells to blow anyone away. Possibly for Norwich there, working harder behind the ball to give a little bit more support from Ben Lowe to Lucas, with then Lucas to run straight rather than sideways, makes it very easy for the defender and then under pressure. So how does it work at, um, at Norwich and, and is it typical of, of the age group um, yeah. when you have the start of the rugby season, everyone's playing 15s, are, are we obviously contact, full contact, but there, are, there yeah. are rule variations which we're not seeing at say under, under 16 level. Yeah. What are, what's the difference at, at this age? Well, at under 13, they have 12 aside, so they don't move to the full 15. Actually, it's 13 okay. aside. They don't move to the full 15 aside now until under 14s. That's when you see the introduction of flankers and fullback. Okay. Um, along with that, with the new tackle height variations, with the younger generation, the more that we can get them to tackle low, it'll then build up on the fact when they're a lot bigger and playing as men, if they've only ever known to tackle low, that's what they'll do. Ben Lowe on the outside, strong tackle from Blundell's brilliant tackle there. So we see the tackle height uh, at this age Let's having to be exactly boys. where? Below below the chest line? Yeah. That's oh, lovely stepping. Lovely work there. But hands on, unlucky. Norwich quite narrow in defence, not covering the full pitch and working in threes in front. Forward pass. That lad again was moving at speed. Half -time. So for half time, we will uh, take a pause. So that um, tackle height is something to discuss. I mean, schoolboy rugby is partly why the, the rules brought in to make it. Has it made it safer from what you've seen? I and, believe and so, And yeah. how has it made it safer? Though? Well, I, for us so far this week, at Roslyn, like we've had no concussions. I don't know what it's like for other teams, but we've been very lucky in the fact that we have had very few injuries. A lot potentially just with uh, with a lot of gameplay. A lot of boys get sore across the day, which is understandable. But in terms of the tackle height, that's the only way they're being taught to do it. So, yeah. an example of our under 16 team, one of our t tallest boys, who's like taller than me, he tackles around the shins the whole time, wow. and that's him at around six foot five. Yeah. So for them, that's the only way he's been taught, so that's the only way he knows. Yeah. So yep. that's why bringing it in younger over the years, that's how it'll end up. And, and in terms of the game, has it changed the way the game is played um, in terms of attacks? I think an attack with tackling lower, it does give an opportunity for an offload, but with many teams, they'll start to look at ways of how to slow the ball down with the tackle height going up and that'll turn, uh, change game plans for that. But with us, it's very much just getting up in front, making dominant tackles, and then causing pressure whenever they start to fumble the ball. So that's why, with a lot of it, whenever the tackle's made, the next defensive set is the most important in terms of getting up to make a pressure and not allow them to get around you. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, uh, in terms of just viewing the quality of, of the sevens we've seen here versus previous years where tackle height law hasn't been in place, in terms of quality of, of the matches to watch, it hasn't changed that because only got better. It's made no negative uh, impression on, on anyone, I think, watching that yeah. at all. So that was what people were worried about when it was coming in. Oh, the game's going to change. And it, it hasn't been like that, has it? I think with the sevens as well, with the fact that there is just more space, a lot of the, a lot of the tackles you are seeing is that they are having to come in from the side. It's, very, it's not very often you're seeing a direct one-on-one -on -one hit unless they're yeah. very tight. So, yeah. And that was always the case in sevens yeah. anyway. So Blundell's with a five-point lead. And the rain has started to come down here at Roslyn Park. First a rain of the week for the final day. Ooh, ball back. Norch starting to push through. Hal Dannett going in for the tackle. But crossing. Ooh, penalty. Norch looked to move the ball here. It'd be quite effective. Lucas Burney on the ball now, strong carry. Jamie Cousins, good work from scrum half. Feed the ball, feed the speed. Unlucky there, Isaac. So we've got your under-18s in action uh, later, John. For, for Norwich school parents and relatives watching, 
what time should they look out for for the under 18s 10 40 is our first game okay are you on one of the show uh, pitches or are you out we are in the backfield? later on i believe we are on pitch two which will be streamed against uh brighton college okay but i believe our first game is on one of the back pitches in re eight or seven that brighton college match that's this pitch as well so uh keep an eye on on this Good defense pitch. through there from oh isaac mack back on the ball So Isaac Mack is going to get his second. Looking for that third after this. But looking for the, the victory, of course, in this match. Not that there is a cup uh, on show here to win, but nonetheless, uh, win's important for these boys. And we're all at 10 apiece here. All tied up, thanks to this, from Isaac Mack. Affectionately known as the Mack attack in Norwich School. Okay, nice nickname. Along with his older brother, Eugene, who is also quite a good athlete. There's a lot of nicknames that can go with Mac, aren't there? Yeah. Yeah, the Mac attack's up there. Return of the Mac, I'm thinking Mac man. A lot to, a lot you can play with. And Cranley, Lundell's here. Good tackle from Jamie Cousins. On the ball well, Lucas Burney, great turnover. Now if Norwich can look to get it wide. Ben Lowe, strong carry out to the wing. Can he go all the way to the corner? Strong blunders coming across and scores. A lovely try and to try with every piece of possession at the moment. I have to say it's a great opportunity for the likes of the under 13s to get up on a live stream. Because with uh, the under 18s yesterday playing against uh, Beach and Cliff with the Freddie wow. Freddy Snarry try yeah. saver. Last night, these boys looking up in awe at our older boys is something that, you know, great experiences for all the boys involved. And the fact that they get the opportunity today to play on this pitch and get themselves on YouTube, I think it'll be something to remember for many years. And if I think back to when I was playing, how, how exciting that would have been for, for us and probably for you as well, John. Uh, to be fair, for me, I'd probably give away a scrum penalty, so I wouldn't want to be on TV too much. <laughs> yeah, keep that from the screen. Now, Lundell's oh. on the attack. Again, with this danger man in the yellow boots, he's really something. And he's a handful, and even in the wet, he can move quickly. Oh, knock on there. If Norwich can get the ball, Ben low. Al Dannett now in the ball. Good tackle onto Dannett. Does well to keep possession. Well done, Toby Young. Now, if Norwich can look for hands here. Wrong. Jamie Cousins going through to the corner. Just needs to put the ball down. All of a sudden, the weather starts to change and the game plan, too. Lovely movement. Kobe Young there releasing the ball on the ground, getting back up to his feet to be able to play it again. Quite a smart move when you're under pressure. And quite well done, Jamie Cousins. So Norwich with a, a bit of breathing space for the first time in this match. But the kicks go. to the danger man for Blondels. James Gilbert getting in front. Look at this, away again from kick -off. Isaac Mack from behind, can he get there? Lovely movement, oh, unlucky. Backwards. Still with Blundells. Great have to tackle work it. there, Hal Dannett putting the pressure on on the big man. James Bill Gilbert, lovely tackle again. Well, here he comes once more. Ooh, See space out pass. here. I'll down it back in again. Backwards. Well done. Up. No. Laying the ball on the ground. You're on the floor, you can't handle the ball. Back One and a half. How do you coach a player, John, um, who has developed, let's say, a bit earlier at this level? I'm, th I'm thinking of the, the Blundell's player, the yellow boots. He's got sensational speed, quite powerful as well. And, and you all have come across players at this age as well like that. How do you coach them so that they develop in all areas? Well, with early developers, probably a big thing with them is building their foundational skills so that as they get older and the other boys start to catch up, that their core skills are just as good, especially if you're fast and quick boys. Uh, an example that we see a lot in certain teams is if you have a big boy or a fast boy, you end up putting them at fly half. Lucas Burney here in the ball, strong carry, looking for support. 
Oh, ball to ground. But yes, pretty much just putting them in a position where they may be the main player for the team, but the other players in the team have to play them into the game. So instead of sticking them at fly half and he just carries it the whole time, you put him to outside centre, you put him to the wing, so the other team has to get it to him. So, but we do see that a lot. In the sevens pitch, you get you get some very special, strong players where they get to thrive. But on the 15s game, it very much gets taken away with numbers. So here James goes. Gilbert coming in behind, putting them under pressure. Good try. The bundles get that try, and there's 30 seconds remaining to try and level it up. Not over for Blundells here. Just have to complete the tackles there from Norwich, starting to get a lot of forearms and hands towards the contact of the body. Shoulders first and then wrap, complete the tackle. Last play, boys. Last play, important for Norwich now to get the ball back and get it off the pitch. Really even contest this one between Norwich play, and Blundells, and it still hangs in the balance. Get it off the pitch. Oh. Isaac Mann though wants to run, and he's on two tries. He could add more here. I'm not, I'm not sure Norwich know that's the last play of the game, but they'll give it a go. That's the excitement of sevens. They want to stay on the pitch as long as possible in front yeah. of the cameras, John. Thank you. And off it goes. So Norwich School do ring in the final whistle with the score at 20 points to 15. They beat yeah. Bundles in their first match as the rain comes down at Roslyn Park. John, thank you so much for your time. Best of luck pleasure. today thank you very with much. the rest of the under-13s campaign and also the under-18s as thank well. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Great to have your company. Thank you. In the world of competitive sports, every advantage counts. 
At Holroyd Howe, we understand the vital role nutrition plays in athletic performance. That's why our dedicated team of professionals provide expertise in sports nutrition to give athletes the power to perform. We work with our chef's teams to craft meals tailored to fuel peak performance, ensuring your athletes have the energy they need to succeed. Education is key when it comes to fueling performance and we can support athletes in making food choices through our various initiatives and sports nutrition programme. Get in touch today to see how we can help support your athletes with our sports nutrition guidance and expertise. Holroyd Howe, providing the power to perform. Come on, Clanta! Backwards! Take it back. Well, we return then to the uh, under-18s level here. Thanks, Jack. I'm Wilfred Kemsley, live for you here on RE2 as Glantaf, the Welsh side, the number one ranked seven sides in the country coming into this game. Face off against Trinity after both these sides finish second in their cup groups. And it's a quick start for Trinity as well. And it's the birthday boy, Omar Leon, who opens the scoring. Well, as I said there, Iskol Glantaf, who I tipped on day one to go far in this uh, competition, dropped out of the uh, cup competition after finishing second in their group, as did the likes of the Bishop One Trinity School and Clandavery College, and that's what's left them here in the plate, but it's still a serious prize to be won. Trinity, who take the lead then on day one, were drawn in a tough group, including Ipswich School and Hurstbeer Point, and they saw off everyone in that group other than Ipswich, who they fell to 26-12. And that's left them in the plate, whereas Glantaf were in a team with this uh, fantastic Cranley School, who finished the day on a points difference of plus 109. Glantaf's points difference, despite their loss to Cranley, 133 points four, and only 64 conceded, so two less than the eventual group winners, Cranley, just shows this uh, competition's incredible standard. Well, Glantaf are winning the penalty, and it's Lloyd Lucas handing it off there. To Oshin Lewis, and Lucas will quickly get Glantaf back underway. Seriously impressive player. Stepping off the right is Lou O'Brien. Regathered by Glantaf and Cooksley. There's the big Bosch from uh, Owen Lewis, of course. He's trained with Wales, the centre, at under 18 level. Dewey Thomas, the captain at 13. Lucas, that's another offside, high tackle. We'll come back for the offside call instead. Trinity under a bit of pressure here. Trinity, of course, without uh, Lucas Friday, the England scrum half ahead of a training camp there. This called Glantaf lost Ben Roberts on day one to injury, the skillful winger who would have been crucial in this plate run. But plenty of quality still left on the field. And it's just been nudged on there off the boot to find Lucas. And here's Dewey Thomas putting in the fend, and Thomas is on the outside. And Thomas will go all the way. And Glantaf back on level terms here with the kick to surely put them ahead. Back goes Lou O'Brien, the fly half. Lloyd Lucas at number 10, one to watch out for here in this team. Very creative individual. 
and uh, he put the captain Dewey Thomas on his way here his coaches marvel at not just his speed but also his great knowledge of the game and uh, a real leader's contribution there to get them back on top. Well, Glantaff at the South West Sevens, where they dominated the competition before falling to Millfield in the final, were fantastic off the kickoff. It's a real feature of their game. And once again, they're causing problems for Trinity, but they do reclaim possession. There's a loose pass. Lovely tip around the corner to free up a bit of space. But the ball is loose. No hands Leon latched upon it, the try scorer. And now the chip in behind, and the rain just beginning to drizzle here. And it could cause some problems for Glantaff, but a lovely pickup. Great chase, however, to chop them down. So Owen Hall crashing through the contact. Searching for support. Here's Lewis. Draws in the defenders and then James Clark. Backwards. Bit of patience, but it's been spilt and turned over. And now Trinity on the counter. Once again put Backwards. down, this time by McCarthy Backwards. and hacked through. But good recovery from Trinity Backwards. and a great leg drive. And they've drawn the penalty Backwards. out of Lloyd Lucas as well. Good recovery from Reese McCarthy there. The engine as he's known in this he's Trinity side. Penalty then for Trinity, you take their time on the brink of half time here. Just a minute to go. Well, yeah, Quinn on. Singh, the Quinn's hooker, has just nudged it in behind there. You love to see it from the uh, front row. Really mobile individual, however. More than capable of playing sevens as Lewis gets them a bit out of trouble. And Williams has support. Leon with the tackle. Williams again plays nine. Lucas. And there's nothing but green grass ahead of Glantaff here. Leon had the pace to cover. Williams evades the high press well. Lofted ball over the top and it's been intercepted Never on the ball, by on the McCarthy. Body. So Trinity turn it over on halfway. Direct running this time from Trinity, but no roll. So another penalty. Trinity, of course, in a tough group, but also includes Cranberry College and the Bishop Wand School. Well, on the switch from Vars. Take it to the line, but Lewis with a devastating shot. Trinity still in possession. Little show and go from Leon. And a big carry this time down the tram line by Ozzy Edwards. Trinity play with penalty advantage. Nothing coming. And Leon. With possession, we're into overtime here. Trinity trail by two. And they're looking to go the touch here. And Vaz has found it midway between the try line and 22. This can overthrow. Seeing of Harlequins in his very familiar position at hooker. A good throw. Yes! But it's given as not straight, and uh, well, that means that deep into overtime here, Tr Glantaff will have possession back on their terms. Crouch! Boy! I'm a crack! I went in! 
a call from the sideline, from the referee, from the, uh, the coaches, from Glan Tap is to have a crack. And that's what Louis Lucas will do from this penalty as he looks to go long from the kick. Instead, he just calls an end to the first half. And in the pouring rain here at Roslyn Park, the Howden National School Sevens. In the first game of the plate, Iskul Giffen Glantaf lead Trinity School by two points in what is shaping up to be one of the hardest competitions to call across the five days. We've had all seasons at the Howden Rosen Park National School 7 so far. Beautiful sunshine midweek, overcast skies early, and well, the rain's starting to fall here. We'll see what kind of impact that has across the conclusions of the various competitions. Is this called Glantaf to kick off here? They lead by two points over Trinity. Much like the cup competition, the winners from each pool will go through to a semi-final along with the best runner-up. So every game matters here and from the kickoff, almost regathered by Gabe Williams, but knocked on in the wet. So it will be a scrum for Trinity. Their first attack of this second half. Start of the second half, Trinity fastest off the marks in the first and well, a good option down the short side but knocked on in the pickup. so Glantaf have possession back. Lou O'Brien will feed the scrum this time. Crouch, find, set. And Lou O'Brien does get it away, but it's loose in midfield. Regathered by Clark. Interception, and suddenly Trinity are away. Well, the left, the ball. Fed into the wide channels by Wilcox and then put down in the wet weather. But what an opportunity that was. Just teasing the defence, Wilcox. Regulation pass, but combination of. Uh, Conditions and pressure, perhaps. It was Trinity or Ipswich through that group on day one. Ipswich won the battle. Glantaf in a similar boat. They took down every team except for Cranley, who will be in action on RE2 very shortly. Jack Zorab will take you through that game with his alma mater in action. But for now, it's Glantaf on the wraparound, looking to make a bit of space for themselves. In comes the Fend, and the foot race is on now. There's plenty of chances looking to hunt down Clark, but he will go all the way. Well, the engine, McCarthy, was hot on his heels, but good Fend from Clark. And Glantaf will double their advantage. O'Brien looking to curl it off the right foot. Unlucky! 
had the legs, but uh, not the line. And Glanta from this kickoff will look to regather. Well, it's textbook sevens, really. One man on the overlap. And once you beat the covering defender, James Clark was always going to uh, have the distance in his legs to score there. Glantaf then with another kickoff. And it's another one to be contested. And up goes Lewis. And he is there on the bounce, but uh, Shen Lewis knocked it on just slightly. On the fringes of that Wales under 18 squad. Oshin Lewis. But it's Leon in midfield handing it off for Trinity. In comes the big shot that Glantaf are so capable of. This one's from the captain, Thomas. But Trinity still in possession. Singh with the show and go. Wraps up two defenders and frees the pass. But it's to ground. Jacob King there to regather yeah! disruptive at the breakdown and they have possession again lewis with a quick tap and dewey thomas putting in the fend who's there in support for glantaf well it was knocked off and now trinity will counter shot comes in from o'brien there's another interception this time from o'brien who's away lewis in support beautiful try Lewis, who put in that covering tackle, O'Brien on the intercept. And then good support play from the centre. And with the kick to come, Glantaf could go 19 to 5 ahead. With just two minutes to go. What a breathless period of play that was. A great read by <laughs> Lou O'Brien. And then that's real composure. They put Lewis on his way. Well, Trinity need a score and they need a score soon, but Glantaf so good at uh, making a mess of things at the kickoff for their opposition. This time they just hammer it home. As deep as they can, regathered well by Wilcox. And Trinity perhaps on their way. They've got Leon on the outside, who turns on the afterburners, dummies the kick. Only the sweeper to beat. Great tackle by O'Brien. And intercepted. And Glantaf now looking to kill the game. The captain, Thomas, brought down, but frees up the hands for Oshin Lewis. Williams dummies through the contact and suddenly they've got plenty of players over Omar Leon just piling in to disrupt taken on the slide this time by Glantaf but stolen at the breakdown and Trinity not out of this one yet Leon assesses his options and takes the direct route but Lewis steals it what a game for Oshin Lewis and he's got another turnover to add to his tally and with 30 seconds on the clock, Glantaf have surely ended this contest. Well, they've got the Bishop Wand up next to face off against in this group before they play Handavri College in what I would imagine is a deciding game in this group. We've got a yellow card here. And it's for uh, Trinity. And that yellow card will be decisive, as in last play it is oh, almost a bit of a mix up. McLan Saf, who will end the game, a bizarre finish to the contest. Well, uh, Glantaf take the victory here. Well, there was the deliberate knock-on. The 
potential interception that saw Wilcox into the referee's book. But uh, it will count for naught in the end as Isco, Giffen, Glantaf take a huge victory into their first plate game of the day. Certainly contenders for this competition, which has had, well, some seriously big sides competing in it previously. Not a competition to uh, turn your nose up at at all. The plate will continue throughout the afternoon, but uh, it'll be a return to junior rugby here on RE2 ahead of that massive game in the cup that we'll be seeing here as Cranley at 20 past 11 are in action against Ipswich School in the under 18s cup. But first, junior rugby is St John's Leatherhead take on Northampton School for Boys. That's next live on RE2 in the pouring rain here at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Now let's go boys. Return to the juniors competition then. Well, we've seen some good action already from this competition. We saw the Emirates Falcon International School off to a let's flyer for the majority of their side. Yes, Moving pressure, over to England to play for the likes of Harrow and Millfield in the future. Then Blundells played Norwich, of course. John, the direct DOR of Norwich on COCOMs with us, a pleasure to have him. But now it's uh, Northampton School for Boys against St. John's Leatherhead. Well, there's already been action in this group. St. John's Leatherhead, Dulwich and Prince Henry Grammar School all defeated by the likes of NSB Kings Worcester and George Watson College. So NSB will be looking for their second win of the day. Here is Jack Auburn at 10, playing nine. Lovely shape on the pass from Robert Rinnan the third. And there's a break down the left-hand side and Goodman will score. One word on the team sheet for uh, Northampton School for Boys. It says wheels next to his name. Let's go, boys. And we've seen an example Excellent. of just Jack. why there. Jack. Recently won the uh, Maidwell's Milden Hall 7s, or the Maidwell Hall 7s, that is. This NSB side, two years they've played together. They're a strong unit, Northampton School for Boys, and they'll be uh, looking for uh, some silverware in this under-13s competition. And they're off to a good start here against St. John's Leatherhead. From the school of Topsy Ojo, of course, who was here earlier in the week. Winning an international and spilled off the kickoff. 
free kick on halfway. And St John's on the tack for the first time today. And here is Richardson taking it to the line with great pace, Richardson. Woolley into contact, gets the offload away. Oh, that was Warren instead taking contact there. Back with Richardson. Putting him the big don't argue. And Richardson through the hole. Gets the offload away. But just put down by Harry Brook, unfortunately, there. But wow, Sam Richardson with two great carries. Tipped by St. John's as one of their strongest players. So one to watch in this team. Will the NSB, however, the Northampton School for Boys with the feed. And they're familiar red and blue. And it comes out for Auburn, who takes it to the line, Auburn. And then a lovely lofted pass. And once again, it's Goodman, the try scorer, who's off and away. Alfie Goodman, who will surely score his second. He'll saunter in unopposed. Speed kills in the game of sevens. That's been the theme all week here at the Howard and Rosing Park National School Good sevens. Man. And Alfie Goodman has that in abundance. It's a lovely pass as well from Jack Auburn to set him on his way. Go out to school for boys. Could be on for their second win of the competition ahead of their big game against the King's School Worcester later on this afternoon chipped into midfield taken cleanly by Warren who's under pressure and it comes to Richardson who puts in another great carry skipping through the tackles Richardson but great work on the cover from Robert Rinan he only started rugby last year, but he made up for his early error and a great turnover on the floor as well. Great work from NSB. The vice captain, uh, Alcon Southcolt, darting down that uh, short side, but just knocked on. Well, Rinan bumped off by Richardson, but didn't he do well to get back to his feet and make the covering tackle? Well, it's just a powerful drive from NSB, and they've disrupted the breakdown, but it has come back their way as well, and Rinan comes away with it, and down the short side goes Isaac Rowe. Stay, 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 Rinan plays nine. Well, lovely dummy line, and it's opened up a bit of space for Northampton School for boys. Southcott puts the chip in behind, and it bounces beautifully NSB's way. Alfie Hillier into contact on the 22, but a great turnover by St John's. Taking it to the line. There's the offload. Over the ball goes Rinan. Great steal. Taking on all comers through the hole goes Roberto Rinan, the third. And he scores NSB's third. How poignant. Lovely work, the turnover, and then teasing the uh, St. John's Leatherhead defence. And finally decides to put the hammer down straight through the centre. Great score. Receiving some praise from their coach on the short side touchline here. Yeah, he's going to be. That's why. Next time, you know if it's dry, it's on. Kick off from Luciano Panareo. Stay out. Spits out of the breakdown, but it is still. St. John's in possession, and then hack forward by Panareo again, but Richardson on the cover for St. John's Leatherhead, and Richardson held by Considine. And there's a good ball, and it could be in behind, played on by Kean Smith. Taken into contact, though, St. John's still in possession. 
Backwards from Richardson at first, Recivo skips away from the first, but is all wrapped up by Skelton. Backwards. Oh, oh, big it's... shot comes in as well, Richardson still has it. NSB's defence ferocious yes, so Charlie! far. Yes, There's yes! another big tackle. This time it's Charlie Brazier. Backwards. That's NSB right. flying in to yes, disrupt. Us. And they have stolen it in this final play of the first half. And surely now they've got plenty of numbers outside if they can use them. Yes! Lovely play and Northampton will stroll home. That's half time. Harry Spooner this time with the score. And just thunderous tackles coming in from NSB. Kept St John's contained. Eventually, they forced a turnover as well. It's not even an error from St John's, but a good old-fashioned turnover on the floor that's profited NSB there. Well, this is a very impressive side. Across the pitch, plenty of depth for NSB, which is rare at this level. And they look like contenders going in to the latter stages of the... Uh, Junior Cup competition. At half-time, they lead St John's Leatherhead by four tries. Good morning from Control. The 11-20 round of fixtures. The first matches in the boys under 18 Cup final pool. On RE1, Harrow School versus Dulles College. On RE2, Bradley School versus Ipswich School. On RE3, Bromsgrove versus Bradley College. On RE4, Whitgift School versus Gordon School. On RE5, Sedford School versus Wellington College. And on RE6, Millfield School versus Curtin Grammar School. Uh, those matches in the Cup quarterfinal calls due to get underway at 11.20. Well, we're back then for uh, the second half here between St John's Leatherhead and Northampton School for Boys. Northampton with a really strong first half. But St John's Leatherhead Release with some bright boys! sparks. Advantage. But a penalty advantage for Northampton School for Boys. The perfect start to the second half. Once again, running some great lines. And they've made it into the wide channel. And Hillier will go all the way. Lovely hands across the face of the St John's defence. And once Hillier was in behind, there was no catching him. Well, this uh, juniors competition includes 10 groups of six, playing a round robin style. This group, including George Watson's, the King's School Worcester, Dulwich, wait, Prince Henry's Grammar School, other than these two here. George right. Watson College, one to watch yeah. out for after their big 40-point win in their opening game. <laughs> Taken cleanly off the kickoff, and a good offload through contact as Release well. <laughs> Not rolling. Penalty Back goes ten. St John's way this penalty? time. Not rolling. And Richardson looks to take them all on. Crunching through the tackles, a big physical carrier, but a lovely turnover. Tapped by Spooner, try score at the end of that first half. Skelton hands it off. Little show and go, and Hillier in behind again. This time it goes down. But great play once again from uh, 
LSB in a quick tap as well at this level in the knock-on, so or the line out that is. Played wide by uh, Advantage. Charlie Woolley on the field, but knocked on, and Release. LSB will look to counter. Advantage They've secured right the breakdown. And here's Hillier. Pops up into his hand, good step off the right, and then gets the offload away to Auburn. Excellent chop tackle there by Brook. And Brook reaching into the breakdown as well. A huge clear out comes in from Isaac Rowe. And Rowe looks to play nine. Counter ruck of their own, this time from St John's. And away goes Smith with a good pass. Woolley. Running laterally there, but gets away from two. Back with Richardson, who hooks it Timing, high. Boys. Don't touch! And it will bounce Northampton School for Boys' way. And Brazier over on the right hand side. Scores a sick for NSB. No conversions at this level. So the points go up to 30. which is under a bit of pressure. Kicks it wide and, well, the bounce of the ball this time goes NSB's way. And Brazier had the pace to finish. Just... A great kick-off. It's taken well by Brook and that... looks to be a high tackle. Unfortunately for Harry Brook, good catch from him. Well, a pretty complete performance by NSB. So just around Robin competition, there'll be no trophies for these young gents, all in the spirit of the game, which is great to see. But uh, who will top this big pool, including George Watson's and Kings Worcester? The two yeah. sides who got off to a winning start earlier in the day alongside Northampton. <laughs> School for boys. Well, this time chipped in behind by Richardson. There's a race on here. Bounces up to the scorer of the first try, Goodman. On for a hat-trick. Great counter drive by uh, Woolley. Don't and hunt. Smith looking to get over the ball, but it's back with NSB. Nice, well done, Lovely, boys. beautiful. A great pass out no wide, no and good. they Brazier. find the speed no to Brazier. No We've got one to beat. Yeah. Lovely step to get round Woolley on the cover. And it's NSB six, seventh try even. Oh, they're in behind. Look at the work rate from Woolley to get back. Just some great footwork from Brazier. Just spilt off kickoff this time, and uh, Roberto Rinan the third with a big carry. And he could go all the way here for his second try of the game. NSB's number eight. They've looked pretty clinical here. Something else that's rare to see from an under 13 side is just how protective of possession they are. It's a really good kickoff. Under a lot of pressure from Renan, and he's first to react as well. Lovely little show and go, and good pace. And SB have some talented players on their hand at this age group. Good take off the kickoff. 
Jonathan Johns and Richardson away from one. Big fend, Richardson is a talented player with ball in hand at this level. But a good counter rock from NSB and it spits out their way and Goodman goes down the right hand side and he will have his hat trick. The quickest to react on either side. Goodman scores another. Good counter drive. Jack Auburn in there. And Goodman down the right. Boys, you kick. They kick. Has another. They kick. They kick. Safety first on the way down. Last play, boys. And last Stay play. Behind. A short yeah. kick. Will it go the full 10 yards? It Not 10. Rolls just yeah, short, but a good option yeah, for uh, the captain, Max Hemus. I need to see at least a kick on the ball. Richardson will look to go Thank you. himself this time. Oh, Chicken behind just rebounds <laughs> unkindly for St. John's and Auburn latches onto it. Good hands, Hillier with two outside in. Here goes Panareo. Well, the ball will roll off field and that will bring an end to this contest for NSB. have been on top throughout. 45-0 the final score. And they will be hoping to win this uh, 16 group in this round robin tournament. Well, we, re we return to the under 18s cup and it's a huge game between Cranley and Ipswich School. That's the next one live here on RE2 in one of these uh, brutal cup groups that also includes Dulwich and Angus Savage's pick, Harrow. That's live next here at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to RE2 at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens 2024. It is the first under 18s cup action of day two, when only the very best schools that have fought their way through the group stages yesterday get to contest for the cup. This is the semi final group stages. So both Ipswich School and Cranley still in a group stage with four other teams, or with four teams in total. And those teams include Harrow School, the reigning champions, as well as Dulwich. You have to win your group to guarantee yourself qualification for the semi-finals. It means that every match at this point is a big one. And Cranley, in the white and blue colours, take possession right from the start. Well, Angus Savage from Next Gen 15 is alongside me for us to pick our way through against these two schools who have already played so well in the competition. The rain has come down though in the last hour and that might change things significantly. Cranley on the ball. Scrum half pass from Max Pryor. That's spun away from Will Friedlander wearing 21. Penalty to Ipswich. And they've got so many talented players this Ipswich school. Probably the underdog in this group given the likes of Cranley and Harrow in it but they keep on pressing Hold on. Cranley. 
Cranley off with a penalty. Henry Pryor this Not time. 10. This is where Cranley can make a really big impact on this game is when they get some ball, they're going to want to keep a hold of it as much as they can. They think they're probably playing yeah. the, the more traditional sevens of the two. I mean, both good, fantastic please. sides. But if Cranley can maintain possession, they're going to drain the legs of Ipswich and we're going to start seeing the way that they can just play this beautiful style of rugby. Well, James Melville, who is uh, Harrow's coach, warming up his boys just uh, over the other side of the hoardings. He was saying, in our group, Cranley play the best sevens. And that's coming from the reigning champions in Harrow. And that might be a little bit of gamesmanship, uh, picking up the opposition before going into battle against them. But uh, traditionally, Cranley play this style, which is, is so good to watch. And it doesn't rely on necessarily having the best players in the competition to do it. Never trust a school coach, that's what I say. <laughs> yeah, quite right. Gotta work hard now, come on! So, ball away from Joe Taylor. He's wearing two today. Slow build-up work Lost from now. Cranley, but that's the, the nature of the sodden ground on which they're playing. Four days of sunshine at Roslyn Park, then the rain comes down on day five. So patient work from both sides and from Ipswich not to overcommit in defence. Just trying to trap Cranley. But here they come and still bursting through. Lovely run. Cranley aiming for the try line in the shape of Will Simpson. Simpson keeps it alive. First real breakthrough against an opposition defence of the match, and we're already nearly three minutes in. That's how tight this is going to be. Stepping back against the grain is Biggs. Benji Biggs slides in for the first score. Exactly what we were talking about. Energy sapping stuff from Cranley. Just going through phase after phase after phase. It is so hard in defence, especially when the field is heavy like it is with the rain. And you're just playing this lovely side to side, patient build up. And then all it takes is one line break. And then you just put the hammer down. Even then, Ipswich still working so hard in defence, they almost managed to find a way to stop it. But it's just that patience, beautiful sevens that we spoke about. And if Cranley are going to play with this level of patience through this group Tell stage, off. wow, they could well be knocking right on the door of those semi-finals. Pass here from Joe Taylor in uh, wet conditions Tell is one. a good one as well, especially Hold. after engaging the defence. You just see it there, they, they almost over chase as they're, going, as they're trying to cover that line break. And that's because of the break on the other side. They're just having to work so hard to get across. Skill level in this wet conditions as well means players are probably going to play a little closer to each other. And also some schools are going to be charging out of defence quicker Take because in that extra split wait, second wait, it takes wait, to wait, gather wait. the ball in these conditions. That gives defences an opportunity to rush rather than play patiently. But if we have taken that patient approach and had it not been for uh, Cranley's own patience, they might well have uh, forced a turnover. Anyway, Cranley still with field position. Five, not rolling. Penalty against uh, Ipswich School's number five. That's George Howard and Cranley now under Howard. Tackle! Uh, Leave it, 15, Arms leave it. As he tries to rip the ball, has to leave it. Back to the right, it gets swung, his bigs. Now he passes advantage. on and that's knocked on. Good chance for Ipswich now. No advantage coming, knock on. Five minutes in these conditions and that's our first skill error. Unbelievable. Yeah. Time off. I feel like we've seen the pattern of the game a little bit here though, which Time is that off, Cranley looks so injury. comfortable ball in hand. And we, we know the sort of patient play they're going to play with. I think there's a man to keep an eye on for Ipswich here, Connor Holcroft wearing six. He's a real magician. Play on or um, his footwork is just, yep. just sensational. We saw some brilliant moments through the 15 season with him. If the pattern of this game is going to be Cranley with ball in hand, just attacking and attacking and attacking, and Ipswich having to soak up, I think Ipswich's best chance starts to emerge from some sort of counter-attacking oh, well. move where the ball gets into Holcroft's hands Crouch. early. So just keep an eye on Find. that. For if they do Set. just get that moment where they can move early, the ball. Early hook. Well, there's a, there's a trio, isn't there? And one of them is this man here, Harry Evans, as well as Noah Woodhouse, who wears 10. He's been 
electric and this is the breakthrough for Ipswich here they go over halfway two in the chase for Cranley but they are not going to stop Ipswich from leveling things up and it is of course Connor Holcroft who breaks the deadline I must know something I, must be my must be my lucky day hey how many times have you covered Roslyn Park Angus I rarely get a prediction right, but that, the, when it comes to Conor Holcroft, it's hard not to get a prediction right. He is a sensational player, and you just saw it there. You know, shirt was scragged, but he's got just enough power, but that elusive footwork and pace. But we've, I mean, in effect, that's what we were saying, is that they are, they are going to be under pressure. It's going to be about, in those rare moments of possession, can they just make it count and get an instantaneous score and that's exactly what they've done and you know for what five and a half minutes they basically haven't touched the ball but that one moment and they've made it count no conversion on either side so five points each we go you get one group point for a draw two for a win and effectively you've got to win your group to go through one school will go through from these three groups without winning it though so points difference will come into play for that school Ipswich and Evans now they're into the race and now they're playing with a bit more fluidity Ipswich hacked through retaken by Ipswich on halfway end of the first half knocking Ipswich on the ball hold that's kicked through and Cranley under not any real pressure to get back, but Ipswich reception party is there for them. And flooding into that breakdown. Now there might be a chance if the ball can be worked away to an edge, but no one's really providing the width for Cranley. And Ipswich have reset really well. So here we go again. High tackle. Neither school looking to end this half just yet. High tackle. I don't mind that tactic of kicking. In these conditions, when there's not a sweeper in play, it's pretty difficult to get out of your own 22. Ipswich would be a bit disappointed to have given away a penalty there because it just allows, well, I was going to say it allows an escape for Cranley, but I think they've decided as well that, in effect, it's so wet and so difficult to make ground here that from your own 22, let's just, let's just pack in at half-time. At half-time then, Cranley, five points each against Ipswich School. So, Angus, let's discuss the, the context of the pool stages right now. Uh, Cranley in a group with uh, Dulwich and Harrow, as well as Ipswich. So, of those two on paper, from what you saw yesterday, who would you be looking to finish one and two? Effectively, whatever answer you give doesn't matter anymore because day two offers so many different conundrums. But from what we w could go off yesterday? Yeah, I mean, Harrow were sensational yesterday, absolutely sensational, as they have been for the past year and a half. Um, but be below them, I think the competition was rife. I mean, Cranley, I've been having conversations with people about um, Cranley's performance yesterday. I think it was, oh, I can't remember off the top of my head who it was against, but they had a, they had a qualifier to get through uh, what last game of the group, and they were brilliant in it. Played the best sevens that anyone had seen that week. Was, was that against the, Glanta? Was yes, it was indeed against Glanta. Absolutely fantastic. So I think Cranley and Harrow were looking like the two. But you're right, Ipswich off at your peril. They won the Seaford 10s. They won the Hurstbeer point sevens. Yeah, they're a sensational side. And do not write Dulwich College off. Dulwich College have been under the radar, but brilliant all seven season. They're playing really exciting stuff, and they've got two absolute gas men out wide. It, it is up in the air at this point in the competition. So all of those matches to come on different pitches, but right now, the next seven, what's in front of both these two schools? is all that takes their focus and Cranley kick off looking to get that restart in and a small mistake just there please Cranley over rushing that and penalty given here's Evans and this man was most impressive yesterday as well lost Beyond. Veen, I think it was keep working I said Valtner in actual fact now the chip in behind, haven't seen this just yet. And Ipswich on the chase, Cranley 
take possession back. Same, be on the ball. And so Ipswich penalised for going beyond the wall. You've 17, got to support beyond your the ball. In the ruck, and uh, there was too much weight on his hands for the referee. Will, uh, Will Friedlander puts this into touch. 17, just straight on to it, OK? I've just That's had a message through from Group C. Get a load of They've this. Got the Half time, gap, Kirkham Grammar School, 21. Millfield seven. Yikes! So that's put, that's pull C, which also includes said but off, Wellington time as well. We, we had a prediction that maybe those four teams would knock each other with so time many uh, so many punches that they wouldn't be standing by the end of the group stage. Uh, who knows? But Kirkham, again, so impressive, uh, such a connected side. <laughs> Holding onto the ball, so finally with a an error that might work against them with Ipswich. Ipswich again looking for this chip over the top. And now's Cranley to start from deep, but in this weather that is so much harder to go through the phases that they like to do. Unlike some schools who can strike from distance in an instant, Cranley making a few errors once the kick has gone in. So Good. Harry Five, Evans three, taps and goes. There's uh, Valtner. Match will be moved to the pitch next door. Time off. Penalty again. Card to be shown. Friedlander. Two minutes Time, in the bin. Time's bend. off. Put the ball down. Cranley down to six. This is where Ipswich have to Time make it off. count. They've been under the cosh a little bit through the majority of the game with a man extra on the field and that man Holcroft with the ball. This is the time. What a start this will be to the semi-final group stages for Ipswich to land a victory over Cranley. Advantage, high tackle. The next two minutes will go so Ooh. far drop, 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 drop. to right. deciding high tackle. That. Evans. Billy Reid. Valtner again offering those big shoulders. <laughs> Penalty Cranley. That is outstanding defence. Down a man. Crucial intervention. And I would say, being the cynic that I am, that I'd, I'd try and see out the rest of this Simbin period and see what <laughs> happens. But I think Cranley have a bit more ambition than me. It's the trend to play the same way as much as you can, isn't it? Um, despite being down a player. Take the halfway, OK. Cranley make a line change. Three players chucking themselves into the mix. Time on. Just slow pace to the game. It's not the uh, rip roaring, all Hold. out rugby sevens action of yesterday. This is far more calculated. And physically, players not able to put as much speed on the ball given how their studs will be slipping, but that's a good offload. And in behind now, Cranley for the first time in the second half to scorch across the turf and get Cranley second. It's Kit Derrick who dives in with a wonderful in and away here. Offloads, 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 offloads. They are what make the difference. When the weather is tough, when the conditions are difficult, offloads next, next ball are the after ultimate kickoff. difference maker in this game. Derek has set this off and it looks good from Derek. All seven for Kit Derek. Just look at this. I think it's two, maybe three defenders that get tied in here. It's sort of two and a half, isn't it? Gets the offload away. And by doing so, they've created an overlap. It's a wonderful in and out, but it's all about tying those defenders in to get that offload away. Joe Taylor, it was, who powered through a few black jerseys. Let's go, please. Cranley down to six, but up by seven. That yellow card about to expire. Advantage. No advantage, 13's in front of the kicker. Yeah. Knock on, no advantage coming. If you want an example of just how competitive day two is, 
21-7 Kirkham Grammar School against Millfield. Millfield Crouch. will lead 26-21. Point. <laughs> Set. Me, I mean, that's, uh, that is sensational. Friedlander whips the ball away here. Cranley just looking to do what they can do to book this first win of the semi-final groups in. Harrow and Dulwich College to come for both these schools after this encounter. You don't want to be going into those encounters chasing your tail. Max Pryor get up, get up. at scrum half there. Will Freelander back on the field. Touch of the Tom Nicole about Will Freelander when he's out on the path or even going further back no to the likes of Charlie in, Hobart. Backwards, Sam Langmead, playmakers of yesteryear in Cranley Colours. Tom Nicole, what a player he was. Oh, yeah. What a player. That was unfortunate, that, for Cranley, because they had they could have got the ball away faster. They yeah, did have numbers off. on the right-hand side. They just couldn't quite move it away Life from the there. breakdown fast enough. Come up. Come up a little bit. Time on. One minute to go, gents. One minute, boys. One minute. Crouch. Bind. Lovely moustache on Set. the three, I have to say. Yeah, you've got to say that's, uh, that's good to see. Getting a dousing of uh, the weather in Wimbledon Common right now. Ipswich on the edge. In with a shout here. Good wheels to go in behind here. Cranley send three back to fetch the ball. And fetch it they do. Evans is defending here for Ipswich, trying to bring his Cranley player to ground, who's done exceptional work. That's Henry down, Pryor. 21. Penalty, though. Evans wants to go. There's 10 seconds remaining. Ipswich need a converted score to draw the match. Here is one of their danger runners. Eaton Collins. Be on the ball. Penalty. Keep working, keep Still working. There. For right, Valtman, not 10. Evans again. This is going to go down. Cranley weren't 10. We'll come all the way back onto the 22. 20. Off you go. Too many penalties. Not and 10. And Kit Derrick, Hold. whose try Hold. looked to have shored things up Let for Cranley, is Jen, off for six. Jen, take one more step for me. Off for two minutes. Hold, Cranley down to six. Not 10. Can Ipswich make this count? They've come back once. They need to come back again. Evans barging into contact. Here's set Valtner. There's Holcroft, the big names coming to the fore for Ipswich. Hands on the ground from Cranley, or trying to at least, but the rucking is good. Here's Evans, doesn't trust the sidestep initially, there he goes! Evans dives under the sticks. Now this to level up the match. Harry Evans bides his time, half a show, and then the full-on go. Gents, take it from this side, take it from this side. It's Connor Holcroft to level up this first encounter. <laughs> and he does so. So Cranley, well played, gents. Good work. 12 yeah. points each against Ipswich School, and that is uh, of its own kind, separate to Kirkham and Milford and what people are seeing over there. A group Here's stage semi-final match to savour for Thank you, lads. Good luck to the rest of the chess tournament. like uh, nature. Cranley held to a draw by Ipswich School. Well, both these teams um, have to work out what that might mean for later. But right now, let's just enjoy this, Angus. And uh, Harry Evans slowing the pace right down to the rugby he wanted to play. What a finish to the game. I thought he'd, I thought he'd run up a blind alley. I thought he had nowhere to go. But just look at that, the show and go. He didn't even show it to anyone. There was no one to receive <laughs> it. But it's so convincing with the eyes and the show under the sticks into the embrace of his mates. That is a moment that he is going to savour for a long, long time, no matter what shakes out in this group. A massive for Ipswich School. They are in the fight in this pool. Harrow and Dulwich College, the teams uh, to come for both these two schools. Makes mathematics for us uh, all the more important, Angus. Certainly does.
So next coming up on Pitch Ari to Emmanuel School from London against Bryn Klenog Comprehensive School. So Emmanuel kicking off, Bryn Klenog in the blue and the black and they're looking to impose their will in this junior under 13s competition. Emmanuel being passed around at the moment. Brinkelenog off and going and looking to score in the wet conditions. The slide will be good here. <laughs> the ball is touched down, business like, from the off against for Brinkelenog. Left or right for me? So Manuel, back from the base of the scrum, lovely dummy and go, but intercepted well by Brinkelenog. Th the mud is really starting to have an influence on the jerseys and the legs of these players now. Lost the rain has actually stopped here, but it's effect there for scrum. all to uh, see. And it's good to see because we've had some for the first four days of this uh, out in Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Ready? Bind on for me. Crouch. Bind. Set. Hold. Ball stolen by the scrum. Bring Kalenog again with a chance to get to the edge. This time Emmanuel's defence is better set. Two legs in there. Bring Kalenog staying nice and close to each other and yet keeping good depth as well. No roll, leave! Off your feet, leave it red. Thank you. Clearly been uh, very well coached in the seventh season. That's a lovely pass too. Now the chance on the outside. Bring Kalenog steaming towards the line and driving home. A second for this young man. Try here yes, for uh, William Roderick, the second of the day for this man. Great speed and fleet of foot over soft ground. From the five for me. Gentle, not ten, take two. Emmanuel's turn to have a run on the outside and this is good speed too now Emmanuel looking to get themselves into the game has to come in field ball ripped lost forward in the rip and that ball lost forward scrum marks that for me Bind, set. Vantage offside. Emmanuel with the advantage. Offside from Brink Kalenog. Advantage oh, over! Show and then the fend, and this could be all the way in. Offload is attempted, <laughs> but Brink Kalenog intercepts. And this Brink Kalenog, number seven, has done sterling work. No release, leave red! Never on side. Blacks moving once more. Kicking the ball away. Oh, that's a lovely show and a hitch from 
the Brinkland number nine, moving through the skills repertoire and breaking through the field now again from the right wing, cutting in field support is there. And there's numbers here as well. Good pass will do Lock it. And on. Roderick was there. Lost forward there. But lost forward at that point. Two minutes to play Scrum. before half time. You gotta wait for the ball to be lifted, all right? If it's out the scrum, it's out the scrum, all right? Coach! Ten, ten! Bind! Ten, ten! Set! Stand up, stand up. I need that head under when we set, please. Reset. Coach! Huh? Bind! Set! Better. Manual school scrum. And Emmanuel with possession, and that's uh, much more purposeful from Emmanuel. Vantage, Numbers lock on. to the left, eventually they get it to their man on the edge, but nothing the ball coming. Goes down. These Not conditions the are, are very, very tricky for both schools. Well, we have uh, managed to get down to the sidelines, grab someone in from Brinkalenog, and Jeremy Stock is with us here. And Jeremy, welcome. Um, what's your Thank you very much. role today with uh, Brinkalenog? Um, I'm kind of um, assistant coach today. Sam Mines is uh, in charge of the year group, so I'm uh, assisting Sam. The boys have uh, had a good start. We had a long, long journey. Had a good start against uh, St. John's the mark early. Hopefully we can back it up here. Having to defend right now. But with a couple of nice attacks and two that tries to control there, retrieving the ball. Yeah, talk us through here, Jeremy. That's William Roderick now going in for his third, hopefully. Yes, I think he'll make it. They've worked hard on, um, worked really hard on handling. Um, so difficult day today, but uh, we work really hard on, on handling skills. It's uh, vital as far as we're concerned. Half time! So uh, hopefully it'll bear fruit today, as we saw there. And what about William then? Other sports that he plays, he looks like he's got a good turn of speed on him. Uh huh. He's not. Uh, he's not a footballer. He won't forgive me. Uh, he will forgive me for for saying that. He's not a, a, exactly a, a soccer player. He loves his rugby. He's a very athletic fellow. We're looking forward to seeing him involved in athletics in the summer term. Uh, but yeah, just uh, capitalising, using his uh, using his frame and his pace. Yeah. So 15 points to nil at Emmanuel School. And um, Jeremy, whilst you're here in half time bringing your team to, to Roslyn Park. It's obviously a commitment away from studies and a long journey, as you say. But what do you think the boys are getting out of today um, on top of having a day off school? Uh -huh. Yeah, maybe top of the list is the day off school. <laughs> but um, it's a fantastic uh, opportunity then for them to see the, the wider world that rugby can offer. And um, being here amidst this, you know, thousands of boys taking part, uh, it's a real opportunity for them to kind of see the scope there is there for, for development through and just enjoy and enjoy rugby those boys the boys here t today who maybe won't push on from school rugby but it's really important for us to give them the opportunity to enjoy as much as they possibly can Roslyn Park was a, a big part of my school days as a rugby player and so it's lovely now you know I've been a PE teacher for 30 years and uh, it's great to be able to still bring the boys how many times have you come to Roslyn Park would you say um, in this different is, guises uh, as a player, two or three times, and as a as a PE teacher now, this is probably my fifth or sixth time. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a fantastic tournament, isn't it? Everyone had, if you've come, you have a lot of memories from it, and uh, it's good to, to definitely. Bring. Yeah, that's right, and it, it just seems to grow every year. Yeah, incredibly. I don't know where the fields keep coming from. But <laughs> that's right. This, but for the record, this is just a one of three sections of field. This is the Richardson Evans pitches. There's pitches way out to the east there's pitches way out to the west as well beyond the tree line even there's a whole nother field uh, behind us and then if you go to the right hand side of our picture there is a whole nother field as well beyond that it is uh, over 20 pitches of rugby sevens taking place here mm -hmm. zach williams is uh, uh taking the kick off there he's he's what you would call uh, or what the young younger element would call a baller He's a very good multi-sportsman, golfer, basketball, uh, whatever he turns his hand to. That was him there. Yeah, that's right. And he's very physical as well. <laughs> clearly, clearly plays martial Genuine arts yeah. <laughs> at some point in his uh, upbringing. That went forward. Come back for the knock-on. 
It's a good chance Scrum. for manual school. They haven't had much to, to live off. Clearly, it's a very well drilled school. I saw as well, two hands in a genuine attempt. Dude, to catch. Yeah, fair play. Sam works really hard with the boys. We, we all chip in. Um, we train every Monday. And they've done some uh, 15 aside all the way through the Coach. season. And they've done a fair bit of Find. extra prep for the sevens. Set. So, uh, yeah, hopefully they can take it all on board. Good play from the Emmanuel scrum half under pressure there. And this is much more precise from Emmanuel, working this edge out and finding some green space. And the Never tap. Never Zach Birkenshaw there with a the chase back and an ankle tap. Great defensive work. But still with Emmanuel. And they're going down the five-metre channel. Big bodies oh, lining no. them up, but no knock-on, so it's a 60 metres gained here. And that's a nice dummy. Vantage, Scott tackle off the ball. The tackling is really impressive at the defensive side of your school. Bryn Kalenov really standing up here. But there's questions to answer still. <whistles> Nothing coming, tackle yeah, off the ball. We're, we're very lucky. We don't have to do too much in terms of encouraging from the physicality. They seem to be uh, well prepared for for the confrontation, shall we say. That sounds like a Welsh side from the <laughs> national team down to the schoolboy level. That's a lovely ball from Emmanuel there. That is nice. Now, on the edge, but the dummy given. Perhaps the pass wasn't quite on. It was too far away. No release, Blue, no, There's thank you. a chance to bring Kalenog to pinch the ball. Watch the leg. The number nine in your team as well, yeah. uh, Jeremy. He's got Harrison some nice Corley. feet. Yeah, Harrison he's, uh, who? Harrison Corley. He's a lightest player, but he is... He's very important to the team. Keeps us, uh, keeps the team ticking over nicely. He's got a nice goose step right? developing uh -huh. as well. It seems yeah. working on that. Yeah, hard work to defend here. William and Zach have Coach. a rest. The placements are on. Bind. Set. Hold. Good push from Emmanuel. Yeah, really good. And from behind your own line, what can come of this? Zach Bergenshaw using his strength again. Good counter. Oh, pinch from Emmanuel, driving for the line here and sliding and then placing. So close. Excellent attack and last ditch defence. Mark's there yeah. for me. Oh, that's, oh, that's how it was my voice. There was nobody over from your side. Rock was not for and, and the, the privilege of playing on these pitches, um, on these two pitches particularly, is that by the players, do you think? Oh, it just definitely. Set. Yeah, we were, we were we told Hold! them because this is the first time for our, our boys to come to Roslyn. So once we knew we were on the RE pitches, and uh, would be just Lewis Street there with a the hack on. Oh, unlucky. Never held. Straight off feet, advantage! Good boys! Manuel has to start again from yeah. deep, penalty. Straight off feet! They worked hard to turn that over and gain possession, fair play, excellent. And timings for matches coming up, uh, Jeremy. Do you know when you next you want one of these other I think camera pitches that people back home? Can I'm not certain watch. if we're on uh, on one of the camera pitches again, but uh, we'll we'll get a tweet out if we are to uh, to the following faithful on the uh, on Twitter or X. <laughs> well, you, you're, you're clearly up to date, Jeremy. Yeah, it's uh, okay. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Let let fans at home know when you're next on. Emmanuel from not time far, off. Of course, in substitutions. Clapham. All right, local uh -huh. uh, local school, much less of a journey for them here. Yes. Gents, I need you ten from me, so take at least another step, please. On yourself, please. Boys have worked hard there to keep the scoreline uh, on a zero. Very strong effort from Emmanuel. Time on. He changes to the Brinkleanog side now. Go, little ones. Run, Lewis, run! Knock on! Yeah. Obviously you do it. Lost forward there. A little bit sloppy there if we're going to be picky. Scrum! <laughs> young referee's doing well today. We had a very young referee in the first game and it's good to see another youngster doing the referee in. I was very impressed with the standard. Excellent. Yeah, we get Coach. to know the referees as well on our pitch, which is so nice. Fine. Exchanges with the players. Hold it, gents. Always Set. revealing and 
at this age as well. It's, it's almost sometimes a bit of coaching as well going we on, isn't there? On, uh -huh. on the laws because things are different in sevens. And That's right, yeah. Reset. We've got a different pathway uh, from the WIU as the, uh, Coach. for the schools uh, to what the, uh, English schools play. So we're uh, adapting Set. to a slightly different pathway today as well. So, oh, In terms uh, of rules as well? Yeah, yeah. The, for instance, the, we have line outs, whereas there are no line outs today. So there's a few subtle differences. The essence of the game is still the same, obviously. Going from behind his own try line here. Lost oh. forward in the Lost forward in the tackle. And you'll do well to. Yeah, they're putting a lot of pressure on us here. In that corner. Yeah. Minute. Mark's there for you. It's finally Welly's weather. If you're coming down sure today, is, yeah. uh, later on, time to, hold. To support Emmanuel. All people are not you coming from afar. Yeah, I hope you've packed your wellies. It is starting to churn up in Wimbledon Common. Brilliant, Claire. Where are you taking Time your on. pupils from? Is it all local pupils that tend uh, to be? Yeah, anyone the, the, catchment, the school catchment is fairly tight uh, within, uh, I would say, like a seven mile radius of the school. Uh, there's, uh, the school is in a village called Beithai, uh, so we get a lot of oh, students yes! from there. Beithai Rugby Club, very strong rugby club. Lantford Vardra is another uh, village with a very strong rugby club, and we're, we're benefiting. Uh, from uh, good junior sections there coming together in the school. Emmanuel looking for this uh, only score of the second half, it would be. Yeah, they're working hard. They deserve a score, as long as there's only one. <laughs> there they go. Body not ball, 13. The middle. And then they reset. Good organisation here, but change of direction. That allows Brinkelenog up. Emmanuel now looking for more space. One minute. Yeah. Yeah. Please release the ball. We'll tap and go. Yeah. Little fortunate to get that penalty, I feel. But there we go. What a nice switch. Get over, get over. Backwards. Back through. Content to put it off the field, I think. <laughs> So there we go. Um, Brinkland are keeping a clean sheet in the end. Emmanuel School sticking to the task well, but not quite crossing. But uh, more games for both these two teams. Many more games for the rest of the day as well. Yeah. So we wish them well. And Jeremy Stock, thank you very much for joining us from Brinkland Comprehensive School. It's been great to have your company. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Really enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Well, thanks for that, Jack. Some good action there from the under-18s competition and from the uh, junior sevens. But we're on here for the second day of the Girls' Cup competition as Corrigy Kamoid from Cardiff take on Alvaro. Sophie from Alvaro alongside me. Thanks for being with us, Sophie. Yeah, thank you for having me. And it's uh, Corrigy Kamoid with the fast start here. Molly Davis. Hands it off into that wide channel for Rihanna Bryant. Advantage a littering of Cardiff players in this team. Back, back, hold there. But there'll be a penalty there for Colin Ekamoid. Some defending to do for Andal. Good. Not 10 yards. The ball whipped out wide and then they take the direct route. Colin Ekamoid. Rebecca Coggins. Hands 
lays it off and a walk in here for the captain, Saren Thomas. Okay? And it's the perfect start for colleague Ike okay? But uh, Sophie, yeah, sorry to bring you in in the middle of the action, but uh, a well-worked try by colleague Ike Yeah, it was a really good one. Um, yeah, first match of the day, I'm sure we'll warm up into it and there'll be a lot to come. Drawn into this cup group alongside Cardinal Newman and the Canadian side yeah, for the I love of the game. I An exciting group of uh, top quality opposition. Yeah, yeah we I, definitely know we're in I for a, a bit of a tough, game, a tough day, um, but hopefully we're going to really come out there. We did well yesterday and we well, hope that we can that, bring the same you. kind of play. She let go straight away. Did very well yesterday. Sophie taking down the Judd and uh, Saint Jean Bershman's College from Brussels as well as the Hayes and a draw with Worth. But that try there from Colleague Ikemoid, only the fourth you've conceded all tournament. Yeah, we're really, really pleased with how we've done so far. Um, off to such a great start. And we just hope we can continue, use our speed and do what we do. No, even now, you've up your feet. Well, it yeah, is a uh, bit of a mess at the breakdown as the rain continues to fall here at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. But Aundel searching for a route into the outside. And uh, well, it's a lovely fend in the contact. Aldo Bilton there, good. ball back inside from Liz Hodgson. Hodgson back with it. There's a hand in there from Colleague Ikemoid, so there'll be Under a penalty. Pressure. Knocked on, it was a tackle. Well, a couple in the number tackle. one shirt on field. No, no. Oh, scrum. <laughs> Looks like Flora Crawford starting. Off the hand. There's a couple of 15s as well. A couple of blank shirts, sorry, as well. But uh, Sophie's Wait, sorry, Brian, thankfully here to help us out. Hi there. Thanks. But uh, that's much better from Aundel and a set Five. piece opportunity for you as well. Set. Let, let, let her. Scrum that's feed fine, pops out the back and a lovely one-handed pass from Priyana Morrill. That was good. Over the ball go Colleague Kamoy, but Aundel do get it away. Cutting back against the grain and bursting through the tackles. Away goes Crawford. Lifted off the deck into the hands of Morell. Release her. Once again, it's lifted. That's fine, that's only a tackle, that's fine. Great tackle there from Lily Griffiths, another of Cardiff. Lovely step off the right and an injection of pace into the attack that's and they're up to the 22. Went back. Tackle's Backwards fine. off the hand of Colleague Ikemoy, so Abdul have lost possession. But they have ah. driven up to the 22 of the Welsh side. Big shot coming in on that outside channel. Still, Colleague Kamoid looks to play. On the spin this time is Molly Davis. Ball's out. The ball is out. And Molly Davis can play nine. They're a bit flat, so it allows Aundel to get up in their face. And it could be on in that wide channel. Strong carry by Alicia I'm Taylor. Sorry, no, 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 leg, leg, no, leg. <laughs> Three called no you just come down so onto your Kimoy, side. But good defence around all to begin keeping uh, Colleague Kimoy contained. <laughs> well, a blistering start to the game, Sophie. So here yeah, it's been it's been good so far. I think we're better, much better on the attack. So once we get these passes going, get to the wing, get some speed, that's where we really seem to do well. So hopefully we can work on that. And Colleague Kimoy, coached by the uh, former Wales okay. international. Laurie Norkit Morgan. Laurie Norkit Morgan, of course, who also yeah. played professional netball as well. Yeah, yeah, Switched okay. over to rugby after the uh, passing we got of her, sub on for her sister and now in charge of the program here at Colleague Kimoid, offering that wise sad? knowledge. A new sevens program started by Gavin Gallagher. And they've done excellently well to make this cup competition, beating Cali with Hills Road and RGS Worcester comprehensively, even drawing with Epsom. One of the we'll strongest women's programs in the you country. Have a where you are. And they're good value for their seven point advantage. Yes, of course you can. We'll just wait for her to go off. Five times capped for uh, Wales. Okay, cool. Larry North I can hold Morgan. Her, so we'll just wait for her to go. Wait for my whistle. Bringing yeah? a breadth of expertise <coughs> to this uh, colleague of yep, side. <laughs> Tapped there by Be Brooke Bevan and hooked in behind. The race will be won by Aundel. Carried forward by Crawford. Leave her, leave Gets her. the offload away. And hacked clear by Aundel in response. And in this wet weather, not a bad option. Regathered well. On the pickup by Alicia no, no, Taylor. No, 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 no. 
15 for playing the nine. Offside is the call. Great tap penalty by Lily Griffiths, who is through and away. There's plenty in pursuit for Roundel. Wonderful covering tackle. That's fine. And the ball is loose. Only a tackle. Only a tackle. And as there was no uh, offside line, Martha Paul was able to regather possession. And now Roundel on the break. Just loose in the hands, but we all come back Guys, for a penalty and tackle uh, without the ball. All action in this game, so it's not slowing the ball. down for a second. Leave it. Yeah, it's been really back exciting ten. actually. Um, we're losing a bit of width, but I think once we saw that out, we've got a lot of speed coming. Let's go, guys. Um, Mark, pretty good tackle so far. We're doing good to defend. It's over here. Stop them from breaking through. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Let's go now. Will be a tap penalty from deep inside their 22. Play on. Well, it's Play on, touched onside. by Colleague Kimoy, who charged down the kick. No, no, Red, you're off your feet. Leave it. And a penalty 13. goes the Welsh side's way. Just unable to uh, string together the phases Ten. at the moment, Sophie. Yeah, I think Good. we are trying to avoid the kicks, and I think that because often when we kick, we're not chasing enough. So I think if we can just keep possession and get some solid passes, find the space and get through it, that will work to our advantage. But right, maybe the stress of being in the cup. But yeah, we'll hopefully we'll pick someone. it up. Thanks for reminding her. Thank well, you. The, uh, Thank the weather God. playing absolute havoc here. Crouch. Another spilled ball. Find. There will be an Aldo scrum instead. The rain continues to pour. Right, that's it, that's Turned it. over at the scrum, however, it pops out Colleague Kimoy's way. It's just behind anyone for Colleague Kimoy, but then it comes the fen from Molly Davis, driving up to within 10 metres. I was knocked on there. It's just been spilled on the floor. That was much floor. better, jackling round the back. That's my scrum. And Sophie, the weather having a real impact here. Yeah, it is. It's um, Mark, making the ball quite slippy, but um, we're doing quite well. There's a good tackle from play, Laura Crawford there to save the try, which is good. Stay five. And we've More got space on the bind, guys. Scrum on. Bind. And a scrum then set. for Andal. The last one didn't exactly Leave go their the way. Room. Turnover at the set piece. Okay, and this time it out. is Perfect. possession for Andal. Seriously physical intervention from Molly Davis. Good. And over the ball yeah, goes. Colleague like Kamoid. Alicia yeah, Davis with the turnover. Right, 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 right. Good. A bit lateral at the moment. Colleague Kamoid swung in the contact, at, but picked up by Freya Inkpen. Get on looking the side. to get onto the outside. No, Red! Out of the Red! No, leave it, leave Go it! On. Great line speed once Go again. On. But a penalty advantage. Colleague Kamoid's. To play no, there's too many penalties. No, no. Good tap from Lily Good Griffiths. Now. Takes Release three to bring her down, Good. but popped up from the deck. Davis on the turn. And now to the line of pen. No hands! Red back! Good. Once again, driving towards the line, Molly Davis hands it off. Knocked on! Get off! Get off! To Alicia Taylor. For Aundel from the knock on. Advantage over! Contained well by Colleague Kamoid, and this has been a Not seriously done. long piece of play. Some tired bodies on field after a long day of the sevens ball, yesterday. No, 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 no. Advantage over Popped now. Off the deck. Davis, a two-on-one surely outside, but instead the direct no, route chosen no. by Rebecca Coggins. Another penalty. 15, 15. And it Too many will penalties. Be Too many. An You're accumulation off. that sees Priyana Morrow off the field. Back. Deep into overtime here in the first <laughs> half. Quick tap. And surely with numbers outside, instead, Davis <laughs> back against the grain. Cutting you can into kick it this score. Way if you want. You can kick it from and there this Sophie, way. Sophie, the that's one of the over. longest periods of play we've seen at Rossman Park all week. Thank you. Wow, yeah, that was a really good defensive effort from us, to be honest. We um, did hold them off for a long time, and yeah, just hoping in the second half we can get some more stuff in. <laughs> Another successful conversion puts Koli Yikamoid 14 up at the break in this breathless game of sevens. Finally, with the one Thank player you. Thank advantage. You very much.
Lowry Norcott Morgan's side able to uh, break almost six minute deadlock after their first score. They'll lead by 14 points going into the break. And Sophie, what do Aundel School need to change in this second half? I think we do very well when we have the ball, and that's that's our. We have a lot of speed in our team, lots of speed. And if we can get wider, find the space, move it along, wait for opportunities, and if something's not working, move it back, exploit the space we have, and then make a run because we are a fast team, support each other. Then that's how we got our tries yesterday. And hopefully, if we, you know, I think we're a bit panicked, all a bit crowded. Um, it's a bit wet, definitely. So the conditions are making the ball a bit slippier, making passes a bit weaker, people a bit more anxious. Well, we'll see if uh, the nerves will settle at half-time as the messages come on board from both coaching teams and uh, we'll see if Aundel can string together a few more phases. The second half of this Under-18 Cup competition in the uh, women's section here at Rosen Park will be live in just a moment's time here on RE2. And all to kick off then in this uh, under-18s cup group that also includes Cardinal Newman and for the love of the game, Canada. It mirrors the uh, men's competition here as the top team from each group will go through to the semi-finals along with the best performing second place team. So you're not out until uh, you're really yeah, out here in this out. latter stage Here's of the cup mark. competition. And a kickoff from Aundel, Sophie. Just a from little Aundel bit over to your side. Is still here bit. Thank you. In the commentary That's booth, undercover at least, sheltered from the table. rain. Two minutes, two minutes. Thank you. And it's a line out for Colleague Kamoid. Play on. Up goes Lily Griffiths. Colleague Kamoid looking to take it to the line off first phase. Still one player. Advantage for Colleague Kamoid following that yellow card right at the end of the first half. And good line speed from Aundel, but Tackle's Davis is Move in behind. Big tackle coming in to put an end to that line break. But still, Colleague Kamoid with a long pass out wide. Ink pen steps around one. Okay, that's good, Rap. Big Go clear on, out there from Bevan, from Brooke Bevan. Wiggins oh, to ground. No, 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 no. onto the field, but. He's coming in the side. Coming in from the side for Aundel. So for the penalty catch, it's a bit too high yeah, at the moment. 10 metres! I know, I think it might partly be Thank the you, weather. Thank you, that's great. That's you know, desperate to get that ball, get desperate to get possession back. Um, probably frustrations as well, quite high. Well, it's uh, penalty advantage not coming, so from the tap instead, they look to crash forward. What a big carry from Rebecca Coggins, and Coggins might go all the way here. Wonderful covering tackle from Crawford, but great offload off the deck. Another one, freed the hands, Colley Ikemoy over from Wiggins, and they will score their third. Kick it this way, Black. And despite the best efforts of Aundel Sophie, that was a brilliant try. On, yeah, really good passes they had, and they, okay, they yeah, were we'll very strong first. running through us, good handoffs, so not too much fault from us, but I guess we just have to keep <laughs> going, try to get the ball back. Yeah. Well, this was a brilliant try, the big not, crash ball from Coggins, excellent covering tackle yeah. from Crawford, but they lifted off the deck, there, so. and if that offload wasn't good enough, another one. And there's nothing you can do in the game of so sevens if teams can free the, the hands can come back on. like that. Two back on. Excellent, thank you. Let's go, Black. Kick off to come. Aundel's still very much in the game with uh, seven players back on the pitch. And it's kicked deep this time. Back comes Pippa Shirley. Shirley gets the offload away. Another good pass through the contact. Hand up the spine. That's good. And to lift it off the deck, some quick hands through the midfield. 
Then back into traffic. That's good. Carried yep. on by Shirley. Yeah, yeah. But a penalty oh, for colleague Kamoid and uh, these penalties, ten, Sophie. Ten, ladies. No, 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 seven. Haunting Andal's uh, momentum. Definitely, definitely. Um, hold, hold. We need to, we okay, want to, to, we want to keep holding the ball. Good. And we're maybe holding on too long, coming into boxing, we shouldn't. And yeah, that's giving them penalties. And they're good. They've taken them quickly before we're set up, which is making it tricky to defence. And then. Good shot yeah. out of the line from Alder once again, but the offload was enacted and Molly Davis crashing through. No, no red, no red. That's good, play on. Still in uh, possession, Colleague Kimoid. Let's play, ladies, let's Lee just play. Griffiths changing the directive of the attack. Great red, offload, no, red, Wiggin no, searching red. for another. Red offside, red, red offside, red, no. And there's the little snipe <laughs> around the breakdown. Side, Molly red. Davis scores. And Colleague Kimoid have sealed this game, Sophie. They have been... Very impressive in this fixture, drawing out numerous penalties from Oundle. Yeah, they've been very strong, strong on the ball, strong off the ball, good tackles, make it really hard for us to break through, which is where we tend to do well. They've been really good defensive force and lots of power on the ball. Well, this physical colleague Kamoid side, littered with Cardiff representatives, right, have you. brought some serious so physicality to the field here. And in the wet weather, it will... Uh, Find them well. Lily Griffiths just drawing in loads of defenders and then little show and go with the eyes from Molly Davis. She has another try. Let's go now. Two minutes. Well, you won't taste victory in this game, Sophie, but with the format, the second best team in each in one of the pools will go through so still all to play for yeah hopes are high we've got um we do have a tough call what with the Canadian team so we'll, we'll give them our best shot so we'll see pass, how, uh, for the love of the game Canada fair it's a lovely out the back door to keep play alive yeah, but she's, instead she stepped on the line unfortunately Kate out. Mitchell just beyond the sideline you're so here line out for colleague yeah, yeah. Ekamoid thank you you're good there one in the channel, a bit closer, closer. Thank you. Molly Davis to feed red, this red. line out. Red, back on the line. Thank you, good, let's go. Yeah, Not straight the straight. call. What do you want, Red? What do you want, Red? So Andrew will take the scrum or the line out. Options. And an opportunity for them to take something from the game. Or line so. out. No, scrum or line out. Scrum, option, scrum. Come in, guys. Scrum. <laughs> what kind of set-piece magic can we expect from Amdal here, so? Um, <laughs> hopefully we can here you go. get There's together a good three there. passes, get to the wing, um, maybe yeah, get a okay. switch in there. Yeah, there you go. Um, but, yeah, we're, we are quick down the wing. Thank if we can find some space, great. get through. Out! That's I think we'll do well. Bind! Brianna Morrill on the field. Stay black, don't push her. Thank you. That's great. That's perfect. Does get the ball away and they go down the short side. There's the big fan from Mitchell. Mitchell with one to beat. A huge tackle comes in from Brooke Bevan, who's been so physical today and gets the turnover for Colleen Ikemoy. Wiggins on the break. Another big shot coming in. This time on Brooke Bevan herself. And it's a turnover. And breaking down the right is Morrill. No, 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 that's. Just knock a knock on there, on there and knock on here. some serious physicality from both sides here, Sophie. Yeah, especially in the wet this cold conditions, the last it's a really, really yeah. tough game. But, um, last play, yep. Last yeah, play. very physical for both teams. There's your mark. Ooh. Brutal from... Give me one second. Brooke Bevin and Brianna Morrill, those flying cold. in as well. There we go. Are we ready? Go! Find! Line out for Colleen Kamoid here in overtime. The last play of the game flashed across the face. Good pick up off the toes and flying in with the tackle still. Aundel leaving everything on the field, attempting to clear, but just built on the deck. Regardless, that will bring an end to the fixture. A great performance from Colleen Kamoid. Lowry Norcott Morgan's girls off to a flying start in the latter stage of the cup competition. Sophie, a very impressive performance from them. Yeah, they're very, very, did very well today. Um, yeah, just more physical than us and got some good line breaks and good speed, the team.
Well, thank you very much for coming to do some co-coms with us, Sophie. We do really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll move on from the uh, women's under-18 cup competition where Colleague Kamoid have had a flying start. And we'll bring you some action from the plate as Brighton College take on Norwich. Brighton looking for their second win of the plate competition after seeing off Hampton earlier on in the day. That's live next here at the Howden Rosen Park National School Sevens. Well, the action continues live on RE2 as Norwich School, who looked very impressive on day one, still fell into the plate. Wellington just went four from four and beat them by five points. But they did qualify on with that big win against uh, Richard Hewish School. They also beat Beechencliff on RE1 before taking down Oakland's College. And that win against Beach and Cliff, the difference really got them into the plate. They did unfortunately, however, lose to Blundells in their first game of the plate. So they'll need a win here to get back on track. Brighton College, on the other hand, taken down by Kirkham. Hot prospects coming into the cup competition. They saw off Hartbury College to make it to this plate and they will fancy themselves last year's finalists. But from the kickoff, well, it's uh, Norwich piling on the pressure. And unfortunately, a change of shirts means that we won't be able to see too much of Norwich from the team sheet perspective. Instead, Brighton hack it clear. And it will be Brighton on the chase who can regather. Billy Horsburgh just drops it, unfortunately. But what a great chase. Well, as is sometimes the case, the shirts are inside out for Norwich. So we'll struggle to identify them, I'm afraid. Bryce, on the other hand, almost off to the Crouch. quickest start. The wet weather Point. getting the better of Billy Horsburgh Set. this time. But diving onto the deck is Fergus Lamb, who gets the offload away to Arengo Jones. Great turnover knock from Lamb. Advantage. But another knock on. No advantage. Bails out Norwich for now. Slam to deck. By the Norwich defender. Crouch! Bind! Set! And Lamb once again looking to be a nuisance. This oh, wasn't time. Out that time. It wasn't out, so Number an eight. offside is the call, and Norwich can escape. Right, 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 right. Quickly on their own five. Big physical carry into contact.
looking to find an edge. And suddenly putting the hammer down, but dragged in. Release the ball, release the ball. Horsburgh. And, Nor and uh, Brighton go quickly, sorry. Seb McNamara gets us back underway. And Lamb looks to lift it. Beautiful touch by Herengo Jones. Oh, what a try this will be. Not done. But not, not done. done is the call. And Herengo Jones will not be rewarded for his beautiful skill. Have a look at this for a touch. By Sam Arengo Jones. Crouch! Bind! Just Set. wonderful. Lovely control, and he got the second as well on the left foot. But it is not touched down cleanly, so Norwich will look to escape. Another big, strong carry through the centre. Norwich looking for their first win of the plate after they were uh, Tackle! beaten in the first game by Blundells. And they're being well contained by Brighton at the minute. Of course, beat Sedba on this pitch last year in the torrential rain and mud to make it to a final. And suddenly a bit of space might open up for yeah! Norwich, but it's a lovely tackle by Rengo Jones. And in the wet weather, he can just slide his opposite man into touch. There's your mark, there's your mark. A line out then. Short to Cole and Lamb round the corner. Goes direct, but he's put to deck. Miller Cole. Down the short side this time, out the back door. Rengo Jones once again looks to nudge it on, but it will fall instead into the clutches of Norwich. Over the ball this time goes Miller Cole. And he turns it over. Lamb, McNamara, back the other way to find Cole again. And there's a little two on one that might put a Rengo Jones in behind. Great footwork. Great covering tackle by Norwich. Cole. Lamb, two on one perhaps on the edge, are they in behind? Put back inside towards Harry Streak. Lamb, all wrapped up by Norwich, but he is able to get the offload away. Bit of crossing there, referee waves play on. Ball is finally put down, and Norwich survived for now. And what a game we've got for you on RE2. Brighton look the more dominant of the two sides. But this Norwich side, full of Leicester Tigers players, to Bart Let's go, Mark Spencer, Freddie Snary, Let's go. Harvey and Kumra, Ollie Ship, Crouch. Ed Trelling, Boys. the uh, Tigers Academy. Sets. Five balls out. Once again, it's Lamb who's looking to disrupt, and it will fall kindly for Brighton. Regathered by Saunders. But intercepted by Norwich, in touch, in touch. who are then themselves driven across the touchline. So the result is a Brighton line out just they five are, metres right. from Norwich's end zone. Arengo Jones goes up, clean ball, and here is Seb McNamara, who goes himself back into traffic, slipping away, inches short. Lifted by Saunders, down the short side goes Arengo Jones, and this time he will not be denied by the referee's whistle. It's the opening try, and it was coming for Brighton, who have been on top in this opening game on RE2 of the plate competition. Of course, the second game in this group that sees Brighton in that pole position. No luck from the conversion. So with little time remaining in the first half, Brighton are in front. About 30 seconds. Persistent attack from Brighton. McNamara chooses to go down the short side. Quick thinking by uh, Rengo Jones. 
take the space on the smallest side and uh, Never on the ball. From the kickoff, reclaimed by Norwich. With close control and then hammered down range. There's a sweeper in for Brighton, it's Fergus Lamb in his familiar role at fullback. Into the uh, flood of white shirts, a sea of them. But Miller Cole now for Brighton. Saunders changing the direction of the attack and then putting it in behind himself and there's no sweeper for Norwich and Saunders is leading this race look at the long slide from Saunders to regather lifted to Billy Horsburgh who opens up the legs and has Brighton's first and that's clever rugby from Saunders playing to the conditions he slid in from about five yards away with all intention of pulling Horsper into the attack and setting him on his way. And on the stroke of half time, Brighton College, who have had all the possession in this first half, will lead by two tries going into the break, looking for their second win in this plate competition that you imagine will set up a uh, colossal tie against Blundell School to see who will progress. to the uh, latter stages of the plate. Half-time then, Norwich trail by two tries to Brighton. Live here at the Howden Rosen Park National School Sevens on RE2. McNamara with the uh, first nudge of the second half, and it's a beautifully weighted Not kick. Ten. That's a tough call. But Norwich keen to get the game underway. They trail by two tries. Their shirts are inside out, if you're wondering why that familiar Aye. maroon shirt of Norwich is being hidden. They brought the white shorts with them, though, in anticipation, it seems. But uh, the weather once again wreaking havoc here as it did in our last game in Collegi Kamoig and Aundel in the under-18s cup. Crouch! Bind! Set! Alex Stubbs with the feed. McNamara on the wraparound. Brighton are through the hole. And the last pass just doesn't go to hand. Back Henry Williams white. making good yards, yeah, couldn't ball. find Billy Horsburgh, okay, who okay. away for his second try. But the last touch came off uh, Norwich Blue hand. Ball. Back off white. Alex white. Stubbs, white. Just give a gap, just give a gap. Five. Alex Stubbs, who uh, I was convinced was said McNamara on day one, of course, when I last covered Bryce, that was incorrect. Tackle! Release five! On the field now. Norwich back in possession. They've got some work to do. Oh, two tries behind here. Putting the hammer down. But Billy Horsburgh with the tackle. And that music you hear is one of the sides on the touchline just walking past the on-field speakers. With the jukebox blaring. Or well, the boom box it would be. Brighton still play, however, back in possession. Williams and now McNamara looking to create something with a show and go. Here's Archie Kane 
the back row from Harlequins. Finds Arengo Jones on the outside. He will score his second. What a game Arengo Jones is happening. Popping up in all the right places for Brighton. And deservedly so, they go three ahead. Norwich in this second half just yet to break out of their own section of the pitch. Brighton on top here. And they look like a really promising team in this plate competition. Once again, drawn in a real group of death on day one alongside Hartbury College and Kirkham, national finalists, of course. Kirkham got the better of Brighton. Pretty consummate performance from them in that game that was live on RE2. Kirkham also beat Hartbury College in a thriller. And they scored on the final play to win 15-14, and that's what's put them into the cup competition. Let's go. And consigned Brighton to the plate. Although they did have to see off Hartbury College, of course. Another really strong team. Norwich with a slightly easier run to the plate competition, and perhaps it's showing here as Brighton, who have been tested at every turn on day one, are showing some serious metal here. But there's a lovely weighted nudge through, regathered excellently well by Brighton. But Norwich with the turnover. No tap, no he doesn't. Leave him. Quick tap, looking to get on the outside of McNamara. Slips away from one. But what a tackle that is by Stubbs. Offload inside, Stubbs back to his feet with the turnover perhaps. Oh, well done, Alex Stubbs. Just wonderful work on the cover. That was a huge release, yes. First to make the tackle, then okay, to squash the second opportunity, and then he's back to his feet for the turnover. Excellent work. Time's off, gents. We look ahead to our next fixture here. It's from the uh, women's play Penalty competition as Gravely School Time's take off, on then. Blundells. And then we return to the cup for an Two absolute cracker. Kirkham taking on Wellington College. Kirkham, who were defeated by Millfield in the opening game. Wellington, however, saw off Sedba by 17 to 5. What a performance for Wellington. Perhaps not given enough plaudits as we look to this group of death. They were certainly the team mentioned the least. Kirkham needs to get their cup okay, ambitions James, back on track with a win. Yeah, perfect. Certainly isn't over until the final round of group stages, group games, that is, on this cup competition. Hold on. But uh, Wellington will look to take one step into the next round. And then it's back with the Girls' Cup as Clandovery College take Mark. on the SMB the College the group. Okay. That's yours. James, give a gap, give a gap. Who are searching for their first win, whereas Clandovery already beaten Hereford in that women's cup group, looking strong. But for now, it's Brighton and McNamara looking to break out of their own half. That's a beautiful ball, but it's been knocked on by Dylan Moss, fresh on the field. And McNamara won't be rewarded for that lofted pass that would have seen Moss on his way. Instead, Norwich with an opportunity to get something on the board, even if let's the go, game boys, might be beyond them. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. We've got to wait for him. Crouch! Bind! Set! Good counter drive, and now Norwich on the attack. Looking for an option on the switch. Well read. No hands, no hands! by McNamara looking left and right and going to that left-hand tram line once again looking to take them on but brought down quick Six ball step. pick and go just running over no Saunders now. but he does take down his man slow slow ball this time for Norwich wrapped up by McNamara Release! Face, face, face! Continue down the right hand side. Lovely offload out the back door, and Norwich are on the board. Let's go! Let's go! Well, there may yet I'll be enough time, perhaps, if they can nudge from here. One wide. Minute. 
with a minute to go, 17-5. Norwich in need of two more scores to turn the tide of this game. And well, when they went to this uh, right-hand side again, back round the corner, they thought it was two on two, but uh, beautiful offload. Shipping, shipping. Good line of running. One more big effort. On. When you're ready. One more big effort. Ethan, one more big effort. Go and get it. Well, Ethan Ashton on the chase. Yeah, Backwards yeah, out of the yeah, sky yeah, by oh, Arengo oh, Jones, but spill to Norwich. Have it, and if they can score really quickly here, maybe they'll have time for a restart. <laughs> but a big turnover, and he's at the game. Hold on, Jez. First down. I think so. You okay? Sure. Brilliant work by seconds. Billy Horsburgh. Okay, time back on. Stubbs Let's and go. McNamara in conversation. And McNamara will search for touch. And he'll find it on halfway. Shows that's your mark. Here. There you go. Line out for Stubbs. Brighton lead by 17 to 5. Looking for their second win in the plate. Up it goes, tapped back by Rengo Jones. McNamara goes to the short side, injecting some pace, and just the sweeper to beat. The ball is down, but it won't matter in the end as Brighton taste victory for the second time on day two. They're heading right to the very top of their plate group, searching for a second final in two years. It might not be the cup that they were after, but they could still leave Roslyn Park with silverware. Brighton 17, Norwich 5 here at the Howard and Roslyn Park National School 7s. Up next, a return to the under-18s competition for the women's, this time in the plate as Blundells take on Graveney School. We get going now with Blundells against Graveney at under-18 level in the Girls' Cup competition. So Blundells kicking off, but it's first possession to Graveney. Great to see uh, this Graveney girls side here competing at Roslyn Park, one of the schools which has really stood up and gone on brilliant runs in the past at a boys' level. Graveney from Tooting in London. And lovely cut back here, those pink and black jerseys causing problems for Blundells. Double billing for both these schools on the show pitches here at in the under-18 cup. We have Graveney on RE2, but then they're on RE1 at 140 as well. Whilst Blundell's 
back to back on RE2. We'll see them a little bit later on as well in the plate competition at three o'clock on this pitch. So getting to get to know both these schools a lot today. Picked up by Kiza. In the 10 shirt for Blundells. Now the ball is reworked a bit, but the tackle out of the line, the big shot comes in. And there's good play again from Kiza. And she gets it once more. Vitaza Kiza. Still Blundell's coming. This is good possession in these wet, wet conditions now at Roslyn Park. Nothing comes easy when the rain starts to come down. It can really decide. It can be a leveller. It can be the end of your hopes as well. It does tend to make things lower scoring. And that can favour an underdog. So we're in the plate competition in this uh, under 18s final day at Roslyn Park. The group includes Exeter College and Samuel Whitbread Academy, are the other two schools in this. First match for both these two teams at Roslyn Park on today, on this final day. Nice break through Scott McDowell, the captain. She wears nine. And this is carried forward by Withy, Georgia Withy. Keys is going to pick it up again. Good hands off the floor. Now, numbers away to the right if Keyser can take it. It's knocked on. Graveney going to have a scrum. And they've done well, Graveney, to stop Blundell's first down the left, then down the right. put in here by uh, Fenn, kicked ahead, regathered by Rosie Mills, now off and running, a grave knee again, Ada Wright, this is good running from Wright, so Ada Wright uh, living a dream for herself today because she's always wanted to play at the Roslyn time. Park National School 7, she lives locally to here. And now she gets that chance and it's on, on the two showpiece pitches as well. Tap and go from Graveney. Good contact though from Blundells. Everyone having to stay so close really because of the weather, they might have been able to play wider than what we're seeing. But the weather drawing everybody in and that's the same for the under 18 boys as it is the girls. Everything's a bit tighter today. Mark is there. See in the back. Crouch! Bind! The other RE pitches. Set! With matches Hold. warming up. We have Kirkham Grammar School against Wellington College coming up on this pitch afterwards. Big contact. Again. It's around the neck. Backwards. Oh, quick tap and go. And this is catching Graveney a little bit cold. Offload is there. Blundells are going to have the first points of the match. And they go in under the sticks. Their territory plays off. Yeah, please. Try scored by Georgia Withy actually the head girl at Blundell's so leading by example here a couple of powerful uh, changes of pace there to go through the tackles tap and go though was taken by Freya Gillard and that's what got Blundell's going okay. time your runs girls So 
to Graveney from the restart. Fly it back uh, inside. That's a good take. Now there's a chance to give the ball, and there's good spacing on the edge here, but hauled down was Alex Ramft. Play on. Plays it off the floor nicely. Fairn. Scrum advantage. Well, Solomon involved in this attack. No advantage. Nearly Withle. Trying to chase things down on that left flank. The number 14 for Blundells. There's your mark. One minute remaining in the first half and another scrum. Good honest scrummaging weather, this. Crouch! Bind! Set! So Gillard gets the ball away. Backwards. With with, the, with that pass. Now uh, interception by Fenn. Good connection as well Backwards. from Solomon. And they're well spaced out, uh, our grave knee, and that is testament to their training and their preparation for this competition. And they're going to get on the score sheet here to level things up and under the posts will help for the conversion. The try finished off. Uh, with the line. Yes. This is half. So five points all at half time. And this was a great score. Really good work. To go all the way in. Graveney kick us off, having got right back in the contest just before the half is out. It was through uh, their number 11 who picks it up again. Good tackling from Blondas. Off the floor was nice though. Both teams having settled into the contest now. They're really going through a little bit more of their drills at this stage. Looking to be much more aggressive in the contact. And Gravely flying up from their line. 
Here come Blundells there, still with the ball. Still with a relatively clean jersey as well. Just come on the field as Lucy Fitzherbert. She's involved in this attack, good support play. Here is Fitzherbert. Bam with that tackle. And this is going to go close to the edge here. Four pass. Four pass from Blundells. Graveney's defence has, has stepped up nicely. Just a yeah, minute's break, strong. but they're coming out purposefully. In this weather leads to a more defensive press. Teams can really put more pressure on because it takes that little bit more time. The players to pass and gather the ball. Keep it under their control. Crouch! And those extra seconds can be explained by the defensive team. Set. You're doing a great job in that regard. Fan feeds the scrum. Let's call that high. On the penalty. Back 10, please. Nice little slip pass here. The ball kept alive. Clem Morrell. It's been one of the. Uh, Trailblazers for this Gravely team in getting them to Roslyn Park, forming the rugby Lost program. Forwards. But uh, as they knock on the yep. 22, no, no dice for Gravely. Nine. Crouch. Bind! Set! Push it! Push it! Out the back for Blund Blundells from the scrum. Now they're deep in their 22, but... Scrum advantage. to go to the edge. Again, the knock-on is... What's come in and... I'll have a look at the moment, it's working, OK? There you go. Crouch, bind, set. Without the ball. Advantage. Again, the try scorer off and going. Graveney looping Advantage around into over. support. This is Solomon. Lewat Solomon, a volleyball player as well as a rugby player. She's created this opportunity. Gravely are going to go in for their second. And this one is under the sticks. Gravely double their money. Time your runs. So the try scorer, Elsie Fan, will get us back underway. She's the captain currently at uh, Quinn's as well, showing all her ability, even in these conditions with these two tries for Gravely. But the Blundell's riposte is underway. Freya Gillard again. That's your mark, OK? Hooker in the channel, please. We need a hooker in the channel. Yeah. Do you receive her? Yeah. So in this group plate competition, these schools will have matches coming thick and fast after this. This is for both of them their opener. But getting off to a good start in your group at Roslyn Park is imperative. Graveney with the chance to do that, but Blundells Touch that. very much opening up the box of tricks to pull out the crossfield kick. That's your mark, OK? It's almost um, 
make sure you got a hooker in the channel. The equalising score. Yeah. Pink ball. It's going to be Blundell's ball. And just ball. there for me, please. There for me. Oh, no. Gravely ball. Excuse me. And One minute. Elsie Fenn. Make sure her jumpers are ready. That was good in the air. Fenn now loops round. And it might land in Fenn's hands. It does. She goes through the first tackle. Looks to get the offload Scrum away. Scrum advantage. Forward. Blundell's have it. One minute to play. They've got to score with a conversion to level up the match. And we've seen 12 all draws already on this pitch in the last play of the game. With Cranley and Norwich earlier on. Very, very doable. Blundell's... Crouch! Scrum. Bind! Gillard. Set! Georgia Withy is to the left-hand side of the scrum. Might come her way here. Little dart and go nicely disguised from Geo Scott McDowell. Now Gillard again trying to be held up though by Fair. Gillard goes quickly. She likes to raise Move the tacklers. pace. Move Gillard. Roll clear. Pressure building here. Gillard goes again. Now Scott McDowell. They've got to go wide here. It's on the edge. Lost forward. The knock on comes in. And that's enough for Gravely to hold on. They get off to a winning start at Roslyn Park. Gravely score. Two tries from Elsie Fan, the captain. See them home. Thank you. But Blundell's having gone. Nothing. One try up. We're close to spoiling that party. They both move on to the next matches to come. For Blundells, they place Exeter, they face Exeter College on this pitch at 1.40. So come back to join us then for that one. For Gravely, they're on RE1. That's a different live stream to ours. It's the other show pitch. They face Samuel Whitbread Academy also at 1.40. So follow their um, coverage there. And Gravely will be in action again against Exeter College uh, later on today as well. Next up, we return to the Under-18 Boys' Cup competition. Kirkham Grammar School facing Wellington College. Wellington having beaten Sebba in their first match. Kirkham having been up by plenty of points against Millfield before seeing themselves lose by seven in the end. They have to win this, Kirkham Grammar School, to keep their chances alive in this semi-final pool stages. So Kirkham immediately off to work. And to the edge they go, bundling a couple of Wellington College boys to the floor and looking for supports. That's just gone forward. Wellington have it. Now they will return fire. It's open on the right-hand side and they're streaking down the five-metre channel. Wellington College with a sucker punch to Kirkham on the counter-attack. And they'll look to go for all seven. Well, for this one, I'm delighted to be joined by Alex Smith, uh, who was playing yesterday for Kirkham, unable to, to play today due to an injury. But Alex, great to have your company. Thanks for joining yeah, us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's a bad start to the game there. A bit unlucky from higher there with the offload, but tried to get out there, but unfortunately got through. But Just hold for me, yellow. Hold for me. It's been a hard start to the day losing to Millfield, but trying to get back now. When you're and, ready. Like, win this game and stuff, so. Yeah, Jack Knapman um, with a try there. Saw him in action, crossing the try line plenty of times for Wellington yesterday, doing it from distance here. What will the boys be trying to do differently in this match? Uh, if anything at all, because of course you got off to the best possible start against Millfield. Yeah, 
Uh, probably just our defence in the second half slipped a bit. Right, our defensive structure probably slipped when we went through into the second half. A few, a few of the stars came off and we just missing tackles, stuff like Push. that. So hopefully this game will be a bit more solid defensively, like following the, following the ball, being patient in attack. Yes, sir. Sam Lutus sees the gap and Lutus no. opens up <laughs> top gear and cruises home. Lutus with Kirkham's first score and that rather presented itself that gap didn't it but Lutus uh, with the speed to take it yeah he, he sees them got so well Sam he's got really nice feet you know he's that, like one of them dancing players he just can't get hold of him most of the time so when he sees gap like that he always try and take it got a bit of pace on him as well sometimes when he wants it what does the weather mean here different sir uh, Alex and we'll just pause to watch this and see Lutus uh, it is gliding best here but it, it's difficult over this kind of turf yeah isn't it? it's uh, same as like last year it was pretty boggy and stuff last year so we most of most of these boys played at Roslyn last year so they kind of know the conditions they're playing in so it's like you, a bit wet so tighten up a bit don't make them long Hollywood passes and stuff just try and keep it simple in this kind of weather the Kirkham boys are boys surely boys going to be a favour for to you over some other areas. No of the country, lift. No lift. Or maybe not. Maybe it's uh, it's got its own sunny climbs up in Kirkham. Uh, not most of the time. It's not. It's probably raining all with clouds over. But for f definitely 15s probably. Leave it blue. Thank you. Suit us against most teams with our mall stuff. And but sounds a bit different. You can't really mall from anywhere. Scrum the advantage. Here. Yeah, that Kirkham pack. Blue uh, option. Line out of scrum. Of you that followed. Uh, the under 18 schools cup this Strong year. Strong cold blue ball. Formidable. We'll take the mark here, boys. Sized jerseys that are required to uh, house these Kirkham boys. Jen's the first scrum, well, let's get it Alex, stable. Let's yourself get in the back, right sir. You, Go! you cut quite a frame when you're Boom! at speed, uh, in a 15 Set! jersey. It's a bit different uh, playing 7s and 15s. Um, Still that same connection that you have in 15, so important in sevens. And again, Kirkham on the attack. Krippner, who had a brilliant day yesterday, missed out on the under 18s finals. This you are, Krippner, you are. But he's back on the front foot there. Goes Harrison Causey now, working to the edge with Dryhurst Jones. And the pick and go for Kirkham almost there. Bit unlucky there. He, he's in good form, Harrison Cosby. Lower sixth uh, came in this year from Wigan, like I am. He's, Time off for the injury, Jones. Long time. He's a cracking player, but he's just a bit unlucky there. Yeah, time's off, mate. Take your time. It's Lutus to Blaney, then Causey. And it was well read by Wellington College's defence, actually. All right, it's in my pocket for now. I'll just keep hold. All right, thank you, mate. The change for Kirk, and what's gone on there, Alex? Uh, Luke Den has come on for Time's off Harrison Causey, I think. Okay. Bit of, bit, probably a bit of friendish because Harrison's played quite a lot of games for us the uh, past two days, so I always line up the pack a bit. It's a sub on for you, Yellow. Yeah, the mark's on the tee, gents. Take a step back for me, Blue. There's the mark. <whistles> Time on. Adrian Jones Crouch. in the background there for Wellington Bang. College. Recently installed as Set. part of a coaching team at the school. From a Bristol uh, fly half for many years. And Wellington looking to play expansively from deep and go to that edge. Dragged out well. That's a, that's a good read from Kirkham. Yeah, from Seb, no one's getting around Seb. He's one of the quickest men I've ever met in my life. Fast feet and everything. Blue so, I'm strong boy. The marks, well. blue, okay. He's always in the gym, always yeah, hard work. And he's, You're here, fella. There's not many people who are going to run around Seb and get past him. So, yeah, it's good, good D from Seb there. I've given it to you. You're fine. You're fine there. You're good. Backwards off yellow. In front to uh, the new man on and Den, but it's Wellington ball. That's a difficult one to pick up in this weather. My goodness me. That was well claimed. Now Wellington worked this other edge nicely. And there's a chase on here. Big fend in and the second nibble. The tackle is good from Denver. Side entry, you. The carry from Langford was a strong one. So Wellington now looking to profit on the other edge. Good line taken in support. Best, best, best. That was Ben Smythe. 
Kirkham back and on the defensive here, they're going to have to be so careful with Sprenger. Then to the edge. Oh, what pass. Yeah. I mean, oh, just cursed Sebi a bit there. He's gone outside him. Good, good tackle from first coming, coming um, on the cover tackle. And Luke's a bit unlucky there with the side entry. Nice here, boys. Quite lucky there with the forward pass. It's been fine so far, but thank you. Inigo Langford has got great speed. He had to place two fens in order to, to gain that ground that Come he on. did. But then Firth was Coach. not letting him go. Bind. Set. Holy push. Free kick, Wellington. Minute to play before half time. Wellington having won their first match. Kirkham having lost theirs. So much required in defence now for Kirkham to keep their chances alive in this game and in this semi final pull stage, of course. Langford straightens things up. Lutus is trying to pinch the ball. Canter right's good. Canter is very good. Very good. So there goes Den. And slip under this surface. It's not easy to get those feet flying, and yet on the edge, that's what Kirkham do. Good support from Hulse. Has to keep this alive. Four Wellington boys around him. He somehow smuggled it back. Sir. And that is seriously good defence from Wellington. If that ball had gone, there were four Kirkham players waiting to run it in from deep. But it didn't. So seven points to five at half time. Wellington College against Kirkham Grammar School. So Alex, we're a week on from, from Twickenham as well, of course. You yeah. were part of the 15 side um, that went to Twickenham, came within a second uh, of winning the cup final. What a campaign, rather rather than the you know, rather than the disappointment, of course, I'm sure you felt at the end. But you're a week on from that, and, and how do you reflect on that day now? And how what's the team's feelings as well? Um we, we've got over it pretty well. We've obviously looked at the game quite a bit, obviously. It was a shame at the end to lose it by such by by that like that, but you know, it's just just one of them. It's one of them rugby. You don't always get what you want. You have to move on from them, and especially coming into this being you know, our proper first seventh tournament for most of these lads this year, because obviously through camp, through like the the cup campaign, so it's like we've shown our shown ourselves really well here. I think most of these lot, you know, had a really good tough uh, tough time in that cup campaign when we came Wait, Waitfield, Quags Waitfield, what else grow? Especially that was a good, that was a hard game to to play in, but. Yeah, I think I think we've bounced back really well. We, we've we've not took it up. We took it on the chin. Just go again. Obviously, looking forward to playing in South Africa in, in April, May, which will be it'll be a huge test for the boys. You know, going to a big physical outfit in South Africa and stuff with Nottingham crew and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think we got over it pretty well. You know, but it's not one of them. Not everything goes your way in life, so you got to move on from it really. All neutral observers would have said really that it was one of the best uh, schoolboy games in their memory and and you know so well played to you and to Kirkham Grammar School for playing that part and a wonderful match you played and yeah. two teams can't win can yeah, they? Yeah no, it's, it's just, just unfortunate yeah, where rugby is you know it, it, was a, it was a hard game one of the hardest games I've ever played in my life physically mentally you No know, try sticking that sticking that fight when Haru coming back at you when you're 19 points or up or whatever but you know it's, it's how the game goes. But that week on, things move so quickly in schoolboy rugby. Good contact in the year. Kirkham fighting for their place in this pool. Got to get a result here to have a chance of qualifying as either the group winner, which is of course still possible, but or the uh, second place in the group as well. And that could, that could be a path through to the semi-finals. Stay nice, stay nice. Right want to take it all away from them here and go two from two. Backwards. Jack Natman Stay. goes and Stay. Jack Natman has such speed here and if the bounce is good which it's not quite enough Kirkham have a chance they bring things forward little pass back advantage. on the inside doesn't go to hand tackle Wellington's Oliver Push. Teague on the ball that no, doesn't backwards. go forward Eckersall 
Advantage over now. Find support. Kirkham having to defend, and they're defending with a sweeper here, so there's two to block this. And yeah. That decision Thank to you. play as a sweeper here is uh, is that weather dependent or is that how you always play? Uh, we, we always play like a pendulum kind of system, you know, with You're here, our wingers holding back and stuff like that. Uh, Harry did pretty well there to no, put him under pressure. Unlucky Morgan couldn't get the couldn't get the tackle on him there, but Harry put good pressure to kick it out. Wellington at the back. Taken uh, gratefully by number 13 for Wellington. It was Lloyd McEwen Peters. Transition to the left, and now really deep they go to give themselves as much time as possible. Sprenger wants the contact. Push now. And finds it with Reese Hulse. No, it's on my 11. And knocking on in the contact. Good patient defence there from Kirk, I think. That's what we that's what we try and do. Try and don't try and shoot up and make gaps in the team. Just let, there, them, let them try and make their mistakes instead of us trying looking for one. Especially in these conditions as well. If they're throwing the ball around and they're around in the up pitch, we'll, we'll just go and get the ball yeah, wherever they are. Pulse quick onto the ball. Lutus takes it to the line and there's a fly half in 15 or inside side centre entry. as well. Side entry, so Kirk can get it wrong at the breakdown. Natman taps and goes. Will Corbett passes on One to Eckersall. Good turnover Backwards. from Vinnie Durkin. Strong advantage. Uh, he's very good over the ball, Vinnie is. He's a, he's a centre at art, but he's very good over. over the ball. Dryhurst Jones is having to go back. He's the only man here for Kirkham. It might be Wellington who sees upon it the roll. <laughs> Rolling. And the penalty for the roll. No, back. Really good that for Morgan there. One more. Probably. The work effort he's got is unreal. He's, he's a big boy, but he's, he's absolutely rapid when he gets going. So it's good for him there to get back and stop, stop that. Lutus. Staying close to each other in these conditions. Kripner with that last carry. So hard to stop in any conditions is uh, Sebi Kripner. Or oh, Hulse has gone through. Doesn't find the man outside him. It was a risky pass, so instead waits. And here we go with Kirken. And there's well-spaced out players to play in here for Kirken Grammar School. Ray. I tackled him above the shoulder. He was tackled high. Lutus goes yeah, again. Are. Doesn't want to wait for Wellington to get back. He's going to challenge them all by himself. Sam Lutus, Wellington! the magician of Lutus, yes. goes in for Kirkham. Three left. Very good from Sam there. He saw the space he in the line. He's, he's quick on his feet like that, Sam. He's, he's very, you he can see backfield very well, being a 15, being Yellow out the way, traditionally please. a 15 Thank and 15. You. So he's very good at looking at the back and speed there from him to be fair is not usually seen by him it's not his, not his first trait is his speed but he's done well there to get that ball both tries from Sam Lutus for Kirkham this is a, a fantastic score credit to his vision as Two well as his uh, ability very good regather as well like pops it up to himself come off his shoulder he's a class player Sam so good for him for that James, you've got 10 seconds for the kickoff, please. So now this group really hotting up. What happens in the next two minutes? He's been kept an eye on by the whole tournament here. But Wellington coming straight back and heading towards Kirkham territory in the 22. The support comes in the end. It's no hands, Blue! Numbers away to the right. Corbett no hands! Who offered himself, Kirkham, penalty advantage. give the penalty away through Kripner. Probably had to do that to save a try. And the man that started it all tries to play in the hulking frame of Sprenger. Playing the nine. It is Sprenger. Now, can he use that frame? So he does. Isaac the Sprenger, line. right by the posts. And Wellington will have the kick to retake the lead with 90 seconds to play. Sorry, Lucky there from the boys. So the boys probably didn't need, need to make that penalty for him to score, but shouldn't be letting him through from the kickoff. Though it's pretty poor, but you know, hopefully one. 
Oh, we're on my, two minutes left, half minute half left, we'll come back for this. We've, like we did against Hartbury the other day. Whoa, did that go in? Yeah, that went, you put it, you put it down the <laughs> It was close. It was really close. I mean, Isaac Sprenger, I don't know what he uh, comes in at in terms of his height, but it's the extra length of his arms that do this. This is five metres out. One, two, three steps. Time off. And he's taken well, but still with all the reach. We've come back from bigger uh, deficits in this, like first day of Hartbury, first game, 14, 14, 10 down. We've literally last played. Time on. 40 so seconds. We know, we know we got it in locker to come back. So, so we hope we can get out here. Wellington choose for a little more distance than to try and retake it, asking Kirkham to give what they've got. It's a knock-on, so we'll have the scrum. 30 seconds to play. What will be Kirkham's options here? Do down we'll, to probably, we'll probably try and get it wide, try and stretch the defence. Mark's here, please, gents. See, see what Sebi Kruner can do on the wing, he's electric, so probably try and get him off down that wing and spread yeah, Wellington's nice. defence and probably try and come back at themselves and uh, go the opposite side or see where the gaps are in the middle. Bye. Lutus, Stacey, Set. Krippner in the back line. Hulse, if he can get it away to them, and he does. Switch with Stacey. Then they carry it through with Ray. Stacey again. Wellington holding him up. Have they got the penalty? No. High tackle. We're into overtime. Kirkham, 60 metres out. And Hulse might be thinking about no chase. going to touch, so we will have time. Well, you always have time from a penalty to play this. If it goes and does it go, it has. What a kick. What a kick that is from Reece Hulse. That is stunning. <laughs> Two metres from the line. We'll Never take know. line Kirk, as middle, please, gents. Yellow, yeah, you're just off the Go away! Go the brass handles on that. Hulse, can Kirkham get this done? To the front they go, it's clean enough. Then Krippner pops up here, Sebi Krippner takes on two Wellington players, still going, Krippner's gonna get there! Yes! Sebi Krippner right down to his laces. Yeah, see, like I said, first game we've, we've come back like that and just give, sometimes just give the ball to Sebi Krippner, see what he does, he's absolutely electric. He's, he's, done, he's done really well, he's had four Wellington boys in, so he shrugged them off like nothing. Call in well Sebi Krippner. Well he does the business. Well 19 points to 14. Kirkham's Grammar School's hopes in this pool alive and kicking. Well no Wellington hey, College Good have game. one well done, win well done, and one loss well now. Well done, and it's going to be oh so tight well done, when we do the final maths well done, in this one, I think, Alex. Yeah, well it's going to be it's going to be a hard game, it's well said, but you know, a bit of a rivalry between us two. Cheers, but coach. Appreciate it. It'll be a good game. They, they like to spread out wide, so so hopefully we just be patient. And it's going to be a very good game, that last one. It's going to go down to the wire, I can guarantee it, like this game. So Kirkham Grammar School will next be in action against Sebba School on RE3. Let's just enjoy this from Sebi Krippner. Moves from the wing into the first receiver. 1-2 taken on. One of them the biggest player in Wellington ranks. Then three more skittled out with Krippner bowling through. It's just what he does. You see some of the games, he bounces forwards off. He can bounce anyone off. He's, he's lightning quick and he's so strong as well. Fair enough to him. He's, he's put the graft in this year, lower sixth. Low six playing this year, he's, he's been unreal this year as well. So good for him to go and score the winning try like that. 19 points to 14, Kirkham Grammar win.
Llandavery College against SMB Group now uh, in the women's under-18 cup competition. And <laughs> a penalty right from the off for uh, Llandavery. So away they go. Lower, please. Let's forward. Scrum. So Clandavery in the white and pink, although now brown jerseys as well, uh, given their <laughs> early matches. And uh, Fine. SMB Group on Set. the left-hand side in the green and blue. All the push! Uh, Sam Gorkis with out. us for this one. And after that first game, Sam, your second game is normally when you play your best rugby. Yeah. Uh, in the sevens tournament, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, just really excited to be back today. Um, it's uh, play it, play it. a bit wet today. I got a bit soaked on the way here, but we're we're looking forward to a massive day again. Um, fine, 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 fine play. These girls going out, trying to get some silverware in the cabinet. Um, as we see SMB striding down the left-hand side. A oh, lovely play. And it's Summer Hartshorn, who with a couple of fens and then some gas, gets the first score against Clan Bavari. It's just the second year of their rugby program uh, with SMB Group, Brooksby. And you can see Brooksby on the back of their shirts. That's mighty impressive, isn't it, Jack? Get the ball, please. Yeah, these conditions as well, it's not easy to keep your, dis keep your discipline in attack mm. and keep your width. I think she sunk the, ki sunk the kick as well. So, SMB seven up here. As we have the kickoff. Play when you're ready. So, Klandavri. Wait for the ball to bounce their way. This, here's Ella Wainwright. Celtic Dragons uh, under 18 in netball. Also under 18 Scarlets in rugby. Master of all trades. Yeah, she's uh, set up this position. And that's a nice uh, weave Hi, in field. And uh, SMB just giving away the penalty there for holding on, I think. She's got it. Uh, big power off through the middle. Lovely play from Kiara Taylor. Side entry, make penalty. sure you go round. With Randafri. Taylor wants to go quickly. Come back, please. Don't take it in front the, of me. Uh, not taken from the correct mark. See quite a lot of that just be let go actually in sevens, uh, not taking it from the quick mark. Yeah, not often get you get hauled back for that. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see, but then again, you gotta you gotta be on the correct mark to be able to take the penalty properly, or they're gonna be all hands up in the air for for inconsistent refereeing. But I'm sure we haven't had any of that here at this festival. Absolutely fantastic festival of rugby. A few back, afters uh, from Brooksby. Not necessary. Scrum. Not necessary, says the referee, but sometimes good to see. A little bit of edge out on the field. Yeah, just taking control of the game. It's what you what you like to see, Jack. Sorry. Crouch! Yeah, Five! SMB put in here. Set! See if they can make something out of this. Hold the push! Power comes in from Clan Beverly Scrum. Do get it away, though, SMB. Here's the try scorer, Summer Hartshorn. Collected by Abby Cook. She's upended and tackled. Driven into the ground by Evans. And Lovely will get it back. But they knock it on. Uh, just a slight knock forward there. Um, we have another SMB put Scrum. in. And uh, they found a lot of joy Mark's here. down this left hand side with. Um, the try scorer, uh, uh, Hartson, Hartson, is it? Hartshorn. We'll Hartshorn. Stop for a and a half, Sorry, okay. handwriting steps, got away from me there. Yeah. No, no, hey, yeah, you're up to <laughs> right. it's that, Crouch! We are always at the behest of the handwriting Fine! of uh, teachers. <laughs> so um, sometimes that's not Old always push! the best, and it can make oh, it fantastic. Make it tricky. Uh, it's wheel, let's go again. One almost reset. there for Glenn Luffery. Just weaving the scrum a tad. Roughly two steps, right? They have another chance to 
Crouch! Have a good counter scrum here. Find! Set! And stop SMB from playing away. Squirts out the back of the scrum. And here we, here we are down the right hand side. A good handoff. A good tackle as well. Yeah, this is Grace Collins who made that charge down the right. Quickly off the floor from Clemens. Well from Van Knock on. Scrum. We have another scrum down here. Just SMB trying to find a bit of a foothold once okay. they've put themselves up here. Okay. Just struggling a bit to get out of their own, uh, our own, ha own half. But um, here we go again. And Afri with the put in and it Play. comes out. Yeah, Orms Herbert, uh, the scrum half. This is a nice pass over to Clemens. Number please. 10, Ella Wainwright. Makes it up to the 22. The tension's on the floor. They would really <laughs> physical, isn't it? Yeah, real physical. I'll touch it again. And uh, SMB coming out on top. If you can counter like that, Sam, in sevens, you're halfway home. Yes. Yeah. SMB almost halfway home. They can get things up to the try line. If they can get them up to the halfway line, rather. Hmm. And Davari <laughs> pick things up, though. Just the referee putting his influence again. You get the feel that this might be a, a one-score match. There's not going to be much to separate these two, sir. So. Yeah, again, it's... The weather conditions do come into play here, and uh, trying to play wide, expansive rugby okay. is difficult Crouch. at the best of times, but with, this, with the ball feeling like a bar of soap, yeah, it, it's very difficult, and you I'll have to be very skilled players to be able to put it off. Um, it's but... These two sides giving it a really good okay, go again. here. It's wheeling because you're powerful on this side, okay? And we have a, another SMB Whoa. put in here. Crouch, no forward. Crouch! This is the Find. Day, game of the day Set. for both these two schools. Clandavery won their first match against Hereford Sixth Form College, whereas SMB College lost to Peter Simmons, 26 points to seven. So to be up here in their second game will really fire them into this group campaign. And after you recover again there. Play, 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 play. Oh, and SMB have stolen it back in the ruck and they could go wide here. Gone back, so play on! Yeah. It's Kyra Geary. Involved in SMB. Don't clear out around the head. Clear out around the head though. So, uh, penalty. Tap. I'd say, Jack at ruck time, SMB are massively bossing it yeah they're on it really are and the nice no look pass it's going to work its way to the edge with collins who switches this is pap lizzie pap on the support line there she's going to get the ball back from here although the drive forward is purposeful from geary there's pap again looks to go to the outside now here's the game breaker so far the only player with a try to her name she pops it inside heart short Here's the penalty again. And there's Let Pap again. It, please. And then Saunders, Brooks Saunders with that pass on. It's a lovely pass onto the edge. And in they go. Put it down. For try number two. It'll be half time after this. to go into half time have a look at how this uh, developed because just kept on playing and eventually Clandovery ran out of numbers again uh, SMB I really it. really Thank bossing God. it at, right. uh, in the physical battle shout, I've not seen it. Uh, okay, when I was at school we, we call it winning the daylight yeah, okay. and there we have yeah, well, uh, Claudia call Clemens call just it. striding in under the post um, but yeah I so far SMB really really on top at the moment, really winning that physical battle um, uh, on a wet day like this. That's so important, Jack. Yeah, 14 points um, to nil in these conditions uh, means a little bit more, doesn't it, over Glendavery? Uh, Sam, whilst we're on half time, um, winning the daylight, tell us about that. Winning the daylight. Meaning specifically? 
Um, so when I was a, a Whitgift schoolboy, I had a coach who was here today called Chris, uh, Chris Wilkins, who um, is, uh, his uh, main thing was winning the daylight over the ruck. So being there first and uh, making sure no daylight was, in, was seeing down to the ball, kind of a figure of speech, but um, worked for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Now that makes it clear, because for a moment, before after a tackle, there is daylight there, and then yeah. you, you close it off. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we want no, no, no daylight down to the ball carrier, first sealed off over the ball, which SMB have been doing fantastically today. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as we, uh, as we uh, about to kick off the second half here, just seeing if uh, Landovery can, can uh, get a grip in this game. They have looked promising in moments, um, but just those several silly kind of rock penalties and, 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 uh, and uh, knock-ons have, have really up and down so far, but hopefully they can get back into this as we kick off. Lizzie Papp does those duties. And Clam Davily, nicer pass over the top. And they've got two numbers over, but they're back against the grain. Has to keep it alive any way she can. Kiara Taylor now. Taylor. Legs taken on Kiara Taylor. Only way to go from the try scorer Clemens, that was. And good lift in each of these tackles. They really mean it. <laughs> Another fantastic steal from a Scrum. SMB. There. Um, really bossing it in that kind of contact area. Um, but we'll have another platform for them to play off. Just on the halfway line. Come on, now. let's go. Um, Pap again with the go putting. Go to the left of the one in front. Crouch! Bind! Set! 55 metres or so of space to play with here for SMB. It's Hart Sean who opened the account for SMB. Onto the edge, that was nicely done. In these conditions, that is especially good skills. Yeah. Grace Collins keeps it alive. Here's Pap. Lizzie Pap arriving in time and siding this one off with the slide into the mud. <laughs> yeah, really fantastic Sorry. from SMB again. Uh, winning that scrum well, getting clean ball out of, out of the back um, for their backs to go and play and then as we see here, fantastic hands from uh, Grace Collins on the outside and just strides forward, gives it off to Lizzie Papp, who has been running things from nine today. Um, and uh, slides in, and as we said, the, the slide into the mud. Um, always Play makes when you're ready. good. Um, Give the celebrations exactly. some, uh, some extra, yeah, extra yeah. oomph as well. So Papp Three. kicks off. And after losing their first game, to come back against a side who won their first game and beat 21 points to nil up. It's been a, an exemplary nine minutes of sevens so far from SMB. She had a good tackle. And again, this is, uh, they must be doing some really, really in-depth training on their rucking abilities, SMB, in the midweek. Come. Nothing coming. And now we have a, an unfortunate knock on. Mark's here. And Afri just in their own half here trying to get Come closer. back into this. But Come a bit closer. They have a. Crouch! They have Five four minutes to do. Set! That. They can get some points on the board. It might. Something might happen. You're not in properly. And if we're going to finish this match kick. potentially with both teams having won one, lost one. And if other results go similarly and uh, teams keep knocking chunks out of each other in that regard, it could be interesting come the group stages on points difference. So every point counts. And SMB are looking to add more to their pile. And that's nicely done. Clemens draws and gives, and Hartshorn is free. Hartshorn on the edge. She's driven towards the touchline. That is. A huge tackle to shut That's down. Whoa, 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 listen, come here, come here. Come here, 18, 18. Come here, come here, come here. 
Come here. Claudia Clemens is in a spot of trouble here. Leave it out. Just leave it out. I don't want to get my cards out. Leave it out. Apologies. Good. Line out. That's there we the, go. That's the way to diffuse the situation. <laughs> leave well it done. out. Well done, we Claudia say. Clemens. Yeah, I mean, uh, really, really great attack again from there. SMB there. Um, right. Fantastic Thank carry you. down his left hand side with, the a, hooker's channel, with a yeah, bump please? off or two yeah. from uh, Poppy you. Hazelwood. Um, and then a uh, the nice right. sustained wide attack down into the, into the right hand side from uh, oh, five. Uh, the try scorer number 15. Did, Joyce. You, did you catch the, Joyce. the tackler, uh, Sam? On that, come on, line, come on, line, quick. Line, line, line out, line again, out, cold. It's quite hard as we're line up, up in the centre line of the pitch. And down, seeing down into that left hand corner, Jack, as we know from Shows five days of doing this, it's a. Uh, yeah, we need our, our double le double uh, double vision goggles on to see down there. Good. Clemens, huge line out, really good throw up there. Here's uh, Hart Sean, and there's numbers in front of that. But the wraparound is from Pap, and they've worked that so cleverly. And Pap might get on the edge again. Offload wasn't on. Now the ball's on the floor. Chance here again. Straight one on one. Clandavery closed the door robustly. And to the edge it goes. Clemens doesn't take that. Uh, again, good Scrum. sustained attack from um, SMB. Just patiently working out the Landafri defence again. Half, gone. Nice wrap and again from, uh, from Lizzie Papp. Just Scrum. didn't Mark's quite there. get the ball there. Passer couldn't quite get it off. Um, but unlucky knock on. Okay. Uh, over down Crouch. the hand side. Uh, um, Landafri had a chance to play out now again. Hold the push. Ball's out. Just comes out slightly awkwardly for the forward, forward. Landafri nine. Scrum down, green ball. And we have a turnover there after a knock on. Minute left, ladies. Minute left of this match. Crouch. SMB will be back in action. Five. Two four. Two Set. twenty. So the turnaround so quick, Sam. For both these schools actually Early in push. action at okay. two forty to finish off this group stages. Pap goes again. She wants. More points, but she's Back on ace. with a rock solid Hlandavari defence. There's a different way to the line as well, though. And it's found. Ella Seward off the bench, over the line. All smiles from Ella Seward. And the celebrations are ecstatic. She knows she has just put her, her school four, uh, four tries up. And surely that will uh, count for off. something today. Um, About. 20 yeah, seconds. Just gets a scrum penalty there. And uh, Pap tries to go Time and get another one okay. to her name. Just held up a bit. And then, uh, as we see, Ella Seward just okay, last play. bulldozing over the line with great leg drive. Another kick into Landafri territory from Lizzie Pap. Foot play. Time Great to play off. here for more. Four pass, though. Passes forward. The Full SMB time. group have put Plumdevery College to the sword. They've got their first win of the day, and their chances of qualifying out of this group now have been resurrected. Yeah. Such a short turnaround time, Sam, though. We'll, be, we'll know who comes out on top in this group in under an hour's time. So set your clocks, um, stay across social media channels. The next match is for both these teams, and they're both in with a chance of topping the group still or qualifying out of it. Um, it's 2.20. You'll have to find out via other channels other than ours. They're on RE3 and RE4 for those matches. So uh, try and find someone who's on site. Get text messages in and see if you can stay atop on who goes through from the Under-18 Cup competition in this second day group.
Blundell School against Exeter College now in the under-16 plate competition. Both these two schools losing their first matches of the day. Exeter so close against Samuel Whitbread Academy and Blundell's close as well against Gravely. Knocked on, then offside. So Exeter College Knocked kick on. off there in the uh, stripes. Penalty. Blundell's in the Penalty. all red. Plenty Knocked of these Exeter College girls offside. played at Twickenham last week Indeed. as well in the final against Hartbury College. And they're off and running against Blundell's quickly. Good movement of the ball to the edge and numbers will be tricky to track Away, in this uh, environment. But that was Evie Constable. And then here's Maskelier. Now the runner onto the ball is next. And already on red alert are Blundells because they're being stretched one way, then the other. And the edge is being opened up here for the first score. Exeter on the money right from the off. They start with intent and purpose. And Sam uh, Bork is alongside me <laughs> once again, Sam. Uh, it's, great to, it's great to have your company and uh, it's great to be able to say your name correctly as well. <laughs> I'm sorry about that in the last match. Here we go anyway. Good start for Exeter. Yeah, really, really, really positive start from uh, Exeter there. Um, as I said in the last game, um, playing wide, expansive rugby on a day like this is difficult and Exeter have done that to a T. Just there, just working the phases in and out. Um, really great hands. Great carry there for Maskelia. Um, and then they just work this ball out wide. That's all right, no problem. Great uh, patience on the pass there happy. from uh, Poppy Simmons. And then, not sure who goes over there. I couldn't quite catch the number, Jack, did you? No, um, I'm afraid some of the mud is, is blurring the numbers <laughs> for our position. So yeah. apologies uh, for that. But, um, but we. Uh, Stay outside. Stay as close to it as we possibly can. That's interesting to see. Backwards. Kick, kick straight down the middle. Usually you go you go wide, but interesting to see there, Jack. Yeah, no, Great that's an interesting tactic. And then pressure being ratcheted up in defence. So Blundells is um, number 10 there, Atara Kiza. And this is nice play, really under pressure as well. And yet, here come Blundells. Here's Kiza on the edge. She's going to... Drift on the outside, tackling was good, but the offload advantage. almost. Advantage over. Red two away. Evie Constable <laughs> takes that ball on. On on. Red ball. So Red Bull, so Bundles really striking out of their territory and striking into Exeter in defence. Good purposeful running again. Never on the ball. Contact from Never Lucy on the ball. Fitzherbert. Hold it. Well done. Nice, Exeter College turning that ball over. Advantage is not 10, number two, red. Here we go. The hands are on if it can be worked wide. Advantage over. We've got an overlap here. And Exeter. racing this one in on the edge. Uh, Exeter College, one of the players who we don't have numbers for. Fortunately, but number 11. She made a fantastic tackle down here. And she is Go behind, just back. sprinted down that right-hand side. Yeah, put another five points on the board for Exeter College. Sorry, I thought you were going to kick it. And uh, Can you go the, behind uh, and kick it back? We have a stopper for the kick here so that the game can carry on flowing after the kick. Poppy Simmons gets it over retrieving the ball now yeah really good play from Exeter College here just that's a real key thing in sevens just bringing those players in and then giving the offload so that your your winger or your outside players have have more space to do their their work with I was always in the middle of the park um Kind of trying Working to bring hard, those, right? Yes, exactly. Trying to connect the faster players. Connect outside the of you. faster players, exactly. Um, That's the hardest place to be. I, I'm only joking, <laughs> Sam. You would have been, you would have been working harder than anyone in that position. <laughs> <laughs> Away go Exeter, but it will be called player. back. But but um, on the tactics front in sevens, um, the offload game. You see some First teams want to work it to the, to the wide to player yeah. and then go around the outside. And some players work it to the penultimate yeah, player on the edge and then take contact, look for the offload. I mean. First Those are fairly established sevens on tactics. On. Um, from your experience playing here over so many years, what works? What worked best for your for your sides that you're in? 
Uh, well, I was taught that, the, as we said, the, the second player in from the width should take the contact and then either try and find a switch with the, with the wide player coming back inside or the wide player stays wider and you beat the man, you beat the contact and you try and give that pass out wide. Um, but I said it's a lot. Sevens is a lot about deception. A lot more than 15s. And just working that ball, finding those gaps in the middle of the park, outside, just wherever you can find it by moving that ball and just be patiently waiting for the gaps to appear. Um, and if you can deceive your position about the where, where the ball going or where the men are, then uh, then you're you're doing a good job, in my opinion. Georgia Withy and uh, Lucy Fitzherbert trying to okay. conjure something down the uh, the blind side there, but the they back. were okay, let's go. bundled into touch. Up here in the channel, yes. And Exeter with the line out. Okay, let's go. Good steal there from Blundells. Oh, Play the advantage to see what comes. Really playing um, some excellent rugby in this one, but Exeter's college his class is such that it's so Always hard against pressure. them. They're, they're playing, I think, scrum. from from our perspective up here, even better than they played against Gravney. Mm. Um, and the opposition is is certainly better than Gravney as well. So mm. they're sort of punching upwards and, and, and raising their game due to the opposition. Yeah, exactly. And... Uh, kind of got to adapt over the day and uh the teams that always win these win Good these days up. are are teams that get better as the day goes on Crow. um and uh, can kind of adapt to conditions Set. as we have today um and also adapt to the opposition they're playing against but here have another storming run down this left hand side charlotte heath is looking for it's support and dragged to find it it's very unlucky no, great not. break there Oh no, not quite in touch. Oh yeah. Tackle was from Georgia Withy. It was Go a good tackle extra. too. Ten meters. Head Ten girl meters. at Blundells. Guys, that's not straight there, okay. Extra option, scrum all line. Scrum. No. Scrum chosen. When Stand I played in the Roslyn Park 7, Sam, uh, way, way before you <laughs> did, way before these girls turned up today, of course, mm. um, Blundells was the only team my school played against yeah, on the main the pitch and we were handed we were handed uh, uh, a final scorecard which did not make good viewing, uh, by Blundell <laughs> so they were, they were all over us uh, back then that was 20 Fine, years ago this wow. year wow they've been they've been um, upsetting people's Roslyn Parks for a long time Blundell schools uh, myself mm. included mm. but Exeter have it their own way don't they at the moment they just have that extra touch Randall, of magic yeah. And then the spin and the power and all the way to the line. Despite the attentions, it's Poppy Simmons. Eight. And Point she's showing eight. such balletic qualities and the power to go with it. Yeah, it's uh, quite ironic that you say balletic qualities there because stepping in and out like a ballerina and then just absolutely using that leg drive to push her way through. Uh, and, and get another uh, five points on the board for Exeter College. Um, and as we look here, just receives the ball there. Plays out to the winger, number 11. Good handoff there with a bit of the NFL style deception um, and uh, a few great handoffs and, and weaving in and out of players. And she just dives over the line to put Exeter 17 nil up. Would be an interesting uh, concept if Sevens had had an, borrowed a few rules from uh, the NFL, wouldn't it? Blockers allowed. <laughs> See where that leads us. Yeah, I think uh, also with the, with uh, our last game getting a tad heated, I think that might make it a bit more, a bit more scrappy. But uh, well, <laughs> if you pitch the idea to to Howden, they might be able to do something about it, Jack. Or you know, some kind of power play for, for <laughs> an NFL power play style thing, just for a, just for a minute or so. Or so. Yeah. I, I mean, we're happy with the game as it is. Let, let's, yeah, let's exactly. Be, let's be clear on that front. But um, it is a very pure form of rugby, mm. and so good to watch. Anyone can play it as well. I mean, you don't need nearly as as many people, of course, to uh, to play in sevens. And exactly. That's why we see the likes of Uganda able to become forces on the world stage. Uruguay, they long before they were a successful 15 side, they were incredible at sevens. And, and Kenya, of course, made their name 20 years ago as well now, at mm. breaking through onto the world stage. So it uh, allows you to 
concentrate your resources. Yeah, mm. it's it's interesting that you mention those sides actually, uh, because they're all very based on. Uh, I've seen a lot of training camp videos from all of those sides are very based on altitude training. Okay. Just being able to sustain that kind of uh, aerobic uh, cardiovascular ability uh, allows them their players to uh, to run for longer. Uh, and as you see in Kenya and in Uganda, it's very rocky, kind of high altitude um, terrain, which allows them to train in these in these kind of conditions uh, for a longer period of time. Oh, that's, uh, that's a very good point. I hadn't mm. realised that's where, where some of them were doing their training camps. I mean, there's a fair few hills around Tiverton and in Exeter where uh, <laughs> Blundells are from, and Exeter, of course, as well. So it's a real West Country uh, scrap, this one. Mm. Mm. But going the way of the City Siders, Exeter College at the moment. Just have a kickoff from Blundell's school here. Haven't really seen much of Blundell's yet, have we? I'm hoping to see more of them in the, in the second half as they kick off here to Exeter. Good handoff. Yeah. Tackling from uh, Georgia Withy. Really popping up in all sorts of places is Withy. Nice pass uh, to the edge again, and that's Heath, who, when she goes, can really move. Mm. Ron was looking a bit tight here. If uh, if Exeter can move the ball out wide quickly, they might have an overlap. And here we go down this left-hand side is the winger that we don't have a name for, unfortunately. Um, but again, Simmons is off. Simmons is on her way. Poppy Simmons with the power drive downfield. Great tackle from Millie Wibble there, just to stay in the fight. Um, I mentioned that a lot yesterday, actually. Just, just staying in the fight as long as you can. Um, especially on a day like today, when uh, as you get into those latter stages of the pitch, you can start to feel like you're running through Marmite. And uh, always important to, uh, to stay in because you might have a chance of getting your, getting your man before they are able to put the ball down. Exeter trading positions on the field now. Everyone popping up everywhere. Simmons is driven into the ground by Gillard. But then she gets up again. She's so uh, powerful. Yeah, another very strong drive from uh, Simmons. Just unlucky there. We'll have a Blundell's free kick. Can they move it wide here? And oh, picked off. Away. Fantastic oh, um, interception there. There's Heath again. Runs into a Blundell's player. And they can't quite uh, make this play. It looked like they were home and dry moments ago. Here's Maskelia. She passes on. Pot Simmons. And Simmons will want to spread this to the wheels outside. He'll go despite Gillard's attentions. And she will score. Yeah. Really great from uh, Exeter again. Um, just using that, those wheels on the outside. Well, for anyone who's just joining our coverage, uh, we do apologize for not being able to bring every player's name to, uh, to the screen. Um, we've got an Exeter College team sheet, but it doesn't include number 11. We've got yesterday's team sheet still. So things change overnight. Shirt, jerseys get dirty. You have to yeah. change them again. And uh, not always does that message get passed on. But apologies for that. Nonetheless, this is really well set. And they keep their, deep, their depth really well set. Mm, yeah. And uh, great, uh, great uh, balance and, uh, and also patience on the pass from uh, Poppy Simmons again, who is really running the show here, um, uh, scoring the, the uh, fourth and third try, I think. Um, here we go, Blundell's on the ball now. Otara Kiza. Great good, pass there. Good awareness as well to, to go back behind and 
But that first set, that organization is good mm. from Blundells. And then, of course, things get harder and harder as the faces go on to keep that organization. Sam, tell us a little bit about that. The sides you played, the likes of Whitgift, no less, you know, they have extremely high standards for making sure that players are in the right position. Yeah, um, I mean, organization is, is key in, in sevens and fifteens. And um, our, my side, when I was at school, were, weren't the biggest, but we always said that we were the hardest working team on the pitch and organization comes within that um, but it is so important to keep that keep that organization throughout the whole day if you start to lose it in the later games when legs get tired and and uh, people start to drop balls then things tend to go downhill um, but Exeter College doing it fantastically here today um, and uh, Brundle's showing, showing glimpses. But as you said, Jack, as we start to push a bit wider and the phases start to uh, top up, you, uh, you lose it just a tad. But here Exeter we go. On the defence, because Brundle's again with uh, Georgia Withy, who's unable to uh, unleash her winger. But um, good run from Withy. Mm been all over the park today with the very good try saving tackles breaks down this left hand side maybe Blundell should start to shit the ball out to Withy a bit more in a shot of the background where the pitches are being churned up a bit today mm. the rain has only come down today so we've saved um, we've saved the best of Wimbledon Common for, for the last day it'll take some recovering this as it always does but yeah, I seem to have gone with the wrong uh, wrong footwear today. Of yeah, Adidas trainers. No, uh, um, Reebok, Reebok trainers. Actually. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> not the best chap. <laughs> no. Here we go again. The wheels from Exeter slicing back in. They're not just rolling there. Good tackle though from Blundells because mm. she was working on a, a hat trick try there. And we're going to be called back here for a penalty. Exeter with a minute left in this second group stage match. Hands are really good in these conditions. It's mm. not, it's a wet ball and a muddy ball. And yet from the left hand side to the right, they go and swinging it through lovely offload and then almost the take, but Blundell's have it. Now play from here. Some of the best moments that I've enjoyed over this week, Sam, have been when players, schools in the last play of the game who haven't scored in a match, have lost heavily, have gone the distance and got on the scoreboard. And the cheer from them, their own players and their fans is, is always the biggest of the match, actually. And it's so satisfying to see because Blundells could have scored on numerous occasions in this one, but just haven't quite found the right pass or the knock on it. Mm. Well, we still have whatever extra time is left over here today, Jack. So hopefully, we might be able to get a break as, uh, yeah, the Blundells can see if they can just do something here today. Well, for those get on of you, that scoreboard. Sorry, sir. For anyone wanting to watch the next matches of Blundells, they're in action again on this pitch uh, at three o'clock against Samuel Whitbread Academy, whilst Exeter at three against Graveney School on RE1. So a separate live stream for Graveney against Exeter at three. Um, follow the England Rugby channels. Also, Next Gen 15 uh, as well, if you're struggling to find the pitch. We're RE2. Punch that into YouTube. Or stay with our coverage um, as well uh, throughout the course of the day. We're flitting between competitions here to bring the best of the action. Nice switch there. Again, that was a withy, but the ball turned over. Now, Exeter might hit 30 points here. There might be a hat trick as well, but not necessarily from that route. Instead, the ruck has to be cleared. Exeter just moving the ball out again now. Here we go on the outside. Well, here we go for Exeter. <laughs> oh, they are going to get in. And it's Maisie Mesquillier again. Great pace around the outside and uh, really, really great try again from Exeter. 
who have, who have completely bossed this game and uh, have uh, really put Blundell's on the back foot. But as we hear the full-time whistle there, oh, we're just getting a replay of this fantastic oh, try. Moving it wide. Mesquillier on the outside, using the touchline as her friend. <laughs> and uh, dotting it underneath the post there. But big win for Exeter College. 29-0 at full time. Jack? Yeah, thank you, Sam. Um, stay with us now. Coming up, Warwick School against Finborough School in the under-18 boys competition. And uh, for that one, you'll be in the company of Wilf Kemsley. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Jack. Well, we're a little bit behind here on RE2. This game between Finbrew and Warwick was due to kick off at two o'clock on the hour. Instead, it's just about quarter past here. So if you're tuning in for Millfield Knightsbridge Community College, that's looking more like a half past two start. But it's relentless here at Roslyn Park. Some uh, nine minute halves we've had back due off, to wait, the competitive nature of this back, competition on. and other injuries has led us to be about 15 minutes behind schedule. But it's Warwick looking for their third win from three in the plate up against Kimbra, who need a big win in this final round of fixtures in the plate group to overtake Warwick and get themselves into that plate semi-final. And for now, it's Warwick on the attack. Ooh, Henry Jones at nine, he hands it off. But, Slipping uh, off play with a penalty advantage, so... It's there, there, there. Warwick will have a free run at things here. With their playmaker, Freddie Wallace. Play on. Offload, intercepted by Butler, so... Finbrook can come back the other way inside their 22. Yeah, Takes two to bring him down. Quickly over the ball, but played away by Rhys Cairns. Built in midfield. Scrum red ball. But uh, came off a Warwick hand there, so Finborough escaped for now. Finborough currently sits on three points. A win and a loss for them in their plate group. Beaten by Clifton College in the last game after beating Bedford School. Yeah. A Clifton College side. Crouch! Who uh, lost to Sit. Warwick undefeated record in that group so a win here is all that Warwick needs to go through to the next round of the plate not on ball no you're not on the ball Clifton however with a big win could also progress if they have a significantly better scoreline than Finbra if Finbra beats Warwick that's the result that everyone else in this group wants Warwick just need a point step to eight, in step this to game to progress through as they look to make a mess well, of things at the breakdown and it has been turned over by Warwick please, need the out. oldest boys school in the country you know please don't. and they win the penalty as well well Warwick school were national champions just a couple of years ago in the 15 aside competition they're hunting for some plate honors here there's a big shot coming in from behind by Finborough but still Warwick look to play. Up to the 22, just flying into the breakdown. Dislodged from Jones, but a lovely pickup. And Warwick are on their way here. Smooth hands and Wallace cutting back against the grain. Has got Jones in support. Taking the ground, Wallace over the breakdown. Pick and go, thunderous collision in midfield. Jones at first receiver, it's past him and it's kicked on instead. 
just sliding around the field. The conditions temperous here, but slipping through the contact. Warwick a few inches short. <laughs> Penalty Finbra. What a turnaround. Carter Atkin, I believe, over the ball. Breathless start here. The ball's been in play for the full three minutes, it seems, except for just a singular stoppage for that scrum. But it's been taken in the backfield by Warwick. No, no, Red! He was off anyway. Only Tom Let's go. Tomlinson securing the ball. Wallace. Well, all the way wide they go now. Taking it to the line. Butler's there again for Finborough. Well, it could be Carter Atkin, of course. They do share numbers, unfortunately. For us here in the commentary box. Two on one, little show and go instead, thrown by Tomlinson. Good leg drive from Tomlinson. Solly's there in support. James Selly, it is at 14. Jones. This is testing his options, Tom Dunning. Takes it to the outside. It's a good tackle. Here comes James. Oh, no, release! Balls out. Field. Jones. Wallace. Jones backwards. on the wraparound. Ball is down, but backwards from the referee. Good pickup. And it needed to be two from Freddie Wallace. And he hands it off, but Finbra putting in the tackles. This time it's Henry Lumley. England under 18's squad. Oh, lovely out the back door from uh, Tomlinson, but it was well read by Finbra. High tackle, though, from Jones. So it's uh, Warwick's Jones this time on the ball. Bit of a late shot there, but the referee waves play on. There's the big fend to get Warwick rolling. <laughs> Penalty for Finbra. Warwick are off their feet no, at the no. breakdown. 13. And Lowy Burns is keen to get uh, there. Let's go. Warwick back on the way. Back on the way. It said here it's either Butler or Atkin at 11. Well, Fimbra haven't experienced a lot of sevens in this game outside their own 22. No! Maul is called, so Warwick can kill it, and they have. Turnover once again, and Warwick have contained Finbra excellently well. Maul, held up. Let's go, boys. Crouch! Bean! Touch! Here's the feed then from Henry Jones for Warwick. Balls out. Down the short side they go. Big clear out comes in from Warwick. Let it come. And it will eventually come their way. Off now. Just inches away. This time it's loose. That's offside. It was just a kick hacked on by Just Finbra. there, let's go. And the man in front was offside, so another penalty. And now surely they'll cross over the line. Once again, they're short. This time it's down. Knocked on and Finbra escape yet again. Crouch! Up we come, stop's coming. Guys, let's get bound to the hooker, please. Crouch! Well, it will be Finbra with Sight. the feed. Fourteen this time stop. It hack it downfield in an yeah, attempt now, to now, escape now, from their 22. Backwards. The bobbling ball taken on the run, and now Wick, Warwick School through Matt Mondia eventually brought down. The Sight. offload intercepted by Release these those. Or T Harwood, it may be. And once again, two number 12s on the field. Skipping away, there's the two-on-one, and this time Burns is in behind. Mondia brings him down. 
but Fimbra rolling onwards for the first time. Line speed is good, but it's been evaded, and now pointing to the corner, Jones is on the wraparound. Well, he's beaten one. Charlie Jones puts a spanner in the works for Warwick School, who for the first time in this plate trail on the stroke of half time. Well, Warwick School had one foot in the plate. At least it's latter stages, but now, depending on results elsewhere, everything could change. Yes. And have a look at this from Jones. Well, have some of that. Into the corner he goes. Well, it's good news if you're a fan of Clifton College, because over on pitch one, they lead by 17 to 7 over Bedford. So at the moment, on points difference, it looks like Clifton will be heading right to the very top of this group. At half-time, Finborough beat the undefeated Warwick in the Plate Cup group. Which is the official listing on uh, the Howard and Rosen Park National School 7's website is the description of this competition. Finborough in front by seven. Well, Finbra then, perhaps surprisingly in front, and Lumley to get us underway. It's been picked out of the air by Finbra, and here is Lumley. Patient stuff from Finbra. They need a couple of scores in this second half if they wish to overtake Clifton on points difference. At the moment, due to Clifton's scoreline on RE1, it looks like they'll be topping this plate group and the ball's gone down. A win for Warwick, of course, or a draw. We'll see them top the group and cancel out all this points difference nonsense. But at the moment, it's still Finber on the attack and they chip it in behind. There's cover back for Warwick, but the ball escapes him. And suddenly it might pop up for Finber. There it is, the offload. Cutting back across the grain, two steps off the left foot. Finber double their advantage. Finbra two tries in front. Well, it could be Harwood or it could be Reese Cairns, the two number 12s. But whoever touched it down, it'll be uh, Elliot Orton to look to add the extras. He's wide on this occasion, but well, who would have predicted this? Finbra up by two tries against group leaders Warwick. And a couple more, and it'll be them topping the plate group. From the kickoff, tapped back by Warwick. And they'll have a bit of possession in this second half for the first time. Well, it's all over on RE1. Bright, uh, Clifton College have defeated. Bedford, their points difference will remain as it is at a round plus five. So a couple more scores here and Finbra will overtake them. Or can Warwick get back into the game and back to the top of this plate group? Oh, 
Warwick still in possession. They're making some yards, but they're retreating back into their 22 to set up this attack. Inside ball to Mondia. Dragged down at first receiver. Thunderous clear out to keep the attack alive. And now a bit of pace in this Warwick attack. Skipping away from one. Warwick in behind. It's Oli McGinty. Brought down. Penalty. Turnover. Lance Kruger. And Warwick lose another 10 yards. And bouncing through the tackles is Henry Lovely. And would you believe it, Fimbra will rock it to the top of this group. On points difference alone. Three teams currently sit on six points in group plate B. And on points difference, it'll be Fimbra right to the top if they can hold on to this scoreline. Henry Lumley. Is the scorer. On the big occasions, you look to your big players. Lumley slips away from two. And Warwick is shell shocked. Let's go! Well, there might not be enough time for them to get back in this game, but they could spoil Fimbra's party with a win here. Spilt, and Kruger latches onto it. Lumley, short line this time from Lowy Burns, and they're through again. Lumley has another. Surely now, Finbra into the next round of the plate. Defeated by Clifton, who Warwick themselves have beaten already today. Well, this time the conversion, 26-0. This will be enough to overturn their minus four points difference and then some. through the middle. Yes, sir. Once on again, Fimbra over the ball. This time they've stolen it and Burns hands it off to Butler or Atkin, both number 11s. Play on. But that is uh, certainly Warwick's ball in no. the end. No hands red, leave it red. Penalty you're Warwick, your feet, you're on your hands. 30 seconds to go here and the game is beyond okay, them. Just now, let's go. But Fimbra, to secure their place at the top of the pool on points difference, could do with keeping Warwick out here. Mundia takes on two Fimbra defenders. Another right. penalty Warwick. A brighter end to this uh, second half, which has been all Fimbra. Lovely step off the right foot this time by Field and chipped in behind and Field will regather and Warwick are on the board. A consolation for them. We await uh, the Sox team to do the mathematics and find out who will be through to the latter stages of the plate. Final score here, what a turnaround by Finbra. Desperate for a win well done, to keep their plate hopes alive, and they've taken down the group leaders, Warwick, by 26 to 5.
Here's the try to get Warwick on the board. Beautifully weighted by uh, Josh Field. But next, live on RE2 here at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens, we return to the under 18 girls competition. And in our next fixture, it'll be Millfield in action up against Kingsbridge Community College. That's live next on RE2. The familiar strip of Millfield here up against Knightsbridge Community College. Millfield from left to right to begin this game. I've got two Millfield players alongside me, Catherine and Abby. Thank you so much for being with us. No problem. Nice to be with you as well. And it will be Millfield to kick us off here and get us underway first. Well. Catherine, how have you found the tournament so far? Catherine, of course, a guitar international, would you believe it? Currently out with a shoulder injury, but a good tournament for Millfield. Some big results on that opening day. I think we've been playing pretty well this, um, this season. We've uh, tied and won all of our games, apart from the one we just played against Hartbury. Uh, we've been really resilient and stayed well connected together. So that's good. And Abby, a tough loss to Hartbury, but a seriously impressive side. You are, however, still very much in this group of, with a win in your first game, hoping to keep the good results coming and maybe sneak into the last stages of the cup. Yeah, definitely still staying positive and hoping that we do as well as we can for this um, group. Well, this group also includes Epsom that Millfield have already beaten so far, as well as Knightsbridge, who are searching for their first win. Hartbury, if they beat Epsom, will be through, but there's still a place in the quarter-final for the best runner-up. That's a position that Millfield will be chasing, regardless of results elsewhere. About a minute into the game, we'll have a bit of respite, scrum on halfway. Who is there to watch out for on field for Millfield at the moment? Um, probably either uh, Lucy Wintle. She's very good with her tackles and has great handling skills. Um, Meg Fortune, she's very fast and so is Maya. We've got quite a rapid team. So and here is Wintle yeah. on the wraparound, skipping away from one. And Lucy Wintle, the captain. A sprinter for Wales as well, and uh, had the yards there to get away, and Millfield opened the scoring. Perfect start, Abby. Yeah, I agree. Really good, really strong. I'm believing in them very much. Well, they will rely on a big result from Hartbury against Epson over on RE1 in order to go through as top of the group, but still very much potential to head through as the... Uh, the best runners-up. You won't be the first Millfield side to take home a trophy after losing a couple of games, of course, after the under-16s snuck in to win there. Top start, though, for Millfield. Knightsbridge Community College, let's not forget, came through on day one despite losing to Graveney School with big wins against Cardiff and Vale College, Hurstbeer Point and Tiffin. They have also been defeated by Hartbury, but lost to Epsom by a point of 14 to 10. Just two conversions in it there. But it is Knightsbridge Community College in possession for now. And that's a beautiful line picked out through the centre by Alex McCarthy-Mason. 
and suddenly there's plenty of numbers over for Knightsbridge. Just the sweeper to beat. But a thundering tackle coming in from the try scorer Wintel and it's dislodged and well, that is great defence, Catherine. Yeah, she's one of our best tacklers, I reckon. She's able to just stop most of the people that come in her way and really saves us in a lot of ways. She certainly bailed out Millfield there. And uh, Abby, what will they be looking to create from this set piece in their own half? Let's see if there's any action from the set piece. Instead, it's a turnover, unfortunately, against Millfield. Knightsbridge with the scrum, but uh, Abby hoping for another strong defensive set from Millfield. Yeah, definitely keeping up that strong wall for us, hoping by all the teammates. Well, it's uh, Katie Rayford with the feed, perhaps the best scrum hat in action, certainly here at Roslyn Park, and well, a tackle off the ball, so it's a penalty against Millfield. Big tackles, Millfield. And Rayford in possession again. Benfield, all wrapped up by Millfield. Good defence once again. Rayford over in support. Spread it. Spread it. And they're to the edge. The ball put down, but regathered well. Backwards is the referee's call. In comes the tackle this time from Flamingi. Well, that's a loose pass, and Millfield will, rap, will Push up, push latch up. upon it. Phillips. Great tackle. And Mauritian Hats international at under-18 level. Some real international flavour in this uh, well Millfield side. But a knock-on in midfield, and... Uh, Catherine, how have the conditions changed the games so far for Millfield? The wet weather, the worst we've seen of the week so far. Um, yesterday they were pretty good, Crow. it did not look whatsoever Five. like this, there was barely any Seven. mud, whereas now it's getting very slippery and hard to do any um, skills, it relies on the basic handling skills and catching, it's so muddy and slippery. Absolutely, as Rayford here, Knightsbridge Community College keeping it tight for the moment, still well with a big carry. Rayford once again at nine. Bit of space in this wide channel, but what a tackle that is. Great defence from Millfield once again. Rayford looking to go quickly. Benfield to the short side. Another thunderous tackle coming in. And now through the hands they go. It's just behind the Carthy Mason, who latches upon it. Friend in support. Still well. Has Friend as an option. Tackle, break, roll, the tackle break, roll, leave it. And a penalty Don't once again. A good first. steal, but there was no roll. Milford no still lead by seven. Five minutes into this. But a sustained period of pressure for Knightsbridge Community College. Can they come away with something in this first half? That passes to ground. But good running to evade the first line of defence. Rayford. On the wraparound once again is McCarthy Mason. They've played a lot of rugby, these girls, over the last two days. And that's another good ball, but another good covering tackle. And Millfield wrapped them up again. Tyra Flaminci once again with a big tackle. And Abby, you've got to be pretty proud of that defence from Millfield. They've been ferocious in the tackle. Yeah, it's been very, very strong. Very, very proud of the girls. They've been doing amazing with their tackling and their defence. They're keeping up strong. And uh, Catherine, some pretty impressive defending, but you'd like to see a bit more from Millfield in attack, perhaps, in the second yeah, half. I reckon our defence is pretty good. It's been great all day, but it would be great if we just run forwards with the ball a bit more and really try and squish the defence our position up together so we can hopefully get another try in or two. To well, we'll wait to see game. if Millfield can build upon their good first half. Defensively, they've been solid and they've taken their one opportunity when it was presented to them. Millfield hoping to go right to the top of this uh, cup group with a big win here against Knightsbridge Community College. Who can chase down Hartbury in this pool? We'll wait and see. Live here with Next Gen at the Howden Rosen Park National School Sevens on RE2.
We return to the second half here between Knightsbridge Community College and Millfield. And uh, you were just saying, Catherine, a strong team talk was needed, perhaps. And you think that's enough to get Millfield firing in the second half? I think so. I hope that we've had a great pep talk from our coach, Mr. Watumba, that we can run strong. And I think we just had some sub changes so we can have some new fresh legs on the pitch. We'll see if those fresh legs can offer something for Millfield as they claim it well off the kickoff. And here is Nina Petrakova, 400 meter runner, taken on the turn by Fortune representative of Queensland at under 18 level, the Australian. And that pass just beyond the last attacker, but it's been regathered well by Maria, by Maya Fisher, who was seriously impressive in defense. Straightening up now for Millfield. Through the hole goes Flamingi on the overlap. Herring away goes Claudia Adler. And the Bristol Bear will score Millfield second. And Abby, that is clinical. Two real chances for Millfield and two tries. Yeah, amazing. Honestly, that was such a good breakthrough for Claudia. Done so well. Well done. Well, Alda from Hong Kong, adding to that uh, international pedigree of uh, Millfield, had the pace on the outside channel. And Catherine, the, the perfect start to the second half, just as you had predicted. Yeah, I was hoping that would happen. It was amazing. I'm so proud of how these girls have played today. I'm so happy for them. I hope they get far. Well, it will be tough to catch Hartbury with their pretty impressive 46 plus points difference. But uh, they, of course, yet to concede in the group. Could you believe, Hartbury? So we'll see how they get on against Epsom. But uh, if Hartbury are victorious there. Millfield may well be in with a shout as one of the best second place teams to get Backwards through to play. the next round of the cup. Taken off the kickoff on the bounce by Knightsbridge and it's a knock on there. Knock so on Millfield there. in possession. And this is the perfect opportunity, Abby, for them to uh, kill off the game. Yeah, definitely. Just keep pushing up uh, with the attack and defending with a wall. Definitely will do amazing. Crouch. Scrum then Five. for Millfield to be fed by Six. Meg Fortune. Another Hold it. Let's go. international on this side, of course, Three the Australian. Up. Push up, push up, push up. Picked off the deck nicely by Fortune. On the wraparound, the ball goes to ground, but Millfield will retain possession. Lucy Winter, the try scorer, hands it off and he's there in support. And on the outside, Millfield are rumbling on once more. Erin Burke this time. Apparently only played rugby for about two weeks. Catherine, is that true? That is true indeed. She's really stepped up to help for playing and being a part of our team. Yeah. And it's really paid off. She's done such an amazing job for playing for two weeks. And it's just amazing. I have no words. Erin Burke with the try into the side after I wouldn't call it an injury crisis for Millfield because you're still playing very well, but yourself, Catherine, injured, Abby as well, and then Imogen Langley and Maddie Gissing, the Bristol hey, Bear, both up. missing as well. On, we you performing well despite these uh, setbacks, Abby? Yeah, we've had massive setbacks due to injuries, but it won't stop us. We've still got a strong team and we're very resilient on the pitch. Erin Burke, also a first team hockey player, cross sport here to uh, represent the rugby team and scoring as well in this crucial cup game. That's a great kickoff into a bit of space, using the conditions well and reclaiming possession and Millfield with three minutes to go here. Another try would surely seal it. Injecting a bit of pace in the attack, but a lovely offload from Fisher. Wintle steps back inside, Fisher puts in the fend. Head down, aggressive running from Maya Fisher. The sprinter herself, who's also only played rugby for about three months, scores Millfield's fourth. And you're really on top now, Abby. Yeah, I agree. We are really on top and it's doing very well. Well done, Millfield. Well, they lead by 26 now. Surely the game over. Knightsbridge Community College, who had a uh, really great day one. Unfortunately, didn't, didn't have enough for uh, Hartbury, didn't have just enough for Epsom, and they won't have enough 
to beat Millfield either. But, uh, well, you may well be slipping through as the second best team okay, of the alive. three groups. But a pretty tough draw, Catherine, across th three excellent teams alongside yourselves in this pool. Yeah, I was quite impressed for how we played that game and just how we've done in general. I think our first game is always just sets the tone for how we play for the rest of it, and I'm just proud. Still fine. That first game, a big win against Epsom, and that set Millfield up here. Tackle release! Big win release, here. blue roll, blue roll, blue roll! With the uh, impressive points difference, it will produce likely to see them through to the semi-finals of the cup competition that will both be streamed live here at the Howard and Roslyn Park National School Sevens. And is there perhaps time for another? Nina Petrakova, her offload didn't go to hand, but she's once again in support, dissecting the Kingsbridge defence, and Petrakova will go over for Millfield's fifth. And that, as we head into the final minute, caps off a really impressive performance, Abby. Yeah, very impressive from Nina Petrakola. Patrick over there with a try of real quality. And that sets Millfield up for this 33-point advantage. Winter once again the creator, a good offload, and then Patrick over had the pace to sigh through the two defenders. 20 seconds, so probably. Yeah. 20 seconds on the clock. Okay, falls alive. And this scoreline of 33 points will up Millfield's goal points difference to plus 30. Crucial if they wish to progress through to the next round, as you imagine Hartbury will have tasted victory against Epsom, being the impressive programme they are. Red row, red row! Penalty though for Knightsbridge Community College, who look to take something from this game. They were well in the game at half-time, but... A, Clinical second half from Millfield has taken it away from them. McCarthy Mason on the wrap. But a knock on there brings the game to a close. Catherine, a pretty complete performance from Millfield. I reckon that was outstanding the way they've just been supporting each other all game and just like helping each other out and having each other's back so they can cover the entire pitch without letting them concede a try. That's pretty impressive. Well it done. Certainly is. Catherine Abbey, thank you so much for being with us here on RE2. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And we look ahead immediately to a resumption in the under 18 cup as Radley take on Whitgift. Two sides who are, well, unfortunately down and out of the cup competition as it's Gordons or Bromsgrove who will progress. But neither side wish to finish their time on day two of the Ros Howard and Roslyn Park National School 7s on a loss. So that game is live next on RE2. No, it's looking all right. Well, the game might not have much say in the uh, latter proceedings of the cup competition. Both these sides off the back of two losses to Bromsgrove and Gordon's. Jack Zorib picked for the competition, it seems. Leaves them out of the cup. But uh, Sam, your former school wick gift, will, will not like to go home empty-handed from day two. No, they definitely won't be. They'll definitely want some points on the board here. And uh, two strong sides. Um, but both of them. Not on advantage. To, uh, 
hoping to cut out some points here as a, as well, a good kickoff kick goes off. goes with Giff's way on That's the bounce. It's over! It could be an overlap on the right-hand side. Certainly starting okay, this game. Away, Tyler stewart Pasley of Harlequins with some gumption. Stepping off the left, beating two defenders. Lovely work this time from Louis Johnson. A Surrey representative at under-18 level. Bud. Support there. All the way white! Through the centre. Thank you, lost. And Bud once again. Another loose pass, regathered the out the back side. door. Another one, but this time it's too late. The advantage? Yeah, the penalty can't go away, sir. Offside. Yeah, just too, one too many there. Uh, Offside from gift, the rock. But, um, yeah, yeah, playing well as we have, uh, have some line on the, uh, on the old tap and go. Well, away goes line. And then taking it to the line, okay, John away. Wade, a bit of physicality there. Line at scrum half. There's the miss pass to find Bud on the outside. But he chooses not to take it down the tram lines. Instead, it's back with Town Row. Line. Stepping off the left with a bit of intensity on once advantage. again. Louis Johnson, unfortunately, advantage, just knocked outside. on there. And the loose pass flat across the face of defence, and hey, suddenly Radley not. could be away. Well, they've marshalled Whitgift, they've kept them contained, and eventually Joe Ashford, the beneficiary, latching on to the mistake. Radley really clinical there. Yeah, just Radley just holding the pressure from uh, Whitgift in this situation, and and just really waiting for them, waiting for them, and uh, waiting to pounce on any mistake. And unfortunately, just something goes awry in midfield. And gaps open up and uh, Ashford steams underneath the post. Well, Radley on uh, day one, a draw with rugby to open their account, but then they got things firing. A big win against Colleague Cigar and Stourport. And then they defeated Fimbra as well on the end of day one to get them through to the cup. So far, however, defeats to Bromsgrove yeah, and Gordons leave them adrift in the yeah, group the stage. Whitgift, on the other hand, Took down Warwick, Barnard Castle, Canford and Epsom on Play day ten. one. Not a single easy game amongst those, but then again, two losses to Gordons and the Bromsgrove. Not on. Them with very little to play for Look here, except for pride, as a knock-on in midfield will offer them a set-piece opportunity to attack. Yeah, the strength That's of this it. tournament, as you're saying, Wilf, is just just astronomical this year. And that we're having no easy games. Okay, Radley on the first Coach. day doing very well and, and still not, not being able to conjure anything Mind up not. here on the Set. second day. Um, <laughs> but here we go, Whitgift attacking now with a bit of menace down this right hand side. Away they go. Whitgift are up to the 10 metre. Yes. Stuart Pasley in support. And well, Radley were flying up in the line, so they choose to go back to the short side. But uh, well, good line speed from Dave Fissalau yeah. just to. Disrupt former England under 18 trialist, no. so he's been in and around right. the squad. Let's go. Here Line go. out for Radley. Another opportunity there, for Radley to make the most Slide, of the uh, Good platform here. Knock on blue. Locked on by uh, Whitgift, so they'll have an even safer one. Over here. As we cross the four minute mark in this first half. Well, Sam, we spoke Ready? a lot about Gordon. You were there Come when over. they won their own Sevens Festival earlier on Crouch. in this group and hoping to progress Blind. through the Cup. Set. Yeah, I was, I was there, and uh, they looked extremely Set. impressive that day. Them and Brighton College in the final. Um, Brighton again looking impressive as well. They might be through to the plate competition. Mm, indeed, the final of that one. I yeah, mean. I think uh, having seen them in the flesh, Blind. Gordon's might be my bet. But, but it'll be, here uh, we go again. It'll be Charlie Weston this time for Radley. Oh. And, well, Sam, they have taken their opportunities when they've come. Yeah. And uh, Whitgift here uh, are about to be whitewashed in this cup group, perhaps. Yeah, Marla Martin not really serving me well at the moment. But they still have the spark in them, I, I, can, I, I do believe. Um... But, yeah, again, Radley taking the chance really well here. Just sees the gap open up uh, just uh, in midfield as the, as the ball goes down there. And just a hole opens up for the number six there. 
Charlie Weston it is who goes all the Charlie way. Weston. Stay behind. Yep. Here we go. Let's see if Bradley can pronounce themselves again as a, as a good kickoff goes up. No competition, though. Whitgift do come away with it. Looking to uh, get something on the board before half time. Checking back is Fergus Callington. Another Harlequin. Stuart Pasley bursting through the contact. Look at Pasley go. What acceleration. The try scorer, Weston, almost pulls him down, but he gets the offload away. Back on the inside, and it's been dropped. Don't so Tino Mashunga will counter, but penalty for Wicket. Hang on. And there you're right, go. what a run from Stuart Pasley. Mm. Well, they've tapped quickly. Seb Cox makes it out to uh, Jasper Abington. Callington plays it back into midfield. The danger man, Stuart Pasley, on the ball, stepping off the right, beating another. Look at him go, Stuart Pasley. No, no, no! This can't be held. Leave. Dancing feet. Dom Wade at first receiver with a big lofted pass. There's the little show and go, oh. but the ball is forward. <laughs> yeah, oh, pass. just not making the most of it at the moment, Wait, Will. Let's go. Um, but really up, upping the pressure now, Whitgift. Uh, 30 seconds and it's half. As we saw there, great, great, great Let's go. Uh, yeah, breakthrough go. by uh, Stuart Pasley. Very unlucky by Fergus, Fergus Kelly. Um, quickly. But doing doing all they can, yeah. just missing Crouch. the final mark at the moment. Right. There will be a scrum for Radley instead. Set. Hold it up. Go. Yep. Simple hands to begin with within their own 22. Woody Waking of Gloucester with the 10 shirt on his back. Oh, what caught on the wraparound. Big tackle comes in from Whitgift. Just about still in possession, but they've had to retreat to their try line. Fissile. Okay, away, five. Right foot. Taken to ground. Yep. Here is Mushunga, once again unable right, to right, right, field. Right, right, and on the yes. stroke of half time, Bradley will look to Four kick pass. it out, but it's a forward pass instead. And well, that's a lucky escape for Radley. Half time. Mm, yeah, Bradley playing with fire there in their own in their own uh, dead ball line, but um, really taking their chances well. Not Wickiff with all the ball in this first half, but Bradley just. Spotting the holes in that Whitgift defence. and Well, uh, Radley, the more clinical of the two sides, going into the break, they lead by 10. Although this game might not mean much to the end of the competition, it'll mean a lot to them. Both sides searching for their first win in their final round of fixtures in the Cup group stage. Radley lead by 10, going into the break. Second half, Whitgift with the kickoff and claimed excellently well out of the air. This time by Radley, Mushunga gets the offload in. And thundering back on side comes Sam Warne. Down the short side they go. Paddy Hall, Mushunga, well, hand in there. We could see a card here. Sam Line, you might no be move. in trouble. I give you a benefit of doubt in a tackle. You tap it down. 
Not again. Just in the tackle, so only a penalty yeah. for now. Instead, it will be uh, Paddy Hall to tap. Well, he looks to take on okay, Stuart Pasley on his own. Not the wisest yeah, decision. Her release, Stuart away, Pasley back to make the tackle as well. That time on uh, Woody Wakin. Looking to find somewhere to go here, Radley. Well marshalled, Sykes. Good line speed from Whitgift. They're pushing Radley back at the moment. Come on, we're play. Nice. Lost, lost, lost. Let's fight. Flying through the, the bait down, looking to disrupt. Great line speed, another tackle That's flying fantastic. in, this time from Connor Bird. Great tackle again. Whitgift just to, sustaining this defensive pressure, unless they can find Radley, a man on the outside here, which they might have. Well, it's a great bit of deception. All who's away on the left hand side. Out of a phone box there, fresh on the field, and Hall will score. And Radley <laughs> goes three right. in front. Whitgift piling on the pressure, but it cut matters naught in the end as Hall is able to escape. Yeah, great bit of deception there. Just uh, saw some, a tiny gap of space on the outside, um, outside Stuart Pasley. And. Um, just saw it and went, and fantastic bit of footwork, and he sinks the kick as well. Uh, great work from Hall there. You should see it on the replay now. Just a bit messy on the outside. Comes here, oh, show, little show and go, and just beats beats Passy on the outside. Came off the hand of uh, Stuart Passy there, so a little bit fortunate perhaps. Oh, hack through from Radley, straight from kickoff. Whitgift scrambling, Callington back there. Forced to touch it down over his own goal line. So it will be a scrum five for Radley, who could kill off this game here with another score. Took it in my blue. Stay on the line, yeah? Ready? Crouch! Bind! Radley puts it here. Scrum then for Radley, big yep. opportunity for them. That, Whoa, it's through the legs go. of the scrum half. But Mashunga back to collect. Wakin plays it wide, lovely step off the right. Just about wrapped up by Whitgift, and now Woody Wakin with few okay. options, but a good carry. Johnson looking to disrupt. Tackles flying in. Hey, tackle release! Back foot, yep, good. Cross field. <laughs> no, in front Just of the kicker. Very unlucky. Great invention there in from, the uh, from Radley, but rare um, today yeah. on RE2. Mm. And yeah. on, throughout the week, I haven't seen many cross field kicks. That's very true, Will. Yeah. Um, I suppose it's kind of a risk reward basis, isn't it? Um, and with these conditions. Get outside. Yeah. It's, uh, these conditions, the ball just sitting up a little bit slower for teams, yeah. so perhaps it's the option to go for. But maybe Whitgift will go the old-fashioned way. On the wraparound, the ball's just loose, and uh, that is sloppy. And Whitgift, when you're 17 points down, can't really afford to throw passes like that. No, 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 he can't. But uh, they're giving it their all. Unfortunately, his Radley side have come out with great organisation and, and uh, a bit of battle about them as well. Okay. Um, and are not okay. going home empty-handed if they can help Let's it. Let's go. Fine. Line out here. Up go Radley, and it's claimed by the red and white. Waking across the face. Little stutter step. And then coming back <laughs> off the wing. Release now! Looking for work. Release, release. You didn't release him. <laughs> Woody Waking plays 10 again. Skips away from one and does lift right the ball, off, and now suddenly it's a two on one, and we could have another try for Hall back against the grain. He'll beat the sweeper and he'll seal it for Radley. Yeah, Radley going full up there. Fantastic play from them again. Really, really just being very patient with this Whitgift defense, who, as we said, were flying up earlier and just letting them tie themselves out and, uh, and slowly, slowly wearing them away. Um, have a look at this kick from behind to go 24 up. There we are. 
Fantastic from Radley again, though. Just really have worked Whitgift out. And Hall on the outside, cutting back in. A and a half. Beating both sweepers. One man takes out okay. another as well. And uh, Radley four up now. Waking to take the kick off. Closing in on the final minute here. And what a take that is. Beautiful on the turn from Sykes, the Gloucester man. A long ball out there. It's impressive today. Hey, Waking, taking on all comers. There's two over the ball for Whip Gift, and they do have the turnover. Chance for them to take something from this game as uh, Hall gives them another 10 yards. Town Row. An ambitious ball, but it's a lovely ball, and that's got Whitgift rolling. Yeah, great ball from Fergus Cali there. Here is uh, Callington again. Town Row under pressure, under real pressure from Sykes. Release! Release! And this time it's Louis Johnson. Ooh, flicking it out the back door into no man's land. Hacked on by Radley and by Will Linker, the Australian. Sorry. Knocked on in the tackle. Wait. Blue. And it's 11. a yellow card this time. And Radley will play the final play with a man up, and surely that will lead to a try as it's been chipped in behind by Linkter, and he's on it as well. And Radley has it. Turnover with Gift. And Back 10. There we go. Final play, they'll still look to create something. No, no. Can they get something out of this now? Oh, it's great hands there. Just spreading it wide now. Can he take his man on and go on the outside? No, no, no cut back in. <laughs> well, turned over Another by turn over the needs to roll. Not legally so. There was no roll. Two? Not really. Well, they've got a lot of work to do to create something from here. Big shot comes in. Loose pass. Game over. Full time. <laughs> Well, Radley will take something out of this cup group. However, it will be the winners over on RE1 who progress through to the final and semi-final of the cup. A defeat for Whitgift brings their tournament to an end, but uh, a successful run for both these teams, even if it will end at before the semi-final stage. Yeah, it was a uh, valiant effort from both sides. The weather, obviously, uh, not allowing both teams to play wide, expansive rugby as they usually would be, but Bradley and Whitgift both bring an end to their day. Uh, Bradley coming out on top with a with a stupendous show of, of uh, skill and power in this game. Well, a 24-point win for Bradley as we look ahead to the next game, and that will be the uh, plate competition at the under-18 girls level. Blundell School searching for their first win. Well, on the other hand, the Samuel Whitbread Academy could be through with a victory as they currently lead the group by three points. That's live here on RE2 up next from the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens.
Well, kick off then between Blundell School and Samuel Whitbread Academy. Samuel Whitbread likely to be uh, the victors here. And another victory for them will see them through to the latter stages of the plate. And then after that game, it's Brighton College against Clifton in a huge plate semi-final between last year's finalists and the Bristol Bay side. For now, however, Samuel Whitbread, all they need is a victory to progress to the next stages of the competition. And a little show and go has got them rumbling. Great leg drive in these latter stages. Hard to come by. And all of a sudden, it'll open up for them on the right. On the wraparound, good tackle. But still, Samuel play. Whitbread driving on. The ball goes to deck. Play, play, play. And it comes Blundell's way. Could they spoil the party? In possession, yet to win a game today after progressing through to this uh, plate group. They finish second behind, for the love of the game, the Canadian team. Valiantly so, as they scored 166 oh, points on day one. Absolutely huge results for them. The Blundells finished second in that group, which has put them in this plate group, a tough one, involving Samuel Whitbread, who are the on-form team. Exeter College and Graveney School sit on three points apiece. So a big victory for Exeter College and a loss to Samuel Whitbread here could see Exeter progress through as leaders. But instead, it's uh, Samuel Whitbread up, giving away the penalty. Lose your hand, thank you. Spilled by Blundells. Play advantage. But Samuel Whitbread might look to counter here. Offloaded to Lauren nice Zaz of Hertfordshire. Quite a few of those littered amongst this team. But finally, we'll have a break in play, and it will be a line out for Blundells. Line. That's the middle. Go there. Which one are you? Front man? How many red? Two, two, two. Back ten. Play. Fired in. No contest, and it's a loose ball. And given as a forward part, forward knock on as well. So, uh, Samuel Whitbread will be back in possession. I mean, he was forward. Okay. Bind! Set! Pulls out. Well, some physical contacts in there flying in from Blundells. But Samuel Whitbread do well to get it away. And keep the attack alive. Ball there, please. Yeah, 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 no, I've seen it there. Okay, I'll let you deal with her. Cuts off. Be your scrap when we start, okay? Done, sub done. Just an Water injury off, to we're going. Play, but we'll be getting underway Let's shortly. Go, go. Their scrum, they had the ball. Same side or back five? Crouch, bind, set. Yeah. Hold the push now, hold the push. Samuel Whitbread then take it to the line at full pace and they are in behind. What a break this is. Samuel Whitbread need a score, they need a win to get through to the tackle next properly, round of the plate. Wow. And well, We're not swing tackling. Not a popular tackle with the referee, so a penalty then. Samuel Whitbread. Academy in the ascendancy. Back, 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 first back, back, phase back. there, the ball goes loose. But Lauren Saz there to play nine. Another strong tackle. Carry Hands off from Fullerton. Oh, a little pick and go this time to get over the gain line. Another thunderous shot comes in, this time from Pickering. 
Little show and go. To the outside channel they go through Saz. Saka release! Good. Well, Come ripped back. on the floor and stolen by Withy, the head girl. Both head girl and deputy representative of this team. Backwards, so still here come Blundells on the wraparound. Lovely footwork, and suddenly there's a race to the line. Just the sweeper to beat, but Withel might go all the way. In comes the tackle, just short. What a covering tackle that is. Up to the feet. Samuel Whitbread get the turnover. Can you believe it? Your pen. Release the ball. Well, it's a wonderful tackle on the cover. Oh, Merely go off, leave her, leave her, get a sub on. Get a sub on. Not my business. First team for everything. Also plays cricket for Devon. Yeah, well, you can do that. She's crawled off. Was covered on the tackle, and suddenly Samuel Whitbread will break. Only the sweeper to beat. In comes the big don't argue. There's the offload. Samuel Whitbread rolling on. Once again, they knock another to the ground. Can anyone stop Connie Brooks? Captain at Hertfordshire. Tawana Makope putting in the big fend there, but just the last pass goes to ground. So it will be a knock on. And what a thrilling game we have for you here. Blundells yeah. may be yeah, out of the, the plate, corner. but they're not out of the fight. And a big part. win for Exeter College on RE1. Could knock Seven. the Samuel Whitbread team out if they fail Let's go. to win here. Although a point will do it for them. That is not the tenuous position quick, they quick, would quick. like to be in. Perhaps the final play of the half. Which side are you going? Go left. Go left. A scrum then for Blundells. Let's go. Crouch! Bind! Set! Right, and stable okay, at the sorted. breakdown. Okay. I enjoy get uh, get getting bogged down in the scrum Make as much as any real stay. rugby purist. Crouch! But uh, Bind! not the option for Blundells here. Penalty at the scrum. That's theirs. Back ten. Fullerton calling for it. Wasn't going to get any support from Blundells and Makope up over the gain line. Does get the offload away. Back against the grain and through the first tackle. Rumbling on Samuel Whitbread. Inches short. Desperate for support. No. But a turnover at the breakdown, just an inch away. Holding on is the call, and Blundells will tap quickly, and they'll look to test this Samuel Whitbread defence in transition. What a pick-up on the floor that is to secure possession, and back they come. That's Georgia good. King. Huge shot from Blundells. The ball is loose. And that shot may leave the Blundells player worse for wear. Samuel Whitbread, though, still playing deep into overtime here. Desperate to break the deadlock. Direct this time. And another great line picked out. Offload to deck. And that'll be the half. Half time. A breathless Thank you. eight and a oh, half awesome. minutes. Samuel Whitbread held by Blundells. The basement side in this pool currently holding the leaders. This point will be enough for Samuel Whitbread to top the group, but that is not the outcome that Samuel Whitbread were hoping for as we head into the break. Well, Brighton players are on the field. They think it's their time. They've been told just and rightly by the girls to uh, leave the field. So in this next game, up ahead, Brighton being told to wait their turn. At half-time, Sammy Whitbread drew with Blundells. Emmanuel scores versus Blundell scores on RE6. 
Well, kick-off then that's been reclaimed by Samuel Whitbread and Makope, and they're on the attack, held at half-time by Blundells for now. Lower, lower, but lower. what changes will be made at half-time? And it's uh, Bramwell breaking through the tackles. Makope, they've got numbers on the left. Fullerton, what a big shot that is. Thunderous from the captain, Scott McDowell. Samuel Whitbread look a little bit narrow, right in front of those Blundell supporters. A staunch defensive effort. All the way wide to Bramwell. Got vantage play. Bramwell with a knock on and Blundells are free. And suddenly it's a race to the line. Oops, Blundells are away. Della Commissaris learnt her rugby in Singapore where they perfected the short form of the game. And just about the try was given, despite the best defensive efforts. And well, this is a spanner in the works for Samuel Whitbread, who could be dropping out of the plate if Exeter College get the result they want over on RE1. Well, they'll take their time with the kick. Geo Scott McDowell, the captain, who started it all with that massive shot out wide. We'll look to put Blundell's seven Move points in front. Get the ball back afterwards. To add the extra is Scott McDowell, just wide of the right hand upright. The Brighton boys there to collect. They're keen to get things going. They take on Clifton College after this, but there goes the fend. And well, Commissaras went all the way. Here's the covering tackle. Hint of a knock on, perhaps. Flying in. Well, well, let's go. It's debatable if Commissaras had pressure on that ball as it went down. But they'll take the try Play. regardless. Blundell's in front against all the odds. Samuel Whitbread now desperate for a couple of scores. They need to go in front here to secure their place in the plate. Put down out wide. <laughs> And it'll be a scrum Choice. for Blundells. Scrum or line, choice. Scrum, 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 scrum. Here, here, come here. Which side are you going? Crouch! Bind! Okay, there's a bit of space at behind, please. Okay, Crouch! Set, straight, 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 straight. Find! Set! Scrum fed by uh, Scott McDowell, the captain, turned over by Samuel Whitbread. Over the ball go Blundells, but it will come Bramwell's way. Makope, there's a girl over this time for Samuel Whitbread. Makope back on the inside. On the wraparound, away they go. But a huge covering tackle, a penalty instead for Sammy Whitbread. I'm joined by a couple of uh, Blundell's boys, and this will be a huge result 10. for the women's side. Mm. Yeah, it'll be great to see the girls go in today. I think they've had a couple, but we really need to progress further into this competition if you want to bring back some silverware. Well, Blundell's are out of the competition, unfortunately, oh, bottom of the group. You but need, uh, this result would knock then. Samuel Whitbread out of the plate, Rocky. So you'd certainly leave your mark on the proceedings. Some top support from the Blundells boys on the sideline, though, Rocky, regardless. We're good. Make sure you're ready wherever you're going. Crouch! 
Well, Blundell's Five, been everywhere in the tournament six. across each competition. How have you found it yourself, Rocky? Um, yeah, it was a tricky first day. We um, just managed to get it through to the plate. And then one we've reset. had two wins and one loss today okay. to a very good two Brighton team. So, Let's so go again! Let's go! Yeah, you're in the plate group of two death, really, alongside Brighton. That is a seriously impressive matchup from last Crouch. year's finalist, of course, in Five. the World Cup competition. Set. But yeah. this would be a huge result for the girls' side, yet to Hold get the off the mark Good. in this uh, cup competition. Thunderous tackle comes in from behind, that time by Fullerton of the... Choice, scrum or line? Scrum. Well, it will scrum. be a scrum for Samuel Whitbread. If Blundells can hold out here, they may well have knocked Samuel Whitbread out of the plate. Crouch! You can see Five. there's a lot of pure power in that front row. Set! They've got some very, very strong girls. Good, good, good. It's a good contest. Round the corner come. Blundell's looking to disrupt. They've left a bit of space open on the right-hand side. Cutting back against the grain once again is Bramwell, who frees up the offload. Double fend, and they will go over. Samuel Whitbread will touch down right under the sticks <laughs> with an opportunity to go in front. Respect where respect is due. That was a very nice try. A couple of big fends in there. Rocky on the way that through. from where you are, please. Blundell's just defended a bit narrowly there. Well, let's see if they can add the extras. <laughs> Clean conversion, and with a minute to go, Samuel Whitbread will shoot themselves back to the very top of this plate group. There's so much mud on the shirt. Tough to cool, but I believe that's Connie Brooks, the captain of Hertfordshire. Hurry up, let's go! Play. Well, Rocky Bundles needs Play. something special to turn this game around in the final minute. I believe we've got the players that can do it. Frey on the ball right now, she's a very strong runner. That's a good pass as well. And Blundell's once again looking to free the hands, but it's just loose. Knock on is the call. Scrum. Kopi protests. She thought she was away. Still 20 time. Seconds. 20 go, seconds black. to go. Samuel Whitbread, two in front. They've turned it around. Crouch! Ahead of a huge game between Clifton Five. College and Brighton in the play semi final. Good good, good, this good, good, good. will see. Samuel Whitbread through to the women's plate if they can hold on here or score another. Covering tackles, flying in, stepping Got off the Fred. right. Blundell's looking to turn it over. <laughs> Penalty goes against them. And Samuel Whitbread red. With red. in the red here. Still looking to attack. You love the desire. You love to see it. You love to see people want to score more tries. And there it is. And they have sealed it. A breathless performance from Blundells, who thought for all the world they might be causing right. a cup Dead. upset, but in fact, End again. the uh, End again. Just kidding. power of Samuel Whitbread shone through at the very end. Sometimes you've got to realise when it's not your game. Well then, it's a very busy commentary box here on... Uh, RE2, we've got Gareth Rise in the back there from Ealing, who'll be on for the Cup semi-final. Ollie Slim, the director of rugby at Bristol, on to watch the Bristol side, Clifton, and Rocky with me as well from Blundells. Rocky, tell us a bit more about what this tournament means, uh, considering how much everyone loves to be here on RE2, about what it means to players like yourself. It's just amazing. I think it's really great for the players as well as the parents to come to support. It's been coming all the time from under 13s to under 18s, and I just really feel that Roslyn Park is the best sevens tournament out there. Well, it's the last we'll see of the many Blundell sides competing, but it is not the last we'll see of sevens rugby. Plate and cup semi-finals live here on RE2, and then a couple of junior games to finish off. But live here on RE2 up next, a huge clash between last year's finalist Brighton and Clifton College of Bristol.
Well, Brighton were in the cup group of death on day one, drawn alongside Kirkham and Hartbury College. Clifton College have done excellently well to make it to the plate following an opening game defeat, but it could be the fastest of starts for Brighton as Lamb is away. And we have the score, Ollie Slim, Director of Rugby at uh, the University of Bristol, also with a child playing yeah, currently yeah. for Clifton. Well, Oscar can. Green, the yeah, Clifton yeah. captain, that is. It's the fastest yeah. start for Brighton, well, however. Yeah, slightly disappointed, isn't it, Wilfred? What is exciting, though, is if um, I shout out Clifton College, the headmaster who is here said that I can have a reduction in the summer fees. So, Clifton College, whoop, whoop. Get the ball. That is excellent to hear, and, well... It's uh, Sam Arengo Jones, who's been pretty brilliant all week, skips away to score the first. But looking back at Clifton's day, it started uh, way back yesterday when they lost to Gordons, who are on their way to the cup final, yeah, it well. seems. But then they beat Stowe, John Fisher, and the King School, Macclesfield, to make Fine. it here. And what people don't know, they're missing so many through injury. This is quite a lot of under-17s, which is quite good for the future. Um, just a shame to missing so many of those players. And then in this uh, plate group, of course, they lost to Warwick, but turned it around against Fimbra, and then Fimbra themselves beat Warwick as Clifton went on to beat Bedford. High tackle, through. 15. A shock result, but uh, Clifton must be happy to be here, Ollie. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know. Oh. Stop. Oh, Injury. referee's had one there. Yeah, I'm sure they are absolutely happy. It's a struggle, Stop isn't off. it? Like When you get to this point, they're so tired. They've been on it all day. Um, for the last two Restart days, so they're exactly absolutely the shattered, bless them. But um, you just got to keep going through it and keep fighting. Brighton, of course, are in a it's really right, tough group on day one. The defeat to uh, Clifton, uh, the defeat to Kirkham, sorry, what's put them in the plate. And since then, they've uh, well, they've only conceded three right. tries we'll today, really one each in their anyway. three games. Yes, they beat fine. Norwich, yes. Brighton. Uh, they beat Norwich, Good Hampton start. and Blundells okay. all by the same scoreline, barring on. one conversion. 19-15, 19-17 and 19 points to 7-5 seven, and 7. So a bit of a weird day for Brighton. Something going on behind the scenes, but they've uh, looked really impressive. However, Clifton on the attack for the first time in this day. Hello, everyone cross on. Field, don't mind it. Cross field from Freddie St. John, taken out of the air, and suddenly the hole opens up for Jones. Oh, unlucky. Wilfred, remember that name, Harrison Jones. Off you go. Hell no. of a talent. Under 17. Hell of a talent. One it's it's uh, no. Freddie St. John. Not St. John, just oh, a Freddie St. correction, just to Thank you very challenge much, your Ollie. professionalism. Wilfred. Not on 11. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we go. It's Clifton on the attack then. Here is Oscar Green, the captain. Freddie St. John hands it off. And then into the corner they could be on here. No. Yeah, a footing touch to halt the attack this time around. Number 10, Archie Spokes there, got absolute wheels. Horrendous Barnet, but absolute wheels. Bristol Bears hooker. Here we go. Just step off. Wait. Well, it will be a uh, line out then in a tenuous position. But Brighton do come away with it. They had a blistering start. Release! Here. But three minutes in, they haven't been able to capitalise on it wait. yet. Well, a little show and go, and Green there to cover. But there's the offload from Matt Namara. Well, surely forward, referee waves play on. Well. Chipped in behind, but it ricochets off a Clifton man. Piling in the tackles no. there. Side entry, players seven. unavailable for Clifton due to England commitments as well. Keep going. Did you turn my microphone off, Wilfred? Just while we checked that uh, Ollie Harris is in fact wearing the number 40, the 15 shirt, but it's Brighton down the right-hand tram line this time. Arengo Jones. He's very tall, wasn't he? But completely wrapped Tackle! up by Clifton. Get out! Wait, McNamara. Step. Lamb, the Harlequins fullback, Touch! puts one in behind, and look at the wheels. It pops up beautifully, and that is an excellently weighted kick. And Brighton College will have their second. I think they've only got six on the field as well. Have I made that? Well, this time it's uh, Henry Williams with the score. There was a man off. down for Clifton in the backfield. Thankfully, the number 20 is back to his feet. But a beautifully weighted kick by. Fergus Lamb, he's had a great day. Do you think the weather affects how you play this, Wilf? 
I the, think the kicking's more there's more kicking today. Is that just because of how boggy it is, do you think? I think that's absolutely the case. The ball significantly more likely to sit up nicely for you instead of skidding off to the field. And you see here it just catches in the dirt and pops right up. Yeah, nice for Henry next Williams. penalty stop it. We must restart. Yeah, they're on a yellow, I think, here. Yeah. Not that we, we didn't notice. Next I'm not sure what for. It. Brighton are on a yellow. It does, in fact, look like Bryson are on a uh, yeah. yellow card. They're down to six players. I'm not sure what incident that could have possibly been, as very few penalties have been given away. But uh, Yeah, well done, Harrison Jones, again. Good take. Picked off of the air by Harrison Jones, and here is Green. Yeah, he stepped out great. Flat! Two on one. There we Even go. on the late hit, McNamara looks to wrap up his opposite man. Ooh. OK, you're both holding each other on the floor down there. Leave it. We'll restart with the whites. Restart with a white scrum here. Both well, holding each other a, on the floor. A no, shades of a late hit from Brighton and uh, Clifton. Both holding not each other on the floor. Let that go. White scrum. But uh, nothing more serious yeah. than that for the referee. Yeah. Bit of Both of you at fault there. We saw there. In this late stage of the competition, yeah. this plate semi final, yeah. it takes an awful lot of rugby to get here. Brighton, of course, in the semi final on RE2 this time last year. Sit. Except that was the cup semi-final in the in the desperate mud. Couldn't pick out a sim single player as they uh, were victorious then before Leave losing it. to Harrow in the final. Who we were chasing yeah, yeah, their five. second win. But Green at first receiver, a little show and go. And then there the go. Leave it. Austin Rose come on for Clifton with the red scrum hat. Some good wheels out there. Well, Freddie St. Jean tucks a speculative ball, but it's a lovely take by Spokes, and he is off to the races. He's got Lamb in support, but Spokes will touch down. Great score. Well done, Archie. Like Make, makes up for that lid. Well done. Great score. Well, Clifton, Pass for a hooker. Clifton back in the game and plenty of legs for a hooker as well, which is pretty impressive, although he is waving to the sideline. That's his contribution <laughs> for the moment all over. Onto the field and instead comes... Jinsei Yasuda. Yeah, Bristol Bear as well. A successful conversion as well to cut the deficit even further. Who led a hooker wear the number 10 shirt? That's the real question on everyone's well, mind. No, I, I think the biggest question is his haircut. Half play anyway. <laughs> <laughs> apparently half they play. all had a... Finn Fielder was doing all their hair yesterday, apparently, pre-game. There you are. When you're ready. Inside info. Well, that explains an awful lot. That's a great... Nudge. Gone that. 10! What a great kick. It spits off unkindly Not for Clifton. Hard. Unfortunately, the conditions playing a factor there. And that means at the break, Brighton College, perhaps favoured coming into the game, are not home and dry just yet because Clifton have cut the deficit in half. Brighton lead by 14 to 7 going into half time. So, one big question I've got, Will. How many games have you commentated on this week? Well, uh, me and Jack Zorab have taken a pretty even split across the day and there's been a total of, uh, let me do the maths here. Of all week, I want. Well, there's been 22 games a day across five days. We've done about 11 each, so this will be my, uh, my 54th game of the day. Let's Quite a lot up. of them here at... Uh, at uh, RE2, yes, this will be the 54th game of rugby with uh, a couple more to come in the latter stages that I've watched of sevens. I think that's... And how smart do you look? Look well, at you. Well, yes, well, it's the For big day. For a semi-final, it is a I big got day. called out earlier by Dave as well, the commentators on RE1, because, uh, well, I left slightly early yesterday. I wasn't yeah. available for the, the post-match show, and that was blamed on my Gen Z nature. Wow. Wow. So I've decided to come back and look as smart as possible. I think you look great. Thank you. No Gen Z well, wears a suit to work RE1's usually. got Alex Dombrandt. RE2's got me. Absolutely. So I think you're winning. I think I've made the right choice there. <laughs> Absolutely, Ollie Slim. Go on, Clifton. Well, ahead of the second half then, it's uh, Clifton College. Trail by just the one try against Brighton. Hoping to get into a Roslyn Park final at the under-18 stage for the second year in a row. What a coaching team as well. Look at that for Clifton College. Danny Grucock, Matt Salter, two absolute pros of their game. It's Seb McNamara to get us underway. Not 10. Short. Rengo Jones on the turn, looking to Drop. break away, but called back. And instead, Green, on the, 10 meter line. the skipper, yeah, get Clifton rolling. 
Ollie Taylor's come on, number seven, brother of Harry Taylor of Gloucester, for those in the know. Good pill. Oh. It's Freddie St. Jean at the moment making the real yardage. Here is Yasuda. Taylor. Green. Searching for support on the switch. Instead, he may have created a hint of a two on one. Here is Green again. All on. Looking to go wide to find Yasuda, and he does pick him out here. And suddenly, there's a three on one to a two on Ooh. one. But the ball went down. Oh. Still alive. Yasuda still, still plays it. Green again. Nice. This is Matty Dixon in the blue scrum cap. Matty Dixon. 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 Not going to advantage. Oh. The switch, but it was not to work. How Brighton break the pace oh. from Horsburgh. He beats another. Hunted down by Austin Rowe, but Brighton pounce upon the error. And in the game of sevens, Ollie, it can be as simple as that. Well, yeah, Oscar Green missed the tackle there, so he won't get fed tonight. Um, but yeah, great score, good speed on the outside, and uh, yeah, fair play, strong side. Well, here it is then, the semi-final. Brighton mate. stretch out their example, and McNamara told to hurry it up by the referee if he looks to add the extras. Harrison Jones coming off. He got called a child on by the RE one commentator earlier, which was went down well with the uh, the team earlier. He's only a young lad. Correct. But uh, well, it was certainly on here on the switch. Just a miscommunication, unfortunately. Yeah, there's that miss. Unfortunately, good score. Well, uh, not the first of the day for Billy Horsbro, and it might not be the last if Brighton can keep the pressure on here. McNamara to nudge in behind Clifton. Back where they were in the first half. They've still got plenty of time to turn this around, and that is a great again. Not again. Again, but just a few inches short. Next score's massive, Wilfred. And green to tap from halfway. And putting the hammer down, drawing in two defenders. Oh, Turnover on the deck. Oh, okay. Ben Saunders this time, keep and going, keep going, keep going. Harry Streak. Yasuda picks him off, and he steps around McNamara as well. Miller Cole beaten, there's the show and go. Green does well to keep a hold of it. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Got a release, well done. Go on, Dick, Dixon, Matty Dixon. Taking on McNamara. Harris, round the corner. Great lifted offload. to Dixon. Green. Pill. Over the top, Yasuda on the bounce. It's got numbers inside, little show and go this time for Molly Taylor. And then Green puts the hammer Not down, McNamara on Not the corner. Held. Green back to his feet, Streak makes the tackle. Surely now it's on on one side of the field. Dixon stepping right to cool. left. Lifts the offload once again to Harris. Harris battling with Fergus Lamb. Into the corner Try, they go. Well done. <laughs> And a really well worked try. Archie Spokes in the corner. Fair play, Archie. Great Archie score. Dad's a bit odd, but great score from Archie. Well done, pal. He wants to come off again, look. Hey, fellas. Well, he does have his second. Big moment now, big moment. Ten seconds, mate, from where you are. Other way, other way. Jacob Rylett coming on now for Clifton College, the size of the fella. Three minutes. Three minutes. Scores 21-14. 21-14. Well, I'm unsure at the moment if they got the kick. The referee says it was 21-14, which the means they did. Wow, nudge. Fellas, right. ball. Let's go. No, it wasn't one of theirs. Yeah. Going to be a crazy last couple of minutes, Wilf. Oh, it's short. Played. Knock on advantage. Played it. Well, the kick off was short. Knock Knock right, they have played it, so it will be possession. Scrum's here. Two strong kits, Wilf. Oh, sorry, mate, that's all right. On show. Let's go. Let's go. Two seriously Let's go. famous Let's strips at uh, schoolboy level. Here comes Jake Rylett, number six. Absolute huge unit. Crouch! Well, His dad not. They're bringing on Boys. the big guns here with a few moments to go. Sit. Dixon with no, the feed. 
Oh, he's off. He's and off. And down the it. short side he goes. He's skipping away from one. There's oh, support no, on the inside. On. Well gathered by Taylor. He's slipping. We'll play through. Dixon at nine. Give massive overlap. Green flashes it across the face. That's high. High tackle, and we could see a card here. Time off. It's a yellow Billy slide Horsburgh break. Billy from hero oh. to zero. Oh, and it's red? A red card. <laughs> red card. For stopping a try scoring opportunity. Tackle, Double card. yellow, I think, Will. It? Double yellow, I think, pal. Horsburgh's first, well, second turning. yellow. So a red card. Yeah. Well, we'll have a look at this high tackle here. Actually, I think we'll go back to the action yeah, because Clifton has been driving through. But just look at this high yeah. tackle. Well, yeah, Slipping yeah. up down the shoulder. First but Brighton have turned it over. Well, there's still a minute to go. Brighton Marty. trail by seven. Marty, let's go, please. You've got to go. We'll have a look at this uh, turnover as well. Well, here's the high tackle again from Hasbro. It just slips up. And it let's was go, given please. as a red for his second yellow card of the game. The try scorer. Let's go. A minute to go. Brighton kicked a corner. Kicking the corner and yeah. trying to slow the game down. Lost ball. We'd ball off. from here, wouldn't we, Wilf, if we were playing? Absolutely. Well, we saw St. Joseph's College score from a mall yesterday Love against that. Millfield Love that. in the game of sevens. And you've seen Quinn Singh, okay. the Harlequin circle from yes, Trinity, on line-out duty all day okay. for them. Time back on. So some real purists knocking around here at Roslyn Park. It's gone five. Well, it's short, just about gone five, and no. McNamara looks to take all the time seconds. in the world. 20 seconds on the clock. Brighton with six. Yes, Has we only the right? Sir. Still 10 seconds. 10 seconds to go, and suddenly there's an overlap. And no, no, no. could be through. Then comes the tap tackle, but they could be away. The six men of Brighton. Sam Jones is the hero. What a game. But in the end, Brighton seal it. Good game, good game. And what a name, Sam Marengo Jones, eh? Well, Marengo Jones has been on top form for Brighton all day, and he has fired them into the plate final. Clifton with a spirited performance after a long two days of rugby. But in the end, Ollie Slim, Cheers, Brighton well done, do prevail. Lost, yeah, well fair done, play to Brighton. Well I think the right team did Cheers. win there, which is a shame to say. Cheers. But Clifton College, a lot of under-17s in that. Their under-16s did Thank really you. well the other day. That's two, you know, next Thank year. You. Maybe have a look at them. Well, we'll wait hey, and see as the uh, Roslyn Cheers. Park Festival Cheers. continues to roll. Here at the uh, Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens, it is cup semi-final time here on Nari 2. Bromsgrove, yeah, not a name that many pulled out of the hat. They take on the famous old name of Millfield. That's next here with Jack Zorab and Gareth Rice, live on Nari 2. Here we go, everybody. Welcome to RE2, to the Under-18s Cup semi-finals between Millfield and Bromsgrove School. Rock, paper, scissors to see who kicks off, as is tradition here at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens and 2024, no exception. What is an exception is Millfield with a tilt at the title because not since way before COVID times, since 2015 at the earliest by my reckoning of Millfield had a team at under 18's cup final in with a shout of winning the big cup but this team from Millfield have come through plenty of tests to get to this point and here they come with ball in hand right from the off that's Ben Morrow who 
feeds the ball to the edge and in the hands of Waitman Dowder for the first time. No real space for Waitman Dowder. But we'll see plenty of him in action unless Bronze Road can keep him quiet. And that's no easy feat. So here we go. Switching on the edge. Back and good hands. And this is Morgan Williams. Morgan Williams drawing and passing. And the patience is there for Neil but not quite the precision on the edge. Well, Gareth uh, Rise is with me from Ealing Trail Finders. Gareth, uh, thanks a lot for coming down here. You've Take been here, lads. I think, for all five days, haven't you? You've seen a lot of sevens, but this is this is a big one. This is two very talented teams going head to head. Yeah, there's two very talented teams here. You know, and it's that interesting point about Millfield. And I see, I think they lost yesterday, yeah, and I think they're timing their run pretty well. I, I caught their game against Sedba, and they're looking sharp. And I think John Mallet and his guys have got them in a great, great position. It's going to be interesting this game. I think conditions, although a uh, squedgy underfoot, are pretty decent uh, in the environment. It's drying up a bit now, isn't it? We had so much rain earlier this morning in the group stages. Things are much drier now, still a bit claggy. So Bromsgrove on the edge here. Three weeks ago, they were dumped out of the uh, under 18 Schools Cup at the semi final stages. They were denied a Twicken and Trip then. Let's go from there. Watching Millfield today, it's how they've competed in those edge areas has been quite impressive. Always forcing pressure in defence and executing very well in attack. And you see that there uh, from the number 14 turnover. So Will Stubbings will switch there. This patient style of sevens has so often been the Millfield way that they have raised the sharp talents on release, the edge release. to finish things off and accelerate things. So Bromsgrove from deep. Vantage over! There's definitely a lot of space in that backfield. Millfield have just set up with a sweeper, but earlier in defence, they didn't have him there. So Bromsgrove looked to exploit that. And it's those moments Nothing of execution are massively on. important. You know, what we do in the middle of the pitch in sevens is, is lung busting and hard work, but the execution on the edge in both an attack and defence is what tells the difference between the teams that progress. Just come see you, lads. Just on the weight. Josh Horton there. Uh, was on the right wing there for Bromsgrove. First Five. opportunity maybe for Bromsgrove to race down the wide channels. Instead, it's the scrum. And Ben Morrow and Millfield look to combine. Morrow on the wrap around. He has Waitman Dowder on the edge. Dowder with the first gun, with the first try. Millfield up and running in the semi final. Thanks to their strike man, Zach Waitman Dowder. Yeah, Wakeman Dowder has had three big involvements in this game already. Turnover down here on the edge, bust a gut and got to that other edge, and he stayed there. And that powerful handoff, it looks easy, but it's uh, definitely hard to do, and Millfield go up ahead. If you've been following Millfield's coverage across today, you would have been chewing all your nails off in the first game because they were down by two scores against Kirkham Grammar School in their first... Uh, group stage match this morning came back to win that 26 19 and they haven't looked back since 10 7 against said but 15 12 against wellington it's been so tight but moments like this have been the difference in competition rugby it can be one or 100 points as long as you get that win keep ready. moving forwards and millfield will be looking to take advantage of that good start they've had of course gareth they also won the under 18 bowl competition earlier this week they won the under 13 back from way, all competition back from as well looking for a third title at this year's roslyn park uh, i think you uh, world renowned rugby school and uh, john mallet you know we say ex uh, borough road and brunel high. alumnus is showing what the uh, the kind of institution uh, the guys put out there and it's uh, it's it's great to see you know millfield doing really well well, Bromsgrove have been kept quiet so far, but when they play, goodness me, they'll cause trouble. But they might not get as many chances to do that in this first half as they would like. We're four minutes in, and already tries are being racked up. This is Charles Heffron from distance all the way to the house. Execution, execution again, and that's real skill to pick that up, you know, from uh, from the number seven, Charles Heffron there, and and then to go the distance as well. I think he'd be looking for a substitution now. I think he's looked over to the bench. He's get himself off. A 
Well, Gareth, you'll know a fair bit about the, the toll, the physical toll that this tournament takes on you. To get to this stage and have this much speed, this much zip in your play and skills precision, it takes so much uh, conditioning across the year, doesn't it? Yeah, of course it does, you know, and, and Millfield and all the schools here are running great rugby programs. That's why there's not just university academies, but professional clubs here looking at the talent that they've been working through academy rugby and looking to pick up guys to progress on their pathways. Back my weight, play it. Contest for the ball. Seatbelt. Good one too. You Jamie. know, Bromsgrove are in danger of letting this get away from them here. You know, they need to get hold of some possession. They need to calm themselves down. It's a big defensive set coming in here. They've got to make sure they execute. Will Stubbins steps out, shrugs off a defender, and Milford hit three in the first half of the semi-final. Starting to become a bit of a mountain now. Uh, as I said there, they needed that good set, but that's a great, powerful finish from Stebbings there. It's rapid fire from Millfield. The cup mentality monsters at their best. It's certainly a competitive environment bred in these boys at Millfield. And, you know, all the games, I've watched a few of their games. The game against Sedborough was a, was a cracker. Two excellent sides, and I think... You know, it's one of them games, you come through that, it's almost an early eliminator. And it could have been either team could have taken it, Millfield just edged it. But it was those success rates in those edges and the execution rates of when they get into those pressure areas. Back by Millfield. Yeah. Off the head, play it. Floor, not quite. You're on the ground, you can't play the ball. This could be the turn that Bromsgrove needs. Let's go. Penalty yeah. here. They need to not put pressure on themselves, just execute a couple of sets, put Millfield under pressure. Ben Yo with the tap and go from 10. Now points required in Aye. quick succession from Bromsgrove. Well, I've been impressed, impressed by Henry Parsons this week and we need to get that guy on the ball if, if Bromsgrove were to be successful. Here's Yo. On the ball for Benson. Lovely flick to the corner, but doesn't stay in hand. Now it does. Back with Bromsgrove. Back with Hastings. Difficult for Parsons to pick up. That was a horrible bobbler. And uh, the conditions on the foot, as we said, are squelchy. And Scrum. just those guys making sure they square themselves up, execute the pass well, because that was an opportunity gone gone wasted there. Parsons had a lot of work to, to catch that. It wasn't the greatest of passes. And uh, they'll be left to rue that moment, Last I think, here at Millfield. Almost at half time. Right. Just execute and get this ball out and get to half time, I think. Set! Out. Good scrum from Bromsgrove. But Millfield still have it. Morrow. Win out. Off the floor. There's Stubbings. Shifting his hulking frame around a sevens pitch can't be easy, but he has an engine to go and go. Falling, not Bromsgrove. falling, play on. Waiting for their moment in defence. That's a patient play. Now here is the man you've talked about, Gareth Henry Parsons. You know, that's Luis. real good post-tackle meters there, but he's not controlled the ball on the floor. And Millfield obviously looking for that killer blow. They haven't kicked it out. They're, uh, they're looking to put uh, Bromsgrove to the sword here. And that fourth try, they get it, could be decisive. We're a minute uh, and a half into injury time in the first half now. So going uh, deep, making it hurt for both teams here. Who has the durability Tackle now. to keep playing? George Bullivant. And that last carry. Morgan I think, Williams. I think Millfield really need to make this work, though, because there is diminishing returns sometimes when you run these extra minutes. You're getting that fatigue in the legs, and, you know, there's going to be tough games coming, you know, with uh, potential for the knockout games if they're successful here. They are looking for this uh, hammer blow, the final say, and surely four tries from half-time would be too much of a mountain to climb. As it is, with the three tries but only one conversion, no, no, more points will be it. required to make them feel safe at half time. Millfield have gone overlap here, they just need to square that space up and execute. The drift is good, the dummy is excellent, Four and seven. the score comes. I think it's Ellis James who sneaks over. It's a cracking finish from James there, and you can see from the reaction of some of these Millfield players, that's what they were playing for there. You know, the more. Uh, the more wizened of us would kick that ball out, but uh, they've got the result, they've got the try, and it's a long way back for Bromsgrove. No. 
No dice from the conversion, but 22 points from seven minutes, although the extra time by the end, we played an extra three minutes and they'll feel much better about things now, Millfield. But what a, what a first half. Yes, excellent work from Millfield in this uh, in this first half. You know, I think uh, definitely uh, definitely looking to push Bromgroves deep on those minutes and four tries is hard to come back to. We've got less than a minute, um, Gareth. Um, you're invested in building rugby players, helping them progress. So, what makes a, a good young rugby player? What qualities should they should they be aspiring to have? And, and at, at this age group by now? You know, I get asked this question a lot, and for me, it's about diligence. You know, but guys that coming into programs, working hard, making sure they're uh, they're doing all the unseen things, getting that gym work done, getting their uh, you know their, their own reviews done, working with their skills coaches. And then really understanding that it's, the coach, it's their job to mine as much information out of a coach. Uh, you know, looking at the players that I've seen come through, that really is one factor that stands out. It's definitely around athletic ability, you know, uh, and a good rugby IQ are important, but you can always develop and learn. I suppose the extra factor is, is that mentality when things get pressurised, when there's moments like the semi-finals and finals, and... and is it the case that not everyone has that? Some players have it more, I think, of an, an Owen Farrell type, or is that also something that can be coached? I think the greatest coach is an opposition. You know, whether you're a prop, it's the guy you scrummage against. You're playing in these matches, these situations. They're the things that, that give you know, players those points of reference in these situations. And it comes from playing. You're just playing rugby and getting guys out there and, and then playing as much rugby as they can. You certainly get your, your fill of uh, Vantage. pitch time at Roslyn Park if you go the distance here. All it's games a, yesterday. It's a real gruelling tournament, you know, for the guys. You know, two days of rugby, high quality, some of the best schools, you know, not just in Britain but globally. Uh, and to be get to this stage, you're a good schoolboy player. Hey, you have a real durability about you as well. Get to the final, and you'll be playing your ninth Coach. match of sevens in in two days. Five, six. I think uh, that's a that's a challenge that a lot of World Series tournaments don't even have. Yeah, quite right. I was looking at the groups early. today, the second stage groups, it's more competitive than the World Series. When you look at the number of teams that could challenge for a title, you look at a World Series group, it's not as competitive as you find Josh. here. No, 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 yeah, there's, there's getting tears to rugby around it, you know, World Series guys, those, those athletes are at the peak of their physical performance, you know, and I think there's uh, real well-prepared teams. Here, there's, uh, there's so many factors that can go, you know, it's, uh, there's so many things that can change. It can be a player there, sometimes you get guys, they, they come out of nowhere. You know, there, there's players that maybe have not shown too much on the 15 and side season, but seven suits them, and they just have a dream, dream series, dream tournament. Okay. Well, everyone knows when they see Millfields in their group at the start of the day, it's, life's going to be tricky. And for everyone they've come Strong. up against, it's proved Forward. to be so. Forward pass here. So Bromsgrove with a chance for points, and then we'll go from there. I think this is now or never for Bromsgrove. You know, rugby's a massive game of momentum. Guys, and a score the here, Six, the shift the momentum back Coach. to Bromsgrove. Suddenly, the score, you'll feel start Six. thinking what could happen here. And uh, that can mount and go forward, but it's Balls a big out. moment. On a on a Scrum ruined by Millfields. Harrison, unfortunately, they didn't execute. Jamie they Gregory could, it was. Could find themselves under pressure again. Horton on the tackle, but he just can't quite contain the flying George Bullivant, who escapes in the five-metre channel. And then from there, he zones in on the try line. And it's simple rugby, you know, it's just a turnover at a scrum. Two simple passes, keeping the guys square, the opposition square and honest. Get a, you know, a great player like Bullivant in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and you execute that, you know, the defender's always under pressure there and you're back under the post, and that's 27-0 with a kick to come. And Fortunately, I think it's going to be a miracle for Bromsgrove to come back from here. With those points added as well. And seven. Four. Great fend, excellent finish, and he gets a reward. Morrow with the restart. Holmes goes do well to move this quickly away. Here's Horton. 
Josh Horton. That's great pace from Horton on the outside there. Man to draw in, and Bromsgrove here will get on the boards. The tackling back Tackle. is excellent from Milford. How do they do it? Then Horton arrives. He'll yeah. go into touch. Remarkable. Morgan from Milford. Williams there. Unbelievable play. You know, he's picked that line break. He was mid pitch for the start of that. And he's just trusted in the process. Kept turning his legs over and made an excellent try saving tackle. Both team subs coming. Getting his, his, his well deserved rest there after an unbelievable cover tackle while well, Millfield ring the changes. But, you know, Bromsgrove, they've got ability. Horton there, lovely hitch kick. Got on the outside, executed the 2v1. Oh, whoa, whoa. Just that endeavour from Williams. Oh, He's still coming in. Shut Bromsgrove. He's still off. Off back. Great. Let's go. Milford lost yesterday to Hampton School in the group stages. They made a few changes in that match, and, and some of the coaches around here have been saying, no, it's quite Play smart on. to do that. Uh, to make sure that then by this time players are all firing across the squad. Bromsgrove anyway are going to score here and that's much deserved after the breakouts. This is Ben Yo. Yeah, great, great energy from Ben, ben Yo there. He just attacked the line, missed tackle and it shows you even at this stage Bromsgrove is still a threat. But it's going back to Millfield there, championship, you know, tournament rugby. You can't win a tournament in day one, but what you can do is you can prep your side you can make sure everyone gets good minutes. And if as long as you get through that day, you're alive on the second day and you just build that performance. What Millfield will not want here, though, is to lose momentum. You know, want to carry that powerful, confident game plan into the final. Going to reset again. Try scorers wrapping up on the edge here. Waitman Dowder and steps down the touchline. Inches, inches there. Another big, powerful fend from this man. I'm looking forward to seeing, hopefully, him in the final. Uh, but there's a um, few minutes left to go. It's never say never, but I do think Millfield have booked their place in the final with that first sort of half performance. In, please wait! Toby Lewis of Bromsgrove in throws in here. It's uh, possession on Bromsgrove's side, but they've got to take it again. Pass away from Townsend Ford. Here is Yo. Find support in Harrison Osborne, wearing number four. Much more possession in this second half for Bromsgrove. Now they're showing what they're capable of. Millfield's hands trying all sorts to disrupt. Luke pass over the top. That was nicely weighted. Toby Lewis. Lewis escapes down the gunnels. And Lewis cruising home now. And there's a minute to play for Bromsgrove. Yeah, Bromsgrove minute, putting it out there. They might well be thinking, what if, you know, and if they could have held out just one of those tries or executed in the first half or even stopped that first try in the second half. This could be a far more exciting oh. last minute of the, uh, 30 the second seconds half. Now. Look back at this again. Good hands, lovely miss pass to the edge. And he just gets from the outside. Yeah, got, yeah. Dave's got three years and before three. Millfield, he'll be uh, Jamie, jo Jamie Gregory yeah, will be upset yeah, with that. You know, he's worked hard to chase back, but excellent finish from uh, Tony Lewis, Toby Lewis. Restart's going to go play, 10. Play. So play on for Millfield. Tackle! Time is up now for regulation time. Whatever Millfield want to do here, it's all on their own terms. Morrow bursts through the gap, then sets his sights on the line. Ben Morrow! It's close it's through again. He's an exciting player, Ben Morrow. And uh, it showed it there. And they, they maintain that momentum. The coaching staff will be happy with that. How they came back, finished on a, a positive moment. Kick to finish. And Millfield marched on. What a semi-final performance from Millfield. Getting better and better as this competition progresses. The final awaits in the under-18s cup. 36 points to 12. They've beaten Bromsgrove School, whose campaign at this year's Roslyn Park comes to an end. What a campaign it's been for them as well. Just uh, the one victory, on one loss en route to this point against Gordons and uh, now to Millfield, but running out of a bit of gas towards the end. What a way to finish, though, from Mora. Oh, it was much more uh, excellent footwork, good power to break the line and he just backs himself. Those little moments, ball in the right hand, if he does get tackled he's got the fend and you can see from the smile on his face that he knows that he's going to have a final.
on RE1 are competing. They've had plenty of close encounters, not this one. Millfield at a canter through to the final. So stay tuned uh, across social media channels, wherever you're contacting about what time the kickoff will be for the Under 18s Cup. But we'll see you then. It'll be over on RE1. The next match on RE2 now. If you're here to watch Dulwich College against the King's School Worcester, you're in the right place. Uh, we will be getting underway in a couple of moments. So here we go in the under 13s junior competition, Dulwich uh, kickoff and the King's School Worcester running things uh, through the hands from right to left. Good uh, transition and lovely step on the edge here. And King's School Worcester already racing and setting their sights on the try line, cantering forward all the way to the try line. Well played from the off. That was a uh, decisive and well worked from the King's School Worcester. Well, Will Howard is uh, with us here in the commentary box for today. Will, um, under 13 level, of course, uh, you're, you're at Abingdon School right now. Uh, you've come through that pathway, but it's, uh, it's that start of things where life gets a bit more competitive, a little bit more uh, physical as well at rugby. But it's it's a, also a great year to start um, playing sevens as well. Yeah, exactly. I, I think you're right. Whilst obviously the under 13 competition isn't quite as prestigious as that of the under 18, uh, we are seeing the stars of tomorrow. And in the 2029 Rosalind edition, you know, it'll be these boys who are playing in the under-18 uh, competition. Gareth, who was co commentary last game, he was saying Tackle. how university scouts and university uh, and professional scouts are side. dotted around the place. You know, some of these players we see in the under-13 tournament will indeed be in the professional game uh, in five oh, years' time. So whilst it doesn't necessarily have a prestige of the older tournaments, it, it's certainly worth giving it, giving it a shout. We've seen plenty of uh, under 13 action as well today in on this pitch on RE1. And it's a round robin competition as well. We've got young referees too, and that is every inch Nine. as important Rouge. as the players being developed because uh, for all the players on the pitch, there's only one referee. Come we in. You have, to be in. have to have as many here uh, coming through the pathway oh, as well. Roslyn Park's a great place to get experience Nine. for that. Exactly, I think that's the thing. You're giving young people an opportunity. Uh, you know, we are giving the same coverage as we would give the last game because it's just as important, you know, for these young people, what an experience to have. They're live on, live on YouTube, thousands of people watching. It's good for the referee to be in front of a crowd. Yeah, exactly. Lovely duck and dodge and weave and to the line. King's School Worcester. Double up. And that was beautifully worked right from the base of the scrum. So we know King's School Worcester uh, don't have any numbers on their backs, uh, but we'll give the full list of players out there in a moment. Let's just, uh, Will, for a moment, uh, talk us through this. Well, it's just a simple dummy, really. It's, it's well worked, well worked by the player. Um, I think in sevens, you quite often find in... Um, I'm sure we'll see points come on from them at some point in this match. Exactly. We're, we're early days into the game. They shouldn't be disheartened by the two tries you know sevens is a very tiring match especially when you've been playing all day uh it is day five of competition and that's when you see the best talent but it's also when you see the most mistakes because of fatigue bodies muscles are starting to slow themselves down so they are not out of this game ready crouch bind sit wait for hands boys out 
Kings Royce's scrum half has shown his uh, eye for a gap around the base of the scrum. And now he sets off on the other side, weaving and dodging. Tackle! Eventually tackled, but not held. Rock, rock Good lining up of uh, the runners after the ruck. Coming onto it at depth. Tackle, roll Good away! Tackle from Dulwich, though. Their under 18s were in the uh, latter stages today of the cup competition. Didn't go well for them there. Tackle! And they're holding on to Kings Worcester just about. That's a four pass, so we'll come back for the scrum. Well, I wish we did know the scrum half's name because he looks a really talented player. It was a uh, clever in the scrum there to find the gap. And then again, you know, just as he scored the second try, he, he did the dummy again uh, to get past his, past his player. Forward pass in the end, though, I think. No, I thought that as well. But um, I think we're going back for the scrum. No, no, no. Right, here we go. Let's uh, see here. It looked like it was a little bit forward, perhaps off the floor. Yeah, I think that was forward, but nonetheless, try given. And the referee's decision, as we know, Will, is always final. Exactly. That's the thing about rugby compared to sports like football. Football, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a bigger fan of it, has to be said. But the one thing I've always thought about rugby compared to football is for respect to referees. You know, okay, maybe they get it wrong sometimes. But that's the sport. Players make mistakes as well. Backwards. To go and hound the referees Fine. is totally not on. I think, you know, this Pick is a good example. Fine. Maybe the, the Dulwich players realise that sport, but get on with the game. Ben. Yeah, they're quite right. Backwards. And they're back to it now with the ball in hand. He did knock it forward before he picked it up. I'd say the ref does look, he look, you know, um, commend to him, he does look very young. Part of the uh, London Society of Referees, the programme that they have here. Ready! How many Crouch! referees across all the pitches? Wind! Over 20 pitches. Feet back, hookers, both feet back. Feet back. They've done a, another Wait big shift this defense. year at Roslyn Park and always with great humour. Balls out! Uh, and always with great empathy as well for the level of play that they've been officiating. So here comes Kings Worcester. Tackle! Rock is formed! Nicely wrapped around again, and once more, there's some fast feet into the corner. The tackling must Short. be last ditch, and it is, but then the place. Held, then you got up. And he was held, so uh, no try. Held, then he got up. Fantastic bit of defending that. Yeah, marvellous work. It's not a try. And, and the result comes through eventually. I have, I have saved the try. Yeah, brilliant stuff from Dulwich. Oh, good feet on the edge, nice jinking. Good idea to go back to where there's support. Backwards. Tackle! Kings what is that? Well what in defense, is that? Hands away! to marshal the runners from Dulwich, who can really cause some damage right. when they get going. Away, not Tuckler. quite being allowed to break free. Watch the end of the side. Well, what I like about Dulwich is a, a fearless attitude in their own 22. We saw the player there, uh, not afraid backwards. to sort of, you know, play backwards, which many players, you do see the sort of, if Tuckle. they get into a oh. bit of a sketchy Fine. situation, possibly just kick it out or, or punt it for the Tuckle. sake of it. And you know, it's good to see some Jackal's positive fight. rugby in the defense. And if you keep passing it around in Rugby Sevens, eventually the gap opens up and maybe this is the chance for Dulwich. They've worked so hard to forge an opening. And here it is. Tackle! The tackling again is impressive from King School Fine, Worcester. And they're still playing. We're deep into injury time in the first half. Fine, but they play! want to relish every moment on this pitch. And what a <laughs> pass that would have opened things up. The knock-on instead brings half the half to a close. Breathless rugby from King's School Worcester and Dulwich playing a full part in that. But there's the King's School Worcester who lead 15 points to nil at half time.
So King School Worcester with a healthy lead, courtesy of really committed first half performance. Tackle! And they're looking to Fine. add another win to their tally for today. Dulwich College uh, looking ones. to play and looking to get on the scoreboard oh, shit. initially. Made a few changes for this second half. And this could be interesting to see what differences that can bring. I love this increasing trend Fine. in young rugby of, uh, of the fake pass. It adds a completely different dynamic to the game. Fine. Yeah, it's nice. It's when you, when you start growing up and you go through the gears and you sort of discover these different skills. And this is on. Ayub on the edge for Dulwich College. We know uh, Mark here. this is a Ayub, a year seven player. Where's his red socks? Red at the top of his socks, uh, on for Dulwich. Five meters. Closer. Crouch! Bind! A, hey, what's the early push? Six! Feet back, Hocker, feet back! Ball out! Good scrum from Dulwich, but once again, the Kings Worcester scrum half has every chance to plot his way Bind. forward. This time he goes to the air. And it does work out for King School Worcester. Rucking is good. Look at the zip on the pass, though, as well, and the spacing between the two players, Will. Now they dart through the middle, and are they going to start the second half in similar fashion? That, I think, is the pick of the lot from King School Worcester in this match. Well, I have to say, they look, you know, a really solid outfit. And the scrum half, <laughs> you know, I wish we knew his name because he is, you know, showing a completely wonderful class out there. Yeah, it's beautiful stuff. We might even see a couple of King School Worcester boys we can shout down to. Let's let's see if we can find that out, but uh, Will, in a sec. <whistles> so referee uh, gets us underway. Referee, Fine. by the way, Chris McTeer uh, from Teddington. The year 10 uh, still people in. and uh, still in. getting experience out here on RE2 and what a good job out. he's been doing across today and the competition. Fine. Offside, offside! Vantage! Yeah. No advantage. I think they're bundled into touch. Suck down that alley by uh, yeah. King School Worcester. Penalty God. nonetheless. Going on the edge, and uh, still going on the edge. Good tackling Tackle! on halfway. Charging out of the line. Oh, big shot from King School Worcester. Dulwich rocked backwards, but they're still with the ball. They've done that well. Keep uh, flinging the ball away from danger. Now this man wants to slice things up a bit. And they're doing that. There's a Fine. long phase of possession, this, from Dulwich. What's the well, the standard of this game has been very impressive, Tackle! but I'm glad uh, most of all that Dulwich haven't let their heads Fine! drop. It's very easy, especially, you Not know, we see a lot of teams at this age group who, when they go 20-0 down, can, can find their heads dropping, but they're playing it as if it was 0-0, uh, and I Tackle! think that's a real testament to them. And the Fine! quality of the tackling back here from Dulwich, they have done to King School Worcester what has happened to them a few times. Rip is fine. Went out, however, originally not releasing, so it's going to be a free kick here. Yeah. Free kick, Dulwich. Okay. So straight into touch. Ball over there. From there, and uh, King School will step. Have the yes. ball. Uh, three minutes remaining of the day on Struggle RE2 for these two teams. You kicked it straight out. It was a free Been kick. A round robin competition for you kicked it straight these out. schools. And this you is the it last. Straight out. Match kick. of the day for them. And to give some of the results from earlier on, uh, a shout out as well. King School was to beat St John's Leatherhead. Dulwich lost to George Watson's. Also, did well against Prince Henry's Grammar School, but King School Worcester have been just that bit further ahead in their development and their organisation. And they run in another one from the right wing this time.
Yeah, it's slow and steady rugby, isn't it? Just bide your time. Yes. Let the move come. We see a lot of teams try and force a move. Uh, but in sevens, as you said earlier, if, if you pass it enough, gaps will emerge. Fine. Sun is finally coming out on day five at the Howden Roslyn Park National School sevens. So wet this morning. Made things really tricky Tackle! for teams to try and play expansively, but right now, right, ahead of the uh, cup finals to come on RE1 later, the weather is really behaving. Now, Backwards! Backwards! With a minute to try and get on the scoreboard. Lovely Tackle! little pitch and go. Hands away! Good goose step. Rip is fine! Tackle! I have to say, with the, all the rain earlier, the pitches have held up really well, actually. Backwards. You can cast your mind back to last year. <laughs> the final of the under-18 was just a mud bath, basically. But if we look at the sort of panoramic shot we've got right now, you can see the mud in between the pitches. But the actual pitches themselves are very green. Yeah, and uh, enjoying their time out on uh, the still green pitches of RE2. No one more than Kings Worcester. And this lad here, who... Uh, makes it all the way home and look where he started his run well not quite 30 seconds 30 seconds quickly i think there'll be one to watch next year when uh, when trophies start becoming a thing in under 14 you know from this performance i can't say i've watched much of kins Worcester. Uh, under 13 this year, but from this performance, they look a really good outfit. And it's, it's not a, a matter of Dulwich being worse than them, it's just Kings Worcester have, have sort of found the gaps in the right times. Yeah, absolutely, uh, quite right. King, the King's School Worcester then rounding off their participation in their first ever Roslyn Park Sevens uh, with a win against Dulwich, one to remember. And uh, well played to both teams, and well played. To all the teams in this pool in this age category on day five here at the world's most famous sevens tournament the king school worcester round things out then 30 points to nil against dulwich college Hello there, we are back again. And this is Bedford Modern School against Kings Wimbledon, also known as KCS, I'm Sam Bork. Joined by Will again uh, for this final game on RE2 at this uh, wonderful week of sevens here at Roslyn Park. Um, Will, what have you thought of the action all of this week? Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. I um, I live in Oxfordshire at the minute, but I grew up three miles away from here. Lovely. Uh, and you know, I never, I never knew it happened to be honest. But I've, I've come for the first time this year, and it's crazy the amount of people taking part. Twenty-seven thousand different players. One yeah. of them scoring a very impressive try just now. Yeah, I think, I think we don't have the, uh, the sides up, but I think that's Kings Wimbledon, uh, who have just run down the, uh, the, the right flank. Um, here we are, using the pace on the outside. Just a little step and then a, a valiant effort at the tackle there, but unfortunately um, doesn't make it. Can you own time, KCS? And we were right there. Well, it is KCS in blue. And, uh, and Bedford in, in red and white. Um, KCS taking the early lead. 
uh, the home team, as you would say, based in Wimbledon, we're not, not too far down the road. Backwards. And just moving the ball. And now a Bedford down this right-hand side. And that is a, an excellent display of pace there from the, from the Bedford winger. We do actually have the Bedford names here, but unfortunately, uh, at this level, there's no numbers on the back of shirts. Um, so we are struggling to identify which players are which, but what do you think of this try, Will? Well, yeah, one exciting start. It bodes very well for the final game of RE2. Uh, less than a minute and a half in and already both teams scoring. I think we could be in for a good one. Yeah, we could be in for an absolute fire here. Almost like a basketball game, just scoring on each opponent. <laughs> As Bedford will kick off again into the sky. Well taken by KCS in the middle of the pitch. Just working this ball into the middle now and then yes, coming out on the left side. flank good ball on the outside using the overlap well and tries the offload and it's hacked through KCS in for a chase here Bedford recover very well oh and he spilled the ball and he scored it wow what an unbelievable try there what um, a pass, by the way. Yeah. Can I just say that? The best pass I think I've seen at this tournament all mm. week. Yeah, definitely. Just filling into the into the outside runner and uh, using the overlap. Well, we'll have a look at it. Oh, no, we don't. Um, but yeah, good offload there. And a uh, great bit of invention to, to hack it through. Unfortunately, the Bedford player just loses it a bit backwards there and it gives an opportunity to, for, the, for the KCS man to dot the ball down in the corner. Well, it's because of a day five pitch, isn't it? Wet underfoot. Exactly. Ball slippy. Real yeah. clever rugby intelligence to kick the ball forward. There. A lot of people would have tried to try to grab that. Mm. Bobbling, bouncing ball. And yeah. Bobbling, bouncing pitch. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be very it's difficult fine. to do so. Um, but as you were, I overheard you saying in the last game, Will, that the pitches have absolutely held up so well through all the kind of torrential rain we've had today and and all of the players running on it but here we go again Bedford just steaming down the right and this is an absolute corker to a start of the game three minutes in and we already have four tries Will what a game for us to end on <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is exactly. so exciting yeah you wouldn't think you're watching under 13's rugby you think you're watching the World Series here as uh, he just uses the ball out wide as a go <laughs> the tackle Well done. Of course, there's no conversions in the under 13 just yet. We'll have to wait uh, another couple of years for these boys to start drop kicking over the post. The player down there on the far side, hope he's okay. Yeah. Play stopped for the time being. Hopefully a speedy recovery to the man. So, well, I'm going to ask you a question now, even though it doesn't concern our pitch. Harrow or Millfield? I'm going to go Harrow, purely yep. off the basis. I saw him against uh, my school, Abingdon, yesterday. Mm. And um, well, I'm sure my mates wouldn't want me to leak for school, but it was 47-0. <laughs> yep. And they were, they were actually very, very good, mm. obviously. I mean, yeah, you know, that's they're not, in the final. Yeah, that's not <laughs> a groundbreaking revolution that, mm. that Harrow go. But, you know, national schools champions uh, last week, reigning Roslyn champions, they won the under They nearly did the treble. They nearly did 14, 16, and 18 last year. Exactly. So that's who my... I made the bold prediction of Ipswich yesterday, <laughs> which <laughs> didn't go down too well today. Yeah, you've had a misprediction there. But, um, yeah, Harrow and, and, uh, and Millfield have been fantastic today. We've had a, a, a real interesting um, day out here. But now we have Kings Wimbledon going down the right flank again, cutting back inside. And hands off one, hands off two, and he in to score. Wow. High class, that is. Well, I really hope they can keep up the fitness and the energy of this game, <laughs> yeah. because if if we can have five tries, six tries every half... Yeah, a full, a full game of this would be a game of the tournament, I'd say. If you have a tournament, game of the year. A game of the year, indeed. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Just unlucky on the on the sweeping tackle there from the from the Bedford man. I think 
New Zealand, France from uh, the World Cup last year can eat its heart out. It's got nothing. <laughs> it's got nothing on, on Bedford versus Kings Wimbledon in the under-13s competition. At day five at Roslyn here. Take his spine. Kings Wimbledon just to kick off, giving back to Bedford, who massive line pressure Advantage, there from uh, Kings Wimbledon, man, and have left Bedford struggling in their own half as kick and chase now. Advantage. Knock on. Scrub Just down. a slight knock on from uh, from Ki uh, from Kings Wimbledon there. Well, it's nice to see. We focused on the attacking a lot. Obviously, you know, we exactly. we talked about how many tries have been. <laughs> there are two parts to every team. The defence is just as important, uh, yeah. and a good bit of Final defending. Play. Very true. Uh, my my main theme this week has been kind of staying in the fight. I'd say, and uh, I suppose some coaches Chris! they say, oh, when Fire! when the man goes through and he's made a line break and he's What's almost at the try line, you Six! you kind of give up and Five you go, hands. well, I'm not going to waste my Five! energy on this. But the amount of um, perseverance we've seen this week from from try saving tackles has been absolutely astronomical uh, as we see the Bedford man with a, with a chase here as I'm just speaking about we can't quite make it and that is uh, another try for Bedford <laughs> we're going score for score here and that is half time Will what do you think can we can we have this every <laughs> every we week next year it's unbelievable yeah yeah no I mean for an under 13s level wow wow this has just been exactly as Will said. New Zealand, France, eat your heart out. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not even, you know, I'm, I'm being deadly serious. I watched Millfield Sebra earlier on RE1. I've seen some cracking games here. This is the most excited <laughs> I've been about a match. Uh, maybe it's because of that brownie I just ate. Who knows? But a real yeah. good second half coming up, and there's only one place to watch it. Very true, very true. And um, uh, unfortunately, we, me and Will will leave you here at half time on the final game of uh, RE2 at the biggest sevens tournament which is Rosin Park National Sevens say so I'll say goodbye from me Sam and uh, goodbye from Will and we'll hand you over to Will and Jack for the second half Well, what a game we uh, jump into for the second half. Bedford Modern School, 15, King's College School, Wimbledon. KCS in the blue, 15 as well. The last throw of the dice at this year's Roslyn Park. It falls to these two schools, and what a show Take they're putting time. on. Bedford Modern School from kickoff, out of the blocks and sprinting away. Now, this will break the deadlock early in the second half. Level raised once again. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jack. Feels a bit strange to be on CoComs for the first time this week. Between us, we've covered well over 110 games of rugby across the uh, the week. So uh, I think it's been a pretty good shift from the two of us here. But as the sun finally breaks through, I mean, this game was always going to be about who has the legs after a really long day of rugby for these two young gents. And this man uh, has clearly spent half time revving his engine and fires himself and Bedford into the lead. So KCS now need to respond. Well spaced out. Defensive press is good though. And so they have to draw and give and this has to be precise. It is onto the edge again. Now the strike back is instant and KCS say we're not done yet. And they'll run this in for 20 points each early in the second half. I don't think we've seen an evenly matched encounter like this with as many tries scored today on RE1, on RE2. And we've seen the under-18s cup in action, the under-18 girls cup in action. These boys are playing the best of the lot. 
seriously mature sevens as well from Wimbledon. They take it from left to right, right to left, assessing their options. And as soon as they spotted that green grass on the overlap, well, weren't they clinical? And there's no conversions at this level of the game. And on top of that, both these sides sit bottom of their round robin. So clearly there's a lot of pride on the line. And uh, well, no side wishes to be behind for longer than a minute so far. That's a good step on the edge, then the forearm fend, sizing up the sweeper, steps in on him, not taken, cover is there, steps again, the support on the outside has to go back, KCS are there, and goodness me, there are numbers as well, they line up quickly, good alignment from Bedford, now looking to spin their way through again, he's going to bust through for a second in the second half, and touching down, and is anyone able to catch their breath in this match? I'll tell you what, people are wasting their time over on RE1 with the plate final between Brighton and Llandovery College because it's all happening here. Bedford Modern, who's under 18s, had a, a great showing in the Vars competition up against KCS Wimbledon, who we haven't really seen on RE2 so far, but uh, their junior sides here making a good show of themselves, and that was you know, one, of the, one of the tries of the day so far. And these are, these are players who have just been brought off the bench as well, Will, for uh, then taking their time out on the showpiece pitch here and making it count. Not just these young lads, of course. The referee, Chris McTeer, uh, a year 10 student at Teddington. He's on for his uh, second game in a row. What a match he's officiating here. Good leg drive here. That's nice support and... KCS don't overcommit, that's clever as well, without being able to land a big shot and hit. Lovely dummy through the middle. Support there. Tackling two. KCS need to hold on that's to these Bedford ball. boys or this match might get away from them. There's three minutes of rugby left to play. That's work to an edge juggled. Advantage now the step has to be there. Where's the cover defense? <laughs> oh. It's just about there. And he'll have to escape into the corner to score. And Bedford do score. And where are these tries coming from? But they keep coming. Is that the, the longest lead of the game so far? Finally, a team able to double their advantage. And I mean, this is a beautiful step. And then no need to go under the sticks. There's no conversion coming. So touches down in the corner. The way this lad keeps his feet uh, in slightly heavy ground and keeps driving was most impressive. Well, this is the, the last game of the day, as you said, Jack. I just want to take the opportunity to say uh, thanks for being with me here on RE2 over these past five days. It's been a great experience, and I think, if I do say so myself, we, we've done a good job of bringing all the action live to people here at the Howden Rosen Park National School Sevens. Yeah, we're managing, we're having to save our best to last as well, because this is, quite frankly, whatever you're seeing on RE1, not as much fun as this. This is. Stunning stuff. Every other pitch has been shut down, Get save for the two the showpiece pitches. And Bedford with another pass out of contact. And now to go three tries ahead, but the race is on. And from 20, he can ease up. From five, he can celebrate. And take your time, young man. Well, the referee was shaping up to give a yellow card to the young Bedford modern man in the, for, uh, you know, being against rugby values. And I like that, Chris McTeer. Yeah, the, uh, the whistle of law enforcement here. He's uh, done a great job. Chris McTeer wants the play to keep going, and so do we. Another minute to go. And Wimbledon carve out some form of a comeback. It would be great to see here. Good hands from this uh, young KCS player. KCS so good at under-18 level. Really formidable team, always uh, produce talented players. But they're up against it here. So too Bedford Modern, of course, and they don't they breed them big when they get to 18. But this is why they're so good when they get to that age, because the skill level is, is all being embedded right now. And they're looking to add another here. Good tackle around the legs. 
Oh, that's lovely. The show and go of the day to finish things off. Bedford Modern School with a stunning second half. Oh, it's a 60-point thriller, isn't it? In the end, in this second half, we were locked up 15 apiece at the break. Bedford have run away with it, but uh, just lovely skill set on show. So many variations, and then the Ashton splash, of course, not the first time that's been whipped out at Roslyn Park. That was real, uh, real air, though, beneath him as he uh, took flight there. And that's up there with some of the better dives we've seen. So KCS, come on KCS, last chance and roll of the dice here at Roslyn Park. Good offload, oh, almost in the inside. Well, the coaches are saying get to ground, but uh, young Louis stayed on his feet instead and found a pass to the outside. Can you believe it? They might have another, Jack. Yeah, this one uh, signs things off nicely, doesn't it, for Bedford Modern School? Well played to them. There's the final whistle. What a last piece of Rugby Sevens magic, really, to enjoy. Absolutely. I just think that nothing sums up what a great week it's been, like the sun shining down on an absolute tri-fest. Such skill on show, pace and power, and dummies left, right and centre, some great footwork, great tenacity to keep going to the final whistle. It's... Uh, a true epitomise, true epitome of, of everything that Rosen Park stands for, I think. It's ended in the last match of the day of the year at Roslyn Park, at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Uh, there's a, certainly a, a sad to see the end of this tournament. What a week it's been, but 45 points to 20. What a way to go from both these schools. Congratulations to them and, and thank you to them as well for putting on such a show. And we hope you've enjoyed watching this one uh, and of course all the matches that have been taking place across uh, five days how many matches Wilf, by your reckoning well it was uh 55 a day for five days split pretty evenly between us yeah. so closer towards the uh, the 150 mark than 100 i believe okay okay we're getting on for that and if you if you're able to sift through that pick a moment by the way we're in the commentary box here this is a new thing we normally have a tent that blows away so we've been delighted this year to have this box. Um, you know, can you remember, uh, is there a moment that sticks out in the mind, a couple of moments? I mean, this moment, to be honest, I know it's top of mind, but the way that match was played was, was right up there for me. I think possibly there was an elimination game between Abingdon and Clandufry, which was pretty special, where Clandufry, I think it was under 16 level, eventually won it on the final play. Or perhaps the Kirkham game, when they were in that group of death and they played Hartbury College and a Louis Tomlinson falling nudged it through into the corner and they won that game as well. But I think these last minute winners are what really make it special. And I just think that the more rugby on shirt Rosen Park, the better. And that's what's been so great about this pitch and uh, this space that we have inhabited. Yeah, well, uh, we're going to sign off now and, and we implore you to join us, though, over on RE1 because the finals are going to take place in the under 18 cup to come so join us on another live stream re1 for the finals of that we hope you can uh, join us there but from all of us here we've got uh, will and sam as well as bring us the commentary this week and um, from wilf and myself uh, thank you very much for joining us and uh, have a very good evening not before you join us on re1 thanks a lot Sevens is so much fun. It gives people opportunities to run and you show your, you know, showcase your skills. Brilliant day. Last year I remember it being so wet. who sort of fly the flag and increase the profile. It's great for the game. And look, Sevens is it's easier to follow for somebody who's never seen rugby before. So it's a great way to introduce someone to the sport.
And if you want to, if you're a player as well, like you play sevens, a bit less contact, played in the sun, it's probably a bit more enjoyable than the 15s game. Under 16 girls champions of the plate. It's Bryn Kellenock Comprehensive School. Well done, girls. And in the air. 